Welcome to Etowah County, Alabama, the heart of Dixie. We are a very conservative Christian community. There's a lot of things we don't do on Sunday. We don't cut grass. We don't hunt. It's the Sabbath day. We enjoy eating fried chicken and work six other days of the week. I am Jonathan Horton. I'm the new sheriff in town. I took office January the 14th after winning a highly contested election, and cameras were rolling the whole time. I, Jonathan Horton, solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. How you guys doing? Good to meet you, man. I'm trying to get out of jail. I don't blame you, man. I wanted to become sheriff so I could make a difference in the detention center and in the community. When it comes to the safety and security of the employees and the running of this jail, money is not an issue, period. And the previous sheriff had been here for 12 years. Some accuse him of turning the jail into his personal piggy bank, pocketing leftover money from the inmates' food budget. I haven't done anything wrong. If, if it's wrong, somebody needs to change the law. And I think that he just lost focus on the task at hand. The jail is rated to hold 865 inmates. Currently, we're at over 1,000. The officer to inmate ratio is one officer to 110 inmates. There's no barriers between the inmates and the correctional officers. Get away from my dad. When I took office, it had been over three years since the jail had been searched. So in my first week of office, one of the first things I did was we had a shakedown. I brought the camera crew with me so they could document just how messed up this place was. There was a tremendous amount of contraband that was found. I would say a little over 5,000 pounds that varied from weapons to narcotics, uh, soft contraband and the excess trash. Oh, a lot of fishing going on here. It's like probably on the Bass Pro Tour. Razors, synthetic marijuana, and 212 broken door locks within the jail. It was a bit overwhelming. I had expected some problems, but I never expected it to that magnitude. This unit alone could have set the whole building on fire at any minute. We can't do nothing about yesterday, but the next time we search the jail, it's got to be better than this. As Sheriff of Etowah County, I'm a firm believer that the buck stops for me, good or bad. 200 locks didn't break overnight. It broke a long time ago. After that first shakedown, it opened my eyes to just how much work it was going to take to get this jail back into the shape it needed to be in. We've got a lot of work to do and a, a blatant place to start. And I realized that this jail is really broken. I believe that we need 60 days in more than any other jail in America. So I'm putting seven civilians into the detention center, and we look forward to the skill set and perspective that each brings to the table to help clean our jail up. I'm Ashley. Being a police officer is a roller coaster of emotions, but you will not see me shed a tear on this show, I promise. I'm Dennis. I definitely grew up in the hood, but in college, I was a quarterback and I was a football star. So while I'm in there, I'm not going to tolerate any disrespect. I'm Alex. I'm a political science major. Growing up, I had a pretty easy childhood, but I want to show my parents that I can get through 60 days in jail without needing their help. My name is Jennifer. I'm a born-again Christian and a God-fearing woman. Being a Christian woman, I'm expecting to go in and change lives. My name is Jacob. I'm a corrections officer for the state of Pennsylvania. To have to congregate with other inmates, it's going to be difficult for me. My name is Shanice. I am an educator. I work with at-risk youth. They tell me I'm crazy, but you have to have a little bit of crazy to work in that atmosphere and be successful. My name is Matt. Fresh out of high school, I joined the Marine Corps. I love the show. I watch the show every season. If history has shown us anything, being a Marine will play to my advantage. The participants will see where drugs and contraband are coming in, identify problems we would have never seen. But it's going to be a very difficult task.
I don't think these participants are ready for what they're about to face. I believe that this jail is going to be a lot tougher than any of the past seasons, and that's why we need to meet with them and make sure they're prepared. Alex, back. Nice to meet you, man. Are you worried about tapping out at all? No. No. I don't quit once I start something. I hear you. I mean, it's hitting me right now, but I think once I'm in there, it'll it'll be like a relief. You know what I mean? I don't know. What's going on, man? Alex. Nice to meet you. Dennis, nice to meet you. Matt. Matt. Yeah. Nice to meet you guys. <clears throat> Nervous? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm anxious, maybe. What's up, bro? What's up, man? I'm Matt. I'm Jacob. Nice to meet you. Jacob. What's up, boss? What's your name? Dennis. Dennis. I'm Alex. Alex. Yeah, nice right. to meet you, man. All right, cool. Nice. How you guys doing this afternoon? Yes, sir. Good. Good. Doing great. Introduce myself. I'm Jonathan Horton. I'm the sheriff of Etowah County, Alabama. This is my first term. I'm a new sheriff. I would like to introduce to you my team. To my right is the Assistant Chief of Corrections, Mark Bullock. To my left is Chief of Corrections, Keith Peake. Chief Pete is Chief of Corrections. He's the top of the food chain when it comes to the jail. No one knows the jail as well as Chief Peake. In relationship to this program, Chief Peake will be the point person with the participants. Let's start with you guys, and I'll start here in the front. You want to introduce yourself and where you're from? My name is Matt from Tacoma, Washington, Seattle area. Uh, I was in the Marine Corps, decided to do this to see if my opinion's right on jail or if it's wrong. So what do you think of the criminal justice system right now? Being a criminal's not my world. The criminal justice system's not my world. I want to go out and help veterans who have been through this, and I can't help them if I don't know what they went through. And what's your story? Why were you arrested? I got a DUI. We're now talking inmate talk. I got a DUI. DUI. Where'd you get caught at? Up in Huntsville at Redstone. Yeah, OK. Appreciate it. Thank you. So I think all the Marines that have been on the show have been successful. You want to come up? Matt and Nate are both combat veterans. I don't think I'm up to their level, because I just didn't have that kind of deployment. But I'm up to their level as far as I'm a Marine. I understand the routine. Uh, my name's Jacob. I'm 45 minutes south of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And then what's your story? I got arrested for embezzlement. Embezzlement? OK. Now, in real life, you work in the state penitentiary? Or I've been at the state penitentiary now for three and a half years. And then before, I was there for about two and a half, three years. Then I did 500 hours of overtime last year on top of my normal schedule. And Sound like you work at Etowah County. <laughs> well, thank you. I have no problem. We wish you a lot of luck. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alex. Uh, I'm 24 from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm in my senior year studying political science. I'm kind of at a point in my life where I'm not exactly sure which path I want to want to take, what exactly I want to do with my life. So I'm hoping this will help me uh, grow up and I'll be able to get through this without the help of uh, mom and dad for once. So. so if you were in jail right now, what was you arrested for, Alex? I was on my way to Panama City Beach after finishing my finals. And we were picking up a friend in Birmingham. Cop pulls us over, finds two ounces of cocaine. Nobody claims the cocaine, so we all get arrested and sent to different jails. Were you driving or just a passenger? I was a passenger. Yeah. Are you nervous right now? A little bit. You're about to pull your fingers off, and they're shaking like crazy. So why are you nervous? Why am I nervous? What's making you nervous right now with just us? Just just, just talking, honestly, to you guys right now is a little bit. So nervous. how are you going to do with a bunch of inmates? So we've got a nice space. An inmate is going to be like this up on you talking to you. Yeah. yeah. See the difference? Mm -hmm. So if you're nervous now with us, Right. These guys will see that. They will eat you alive. OK. So you need to work on that. Right. Go to your hotel room or wherever you're staying, stand in front of a mirror, and tell your story. Yeah. We got homework tonight. All right, thanks, Alex. Right. Your name again? Dennis. Dennis? OK, Dennis. Nice to meet you. Dennis. What's your inmate story? I mean, what are you doing in jail? I don't really feel like talking about that right now. OK. What you in for? No, I'm good. I'm not in jail. I'm running the jail. You know, you're a little cocky. OK. You ever been in jail before, really? No. no Never? No. So this is a new experience for you, OK? No. You're kind of pretty. You're going to go into place with a bunch of rednecks. That attitude right there, they're going to eat you alive. I think Chief Pete is threatened by me. 
intimidated by me. That to me, is, that's not a tough person. That's a weak person. That's a soft person. That's the person I beat up. You know, if, if I'm allowed to, if I can fight him, Pete come off to me as one of those type of guys, you know? It's just jail, but I'm gonna get my respect. You've got to relax a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You've got to let loose, you know. You got my back, I got yours. Thanks, sir. Sure. Sure. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good luck. So, once you get in these units, there's a couple of signals that we're gonna give you, one verbal and one physical, to ask for help. The nonverbal is to take your right hand and put it upon your chest. We'll call it the Pledge of Allegiance, or I've got heartburn. This is your signal of I need help. The verbal will be, it sure is crowded in this pod. It sure is crowded in this pod. In Etowah County, we have a large population that generates a lot of violence within the jail. So I've asked my associates, Chief John Bryant, How's it going? How's it going? and Detective Jason Higgins, to come and help us in training today, teaching self-defense. Hands up. It's aggressive, assertive movement. That's what you've got to do. These guys are both masters of self-defense, certified in PPCT, which is pressure point control tactics. In a fight, a minute can seem like an eternity, OK? <laughs> nice. Good. <laughs> All right, well, let's do the duck out. Coming up and grab me, right? But I'm simply just going to duck out. All right, good. Now, you try it. You choke him. No, 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 no. Oh. Do it again. Right. Ready? I'm going to choke you. Oh, you're going to choke <laughs> no, 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 no. I was not impressed with my performance in training. Great band. This feels so awkward. I don't know what it was. I just, I just couldn't duck. But I played plenty of dodgeball in my life. <laughs> Come on, Alex. Alex, that's just straight back. Dennis was like, I guess he could tell I was discouraged, so he tried to like help me out. Duck, like duck, like what? Duck, like, like duck, like, yeah. I had to encourage him. I just kind of took him to the side and let him practice on me. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to feel like you can't protect yourself. You can. Let's go, Alex. Do it, man. Well, get away from me. All right. All right. Do it again. This time, put some ass into it. All right. I hope none of you guys end up having to defend yourself, but it is a very real possibility. All right? All right. Good luck to you, sir. The Etowah County Jail is in a dire situation. Good luck. It. We do not feel that we have time to waste. We feel we need to get participants embedded in the jail as soon as possible. Good job, guys. So we're going to do things different this season. I'm going to arrest people straight out of training. So we've had a long day of training. All of you seem to have done well. Now, I will tell you this. We have made a decision that one of you is going to jail today. So we've had a long day of training, and all of you seem to have done well. Now, I will tell you this. We have made a decision that one of you is going to jail today. And that person's going to be the one that we feel is the most ready. And right now, we feel like that's you, Matt. I got, I got a few things I need to handle with my wife first. You can take care of that before you go. All right. Okay. We want Matt to go in first. All right, sir. We feel like his former military training gives him a little bit of an edge. In the past, Marines have done well in the program. We feel he's the toughest for the position. I didn't expect it, I didn't. When he was like, somebody's going in today. My stomach dropped immediately. Hello? Hey, I'm gonna go in right now. No, you're not. I really. Huh? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just, I'm nervous. You got this? like two or three days, I'll probably get old, dude. Oh, man. All right, well, I love you. Be safe. You got this. You can do it. All right. I love you both. All right, we love you, too. All right, bye. Not in a million years would I ever thought I was going to be on 60 Days In at all. In uh, 2011, I joined the Marine Corps. 
I was active duty for four years. Been to Afghanistan, one tour, got married shortly after that, and I now have a three-year-old daughter. I'd like to say I have the perfect life. I love my family, I like to be around them. Those are my best friends. I'm very strong-minded. Once I make my mind up on something, I'm gonna do it. I'm competing to prove to myself that any situation that arises in my life, I can handle it. If I could handle the Marine Corps, I can handle going to jail. All right, let's just do it. Now that I'm getting ready to go in, I need to remember why I'm here, why I'm doing this, because this is a whole new world. Oh. What is the t what is the city called? This um, Gladson. Yeah, Gadsden. Gadsden. Okay. okay. And you can be foggy on those details. I don't even know. Because you you've never been here before. Yeah. So we'll walk right this way, right through right here. Right. Walking towards the arrest vehicle, I felt excitement. Fear, nervousness. When I got handcuffs put on me, I felt like there's no turning back at that point. I've accepted the mission and I have to perform and complete it. Now that Matt's on his way to the facility, it's time to refocus and make sure that the females are trained and ready for the challenges that lay ahead of them. How are you? Great, how are you? Oh, wonderful, I'm Jennifer. Shanice, good to meet you. You as well. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm Jennifer. Are we the team? Yes. We're the team? Well, yes. Oh my gosh. We're the team. Yes. Shanice, give me a hug, girl. <laughs> What's your name? Ashley. Good to meet Ashley you. Ashley How you feeling? I'm, I'm good. I've just been like kind of waiting to meet you guys. I take this program extremely seriously. Anticipation is killing me. I just hope I get put with a group of like-minded people whose goal is to help the sheriff and to make this world a better place. This is so nice this that I get awesome. to finally yes. meet you guys. I know I have chill bumps right now because this is like... Yes. This feels good. Good morning, I'm Sheriff Jonathan Horton. This is my Chief of Corrections, Keith Peak, Assistant Chief of Corrections, Mark Bullock. You're going to the Etowah County Jail. It's one of the largest county jails in the state. So that you can get an understanding of some of the things you may encounter, I'm gonna turn it to Chief of Corrections, Keith Peak. Y'all got all prettied up today. You put your makeup on. These are things you're not gonna be able to do. It's not gonna be a walk in the park. It's not gonna be easy, hey, I'm on TV. We have 10 units in our jail. One unit is for females. So knowing that, you're gonna be in there with anybody from a traffic ticket to capital murder. Mm. You know, the women, to be honest with you, are a lot nastier than the men are. A lot more conniving, manipulative, and just as violent or vile. We actually have more fights inside the women's unit than we do anywhere in the facility. Interesting. So we'll start on this end. We're gonna give each one of you an opportunity and uh, introduce yourself. Hi, you know, I'm cool. Ashley. Nice yep. to meet you. I'm 29 years old. I'm from Texas. I'm full-time Army National Guard for my own safety. I do not want any of the other participants to know that my actual career is that I am a police officer. That's pretty much me in a nutshell because there have been previous leaks in the show by the participants. I will be telling everyone outside of the sheriff and the production staff that I am full-time National Guard. Being in the military and having the kind of training that I have, I have a very clear mission. I want to help you. I really do want to help you and find out as much as I can. Y'all have got a mindset where you want to go in jail to see what's going on. That's not normal. You know, they see you going out a lot for interviews and stuff like that. You're going to be labeled as a snitch. Snitches get stitches. So how long it takes them to label you as a snitch, that's up to y'all. You've got to be cautious of what you do. You know, these people do this for a living. They don't do it to be on TV and be a movie star. Well, thank you, Ashley. All right. Hello, I'm Shanice. Shanice? Shanice, you got it. Okay. I work with at-risk youth. One of the reasons I'm interested in doing this, a lot of my kids have been in jail. A lot of their parents have been in jail or in jail or in prison. I try to reach them in unique ways, and I think this is a very unique way to try to reach them. 
and so you're, you're a little nervous and you know, all that kind of stuff. I am. I mean, I, I, I really, I feel stupid. No, I, I feel it, crazy. You ain't cut, you ain't pulled at your hands, you hadn't done anything, so. It's, it's all in my head. My head is going like. Have you ever had trouble with law enforcement? Yes and no. Well, I'll tell you this. Before going into education, I wasn't a fan, but they've helped me out a lot. I mean, working in an alternative school, there's fights, there's guns, there's all of that, and they protect me, so I have no problem with law enforcement. Good luck, Sharice. Thank you. Last but not least, she's been taking a lot of deep breaths over her too. <laughs> I have. I'm Jennifer. Nice Good to meet you. And how old are you, Jennifer? I'm 41. I'm a, a minister in my church. When I was young, I was a very rebellious teen. I was a runaway. I was an alcoholic. I was an underage stripper at the age of 14. Um, I had a son very young. Um, by the time I had my son, I'd kind of changed my life around. Now I'm a grandmother, my son will be 25. My whole motto is if I can change someone's mind, their way of thinking, then their actions are automatically going to follow. So not only do I live that, but I see it work. And you actually have good body language as okay. far as how you talk, how you tell your story, mm -hmm. which I think is because you have a past of maybe dealing with that type of stuff. You have any tattoos? No. You have the opportunity to get some. No, thank you. I'm <laughs> yeah. going to pass. I'm going to pass. But here's the thing, okay? The numbers are stacked against you. You're from out of town, you don't know anybody, you don't have friends, they do. Remember that. So, are y'all scared? Hell yeah. So when I woke up for training today, I was like, all right, I'm a little bit tired. And then you guys dropped that bomb on me, told me I'm going in. And my whole fatigue kind of turned into like a, an adrenaline rush. Stepping out of the arrest car, you feel anxious, you feel worried, you feel lost. One guy was on suicide watch. That set in the reality and I was like, damn, this is so real. And then once I walked through the actual jail door and I sat at that table, I'm trying to sit there and remember my cover story and remember everything I have to remember. But the only thing I can think about are my surroundings. I was just like, I sacrificed everything back home to do this. Like, what was I thinking? All right, here, gentlemen. Like, I'm not as mentally strong as I thought I was because I thought I had it figured out, and I don't. So, are y'all scared? Hell yeah. Being an educator for at-risk youth, at any moment, the kids can bring in a gun, a knife, or whatever, and, you know, a lot of times I am scared, but in training, got real. It got real. It got so real. I mean, I've been in it for 19 years. I get scared. With that being said, we've decided to arrest one of you and place you in the jail right now. We've decided that that person is Ashley. We feel that you're ready. All so right. We're, I knew are you it. Ready to go to jail? Yep. This is the best way to do it. I don't got to think about it anymore. All right. Can I wash my face? Yeah, you can okay. wash your face. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we want Ashley to go in first because we believe her being a police officer will give her that edge that she needs to be successful. Goodbye, ladies. Bye. Bye. Whew. You okay? Yeah. I was holding my breath. I'm surprised I'm breathing. All right. Ouch. I'm kind of glad that it is me because the anticipation is murder. <laughs> so get in, get it over with. Make sure that's safe. Okay. Do my job, do the best I can, get out. Those are my goals. You look different. Yeah, you're rock and roll. 
to look a little more M8 ready. So we wish you a lot of luck, Thank and uh, we believe you'll, you'll do fine, so. Anything I can do to help? I have been in the National Guard for over 11 years. I love my country. As a police officer, I have a lot of respect for corrections officers. My motivation for wanting to do this is the very rare opportunity to strengthen my investigation skills by engulfing myself in the element. I'm a police officer. I'm in the military. I'm a student. I am quite overwhelmed with everything in my life, but I have no doubt that I'll make it the full 60 days. Let's get me in. Let me learn. Let me help. I'm ready. When I came into Bookin, oh gosh, it was probably the most surreal moment of my life. I'm just thinking, wow, <laughs> this, is, this is a very different experience for me. I'm used to taking people to jail, and now I'm in there with them. I have done better pat-downs on the side of the road than I was given entering a correctional facility. She didn't search the inside of my bra. She didn't check in between my legs properly. Nobody checked my mouth. That was scary to me because I definitely could have snuck in a lot of drugs. I didn't even get a towel to wash my ass. Nobody watched me take my clothes off. I got to take my clothes off privately. I could have kept my bra. The only reason I took it off is because I knew that it was contraband and I'm not trying to rock the boat. Um, I was not asked to squat. Right, ladies, let's go. But it's actually reminded me of why I'm doing it, to help out the community as a whole. I tried to keep like stone face, but What's up, baby? Hey, bitch. that was like probably the most vulnerable moment of my life. I feel like an inmate. I feel like a real inmate, and that's scary. In other seasons, intake looked very quick. I thought, you know, you go in there, get your cuffs, here's your shit, put it on, go to your cell. When I went through it, nine hours waiting to be told you're going to this room. You know, like a kick cat when you break it in half? That's my mind right now. The stuff they gave me told me it was fresh. Jeans that have never been washed, a shirt that has never been washed. The mattress, I wouldn't even call it 
mattress and the piece of cotton with the rubber over it. And all of a sudden, it's a whole nother game. Walking into the pod for the first time, it was very surreal feeling at three o'clock in the morning, having slept all day, to just see, it literally looks like a zoo. You know, people walk around and all the animals come out to get fed. That's really what it looked like. That's really how it felt, like a zoo. And because the doors don't lock, they don't go to bed. Even at nighttime. Go ahead, boy. You know you're scared, boy. Yeah. <laughs> You watch the show, and it looks completely different than when you're in here. In the back of my head, I was like, you should have just stayed a fan. Honestly, you should have just stayed a fan. And I don't care what anybody says, if you've never been to jail, you have no idea. Sleep too well last night. What anxiety. How's the anxiety level now? Right now, I'm still very nervous. Uh, I think anybody that's going to jail that's never actually done jail time is going to be nervous. But, uh, you know, I walk into this type of environment every day. Hey, baby girl. Are you daddy's girl? I'm a family man. I have a wife and three children. I got into corrections mainly to make better money for my family. Working in corrections, you have to have a thick skin. There's danger every day. And you pretty much become accustomed to the environment. I gotta go. Can I have big hugs one more time? I believe that being a CO could be an advantage. Are you daddy's girl? But I also believe that it could be a disadvantage as well because I know inmates, I know what they do, I know what they're involved in and it's horrible. I love you. Bye, puppy. But felling is not an option. For me to tap out, it's gonna take a uh, shank to the body. I have never left home before. Really? Nope. That's a good experience. Yeah. So we're about five minutes away from the arrest location. Okay. So remember, when you get into intake, in terms of the distress signal, intake is the one place where you can't give the distress signal because there's no way we can pull you out when you're not in the, in the jail yet. It sounds, it sounds great. <laughs> All right, fellas. How's it going, Jacob? I'm doing OK. How are you? Ready to do this thing? Yep, I am. I have high expectations not to put stress on you. Yeah. You know what you do for a living in the real world. You've got your cover story yeah. pretty good and down. So anything you want to say before we begin this mission? The only thing I can think of is, is uh, let's get it going. I'm tired of waiting. Good luck, Jacob. All right, thank you. We'll have you step right over here to the arrest team. Jacob, he's got to be able to separate being an officer versus an inmate. 
And if he can't accept that row reversal, he's going to fail. For me to be successful, I'm going to have to stick to my cover story. And I'm going to have to become inmate Jacob Miller. up in there. I do have this feeling that this gel may be worse than the other seasons. idea of what goes on inside these places. Now I'm going to be on the other side. Hang in there. Get a bird. Get a bird. And that worries me because inmates are very smart. They shout and say and do certain things to try to mock you, make fun of you, to bully you because they're trying to spin you up. Off the chain right now with people stealing stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, girl, you know? Here we have Yeah. We got Unit 4 popping off. The store came. One guy talking about he did suicide up there. So they robbed him. Down the road. Being alone inside this jail. It's really the only thing I, I'm terrified of. I think this is going to be a lot harder than I thought. Playing my story in my head. Um, yeah, so I gotta live a different life. So, ready. Yeah. My hands a little sweaty, but it's all good. I feel like if this ride feel like uh, my Yukon, I'm ready to head to Wrenchler Field like it's game day. High school, college, football was everything. Man. So it was always you gotta be the leader, you gotta be the leader. And not to sound cocky or anything like that, but everywhere I went, you know, people look up to me. So I don't think this is, this won't be any different. You really thought this out? I think I did. I was thinking about what it can do, how I can help the community, help the people. I want to go to jail for 60 days because I definitely want to show, you know, my family, my friends, and basically myself that I can do something like this. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know you as a person, as uh -huh. my son, so I right. know you know how to handle what needs to be handled. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, by the end, I'll, I'll definitely have some position of authority in there. Basically, you just look at people in the eyes and you just don't back down. That's it. Oh, man, don't be so sad, You can't tell man. no one, right? Mwah. Gonna be praying in jail. Yeah, I'm gonna be praying. Oh, you better be praying. All right, Dennis. Good luck in there. All right, I'll be back. What's up, sir? Dennis, how you feeling, man? I'm feeling good. You ready to do this? I'm good. Yes, sir. I'm ready. You look like you come off a GQ photo shoot. You know you're in the country now, right? I'm from Miami. You got to go in. That ain't the country. You need to go in with a mindset of don't worry about your appearance or anything like that, because when the people see that, they're going to tear you apart. Yes, sir. I know we're on TV, but you're fixing to go into a real live jail. There's not going to be anybody in there that says, hey, stop. We're going to retake this. Got it? Yes, sir. All right. Your success is our success, so that's what we're after. All right? Yes, sir. All right. We're going right over here to the arrest team. We're going to step in front of the van, place both hands on the hood. 
to it and lift up the left leg. And I definitely want to show the mental toughness I have to be able to go in any situation and come out dominated. I think I can go in there and definitely uh, have an influence in there. Step on the side of it. I'm not going to go in there and get bullied. That I won't tolerate. I can hold my own. For real, I can hold my own. So. But I've never been to jail, so I know I'm talking before I go in there. But I'm a tough person, and, and I'm going in there, and I'm, I know I'm going to kill it. I know I'm going to kill it. The moment that I set foot in that pod, I, I think I was having a panic attack. I want something to drink, bitch! The f out of my face! This is not like anything I've ever seen on 60 Days, ever. This is nothing like anything I've ever seen on the show. So many more females than 60 Days In has ever had before. Like, it's just massive. My cellmate, she told me that they put bright pink shirts on women who are either convicted or charged with murder or other high custody crimes. Um, so they they make those women stand out. This is very, very real. This is a very real, terrifying situation to be in, especially for me. Thank God I decided not to tell anybody my real job. <laughs> if word gets out that I am a police officer, I will probably be in the hospital. This is not what I thought it was gonna be at all. As I walk through intake, just to even walk through those doors, that's when I knew like this is this this is not TV. This is real life. From that moment, I said a prayer and it was like, you know what? what the hell, I'm gonna go with it. I recognized him when I when I first walked in. It was Jacob. I didn't talk to him, but I can tell he's not feeling well. He looked like he was sick. I don't know how long he's been here. He kept drinking water, kept using the restroom. I don't know what's going on.
As a corrections officer on the inside, I have a hard time turning it off. If you want to tap out, take your right hand and put it upon your chest. Intake is the one place where you can't give the distress signal. I can't become an inmate. I can't do that. I'll see you on the other side. I'm giving up all control. Checking was very slack. I totally could have stuck something on my butt if I wanted to. Got to go in and have this look like, don't f with me. It's been pure fuckery from the moment I walked in through the door. If you think this is fake, I'm telling you right now, it's not. Etowah County Jail is a party. Anything that's out in the street is in the jail. Clone, mm -hmm. heroin, ice. The whole night is just free for all. There's weapons. It is not safe. Go get your knife. You kill me, I kill you, bro. I never really seen a guy get like stabbed that close to me. People can die in a matter of seconds. If Alex was in any type of danger, I would look out for him. I'd rather get beat up than have Dennis be my savior. That was awkward. It sucks ass. I trust Ashley more than I do Jennifer. I don't dream stuff like that. What's going on? I want Shanice to go home as soon as possible, please. Burning helmet! This place can take a sane person and cause them to become insane. Last night in my dream, a demon had sex with me. There are so many demonic presences in this place. <laughs> that place is insane. This is up. This is the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life. This is the dumbest decision I've ever you want to tap out, take your right hand and put it upon your chest. I underestimated the reality of it. Something that's never happened before in six seasons is happening right now. Bye-bye. Jonathan Horton. I took office January the 14th after winning a highly contested election. I, Jonathan Horton, solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. How you guys doing? When I took office, it had been over three years since the jail had been searched. found more than a ton of contraband. This unit alone could have set the whole building on fire at any minute. A tremendous amount of makeshift weapons and 212 broken door locks within the jail. I had expected some problems, but I never expected it to that magnitude. The jail is rated to hold 865 inmates. Currently, we're at over 1,000. After that first shakedown, opened my eyes to just how much work it was going to take to get this jail back into the shape it needed to be in. Etowah County, the most crooked county in the state of Alabama. All the insane inmates are here. We need 60 days in more than any other jail in America. So I'm putting seven civilians into the detention center to help me clean up our jail. One of you is going to jail today, and that person's going to be the one that we feel is the most ready, and right now we feel like that's you, man. 
In other seasons, intake looked very quick. I thought, you know, you go in there, get your cuffs, here's your put it on, go to your cell. When I went through it, nine hours. You know, like a Kit Kat when you break it in half? That's my mind right now. So many more females than 60 Days In has ever had before. This is very, very real. This is a terrifying situation to be in. I didn't sleep too well last night. I, I think anybody that's going to jail that's never actually done jail time is going to be nervous. You look like you come off at the GQ photo shoot. You know you're in the country now, right? I recognize him when I, when I first walk in. It was Jacob. He looked like he was sick. You want to tap out. Take your right hand and put it upon your chest. Intake is the one place where you can't give the distress signal. No, I just, I'm just, I'm done. I, I can't, I, I'm not. I'm sorry. What you want? I want to go. <laughs> Yes. I'm still one to ten. How ten? That's a ten. Done. There's a lot that we have to do. I need you to hang with me here, and I need you to keep trying for me to get you out of this thing. Thank you for your story. Help the rest of your day as well. We'll probably see you in the pods later on. Okay. Okay. All right. Now. Thanks. Have you got? Good news, bad news. This is actually something that's never happened before. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> uh, Jacob is in intake and he's already giving the signal. He's done. He wants out. We pull him out. That's going to be a huge red flag. They're going to know something's up. So I guess at this stage, Chief, what can we do? And are y'all 100% sure that he is completely done with this program and walks out of it? We, we are 100% sure. Let me process for a second. I'm going to process this. I'm going to talk to my intake guy, and we'll see what we can do. I don't know if it'll work, but he'll try anything. Okay. When I came into booking, I took off my underwear and bra and my bright yellow panties. The jail does not provide you with a second change of clothes or underwear. So I'm not wearing underwear right now or a bra. I can't even order a bra on commissary. I can't even order panties on commissary. I've been asking for a wife's request form for a couple, like two days now, so I can get some underwear. I've even asked for state-issued disposable underwear. Can't get it. But I'm on 60 days in, so I need to be able to figure it out myself. Let's see what my bloody, ripped-up, nasty 
rag blanket and provide me with today. Let's see. Yeah, that. They'll, they'll give you a toy for tearing up. They have them I'm telling you, Rita. Other people, like if you live locally, somebody can bring you some whites, but here I am in an out-of-state situation, so I don't get that option. I was creative enough to make a makeshift bra out of a rusty, torn bed sheet that I ripped up. So my boobs aren't flopping around everywhere. Do you want to see my bra that I made? Let me if you want to show it to me. Sure. <laughs> Can you blur like my fat rolls? Okay. That's inventive. Yeah. Yep. So that's made from a sheet. My my bed sheet. Your bed sheet. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they've given me literally a rag. So I don't feel bad for picking it up. If I don't get some underwear, the next two months will be an absolute mess. I don't want this bra I got on, I just put it on. Oh, no, no, I just made one. I'm good now. I'm not going to show off my new one. Oh, you said you made one. Yeah, I made me one. I broke oh. my blanket up. Oh, I don't know. Oh, you broke it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The first night I was in here, I did not sleep. You watch the show, and it looks completely different than when you're in here. I didn't expect the anxiety and tension to be this high. I'm like physically, mentally just drained. I haven't even been here that long. Boo came over. Boo's the old man lives next to me. He comes up to me, what's your story? I tell him to it and he goes, that don't seem right. And he starts questioning me about it. I just waiting on, this is where they brought me. I'm just waiting to get charged. I And then I told him I didn't have bond. And I think that's where I f***ed up. And he just started calling me out on all my at that point. He called me out as soon as I told him my story. He was like, I've lived in this state my entire life. They would never transfer you from Redstone to here on a DUI. I, I really thought I had it down. I thought I had the cover story down. But then when you get questioned about it, and you're in there, and your mind's over here, and it's supposed to be right here, it's a different ball game. That's awesome. Like, one in five people are believing what I'm telling them, so we gotta figure something out, man. 
There's like two OGs who probably have this figured out. These guys are a real deal. This is their life. And these guys will hurt you. I mean, they really will. They, they hurt each other. Why wouldn't they hurt an outsider? And I, I underestimated the shit out of that. We don't get Jacob out quick. All of our work, all of our efforts, and all the information that we're trying to gain from this shut down in 30 seconds. out and intake, it put the program at a big risk. What happened? I just started thinking about my my wife, my my children just way too much. The, the longer I was in that small space, I would get more anxiety and I would feel nauseous the entire time. Uh, I, I believe I was in a lot of denial um, up until intake. Denial about what? Denial about being able to do this for 60 days. I hate myself right now. I have no confidence right now in anything, really. Hello. Hi, honey. Hi, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, what's going on? Uh, yeah, I failed. You failed. Can you go back in? What, what's going on, honey? Honey, I'm, I'm done. I, I already left. I failed. You're not, honey, you're not a failure. Listen to me. If you couldn't do it, you couldn't do it. It's okay. You couldn't be an inmate because you're a CEO. You're an officer. You're not an inmate. Don't worry. I love you. I love you too, sweetheart. All right, bye-bye. Bye, sweetie. You know, you you selected me for a reason, and then, then you know, I do this. It's, it's hard for me to swallow. It's okay, Jacob. It's not. It's not okay. It's not. I don't know. I'm a mess. I'm feeling disappointed in myself for obvious reasons. I just wish that I could have contributed. In my heart, I believe I made the right decision, but it's gonna be something that eats on me for a long time. Intake was uh, pretty interesting. Jacob was in there too. I don't know what happened to him. I mean, I can't say anything bad about the guy. I don't know the guy. I'm not in the business of shaming nobody. But it did feel a little weird because he ended up leaving out first and then everybody was like, what happened to the white boy? I don't know. When I go in there, I want to focus on, you know, what I got to do and I'm not really focused on anybody else.
going in there, my main goal is to set a standard. Kind of establish, like, look, don't play with me, don't come around me. I'm not gonna go in there and get bullied. I've learned that from, you know, being in the hood growing up. Like, I'm not the one to be playing around with. I'm not gonna show them, you know, any weakness because I ain't scared of nobody. feeling a little nervous, but I always tell my students, be committed into everything you do. And so I have to show them that I'm committed as well. I do have a big personality. I can be very loud. They call me cray cray. <laughs> but that crazy has kept me safe. I am an educator. I work with at-risk youth. It's uh, dealing with kids that a lot of people have given up on. A lot of my kids are in the system. A lot of their families are in the system. By doing this, I want to be able to come out and say that I've been through it, I understand, and I've made it through. And if you are in a similar situation, you can make it through as well. Are you ready? Sure, we'll go with that. Good, 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 good. <laughs> now take you from here. All right. Good luck again. Good luck. Thank you. Anytime I start something, the goal is always to finish it. I think it would be very difficult to face my kids <laughs> if I didn't make it. Yeah. Yep. That's a little scary to me. Being an educator for at-risk youth, I like to know things and have control. <laughs> the food's gotten better from the last time when I was here, but um, I've gotten bug bites on me and stuff from sleeping in the floor. The booking process, that was the moment. I realized I'm giving up all control. When I first walked into the pod, they were in free time, so everybody was around. Do I have a smile? Boy, yeah! I ain't late in the middle of here in a position tree. I know you guys are gonna be Oh my god. Where were you at? Oh my god. So it's just like, oh, what's going on? 
in my mind, it's like, okay, I just gotta go in and have this look like, you know, hey, don't f with me. Now I need to go ahead and do what I came here to do. Now it's game time. You know, I've watched the show, it's always been a lot smaller. 100 plus guys are never really on lockdown. Because you can't lock people down if their doors don't lock. And you got one guard, you can't punish them because you're alone. It is insane. They just got the supplies in. Had a big bag of razors sitting up on the thing. And when the white guard walked away from his desk, the guy came up, took like a handful of razors, brought him back to his room. What do you need a handful of razors for? Guards watch him, doesn't give a it is not safe whatsoever. You're constantly doing this when people walk behind you. You know what I mean? And I get that it's jail, and that's that's common, but I cannot breathe in there. I don't know if I can do this. I woke up, ate breakfast, and getting into it, getting to know everybody. You got grits. Understanding how everything worked, so I'm getting in the mist. I explained my cover story to maybe one guy. It was too easy. I don't want to be a not on the log, just sitting there looking around. So I just got right to it. My workout routine is basically like a thousand reps. I call it a stack a day. Maybe 100, 150 pull ups, two to 300 push ups, abs. I'm a six foot three, tall, handsome black guy, look good. Everybody's eyes is on me. Like, who is this dude? My best advice to a first time would be just try to be as humble as possible. But if you come in and you constantly trying to beat your chest and flex on them, that doesn't gain us respect here because we live in this place. Best thing for you to do is try to stay, keep a low profile. Don't draw attention. You're drawing too much attention to yourself. You're too loud. I won't get flashy with it. Nobody gets flashy with it. It might be someone bigger that will test you. It's a doggy dog world. I'm an apex predator, so there's nothing that's gonna be out here trying to eat me. Just being in here, people get a sense of like if you really plan or you really not. 
So I had to let him know, like, don't play with me. I didn't get to eat before I came in. Oh, Jesus. My first morning, like, I'm shaking because I'm so hungry. This bread's not decent. I can eat for breakfast. I have a food allergy to gluten. It is called celiac disease. Very serious. I cannot have anything with gluten in it. You can't. Can you eat chicken fingers? Mm -hmm. Biscuit? Mm -hmm. I love it. Grits? Mm -hmm. Coming into this program, I thought that I would be able to survive because they have to serve fruits and vegetables with every meal. So I can at least eat that. So this morning, I just hope that I can get food that I can eat. <laughs> For breakfast, they had fried chicken fingers, bread, Cheese. I couldn't even eat the cheese because it was on the bread. I feel helpless. I don't know what to do. <laughs> How am I gonna get proof of celiac because of, you know what I'm saying, the situation? I'm like, I don't know what to tell them. <laughs> I'm not I don't know nothing about that, go. That's basically, she shoot me off. You don't know the I've been through. You don't know what this disease has done to me. It's not a joke. But they don't care. I still haven't had breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I'm, I'm getting ready to snap. My third night, I didn't shower for the first three days because I was hoping for clean clothes. So uh, I went ahead and took my shower, put my dirty clothes back on. But apparently, we we're supposed to set our laundry bags out at night. No, I'm not. You better cool now. You got free time. You're supposed to take care of all that. So I stripped down to put my clothes outside. I had no underwear. I'm there and I'm naked. And I'm like, are you gonna bring me extra clothes? I said she was going to. I really have, I really have nothing. I'll be naked all night. I'll be back. You'll be okay. I keep telling me, so don't talk, they don't care. My, my cellmate's name is Rita, and she's wonderful. She's just a bitch. Yeah. I got you a shirt. Thank you, Rita. You can't come out that neck. You want to do it down? No, she doesn't. Rita had some extra shirts she had hidden that she was using as a pillow, and she gave me a shirt to put on. This is probably the most humiliating thing <laughs> that has ever happened. No, I'm not. But I was still like, very much exposed. She's gonna sit back now. Miss Williams, please, you said you would come back. I can't believe the guard abandoned me naked in my room.
I don't feel safe at this point. The doors don't lock. If somebody wanted to hurt somebody in a cell, all they would have to do is open the door. I have such a bad feeling of regret right now. This is like the, the most challenging mental thing I've ever done. It is insane. It's like, it's, it's literally an animal cage in there. I, I feel like I'm losing my mind. This ain't how it's supposed to happen, man. Hell of a Sorry, it's disappointing. Give me the f***. Did he give you a pair of pants? It's not right for you to live with that long clothes on. She told you to pull your clothes off and stand there and she'll be right back so she ain't even come back. I'm mad now. I just want to sit up here and be mad. Me and my vagina hanging out because I have no underwear. Just gonna sit up here and be mad. I can't really walk around the day room naked, can I? Mm -mm. <laughs> Might make a statement. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'll do it in all dream. You guys didn't give me any clothes. Here's my vagina, everyone. Please enjoy it. It's my <laughs> full display. Mm -hmm. All right, watch out, Rita. You're about to see it again. It's my fun yelling bitch. I'm laughing to look up that way. I can't get any help. I don't know. I don't know what more to do. Okay, she's coming back. Maybe. Now it's because she's doing just for the hell of it, so that's why I act like I wouldn't even care. I wouldn't be spending a whole time. I don't understand why she would. But they do it just for the hell of it. She's going to keep doing people like that. That's not okay. It is not okay to deny it's not human okay. beings clothes. And I have underwear, especially women who menstruate and have periods. I guess I'll just free bleed all the way down to my ankles whenever my time comes. It really bothers me. The sheriff, the captain, anybody involved in the senior leadership who know about this program have no idea what is happening to the women in their facility. That surprises the hell out of me. You want to put this shirt on like, like a pair of pants? And, and, and I got another shirt. Put it on like a pair of pants. Put your legs See, in. See, I'm OK. All you got to do is put your, your legs in just like a pair of pants. Get the shirt, girl. Rita, put I the shirt can't on. Rub my vagina on your shirt. Put it on like a pale pants, please. Like on your mom and Put the shirt on like a pale pants, so your butt won't be out of control. You ain't got to worry about turning over all that butt, you know. It's gonna have a coochie hole right in the middle. That's of it. all right, but you ain't your your butt bottom in the front cover up. That's good. You can cover it up. Put a towel on that. Thanks. Can you have Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is like probably the most humiliating, vulnerable moment of my life. Is this real? Is this really what they do to people in jail? Like, is this normal? It is. It's real. Yeah. Uh -huh.
and spend however you want for the military. You make me a villain, you make me a bitch. Uh, stay safe. I was just done with it. Hey, Chief. I'm just gonna start by apologizing. Matt, he's given, he's given the signal. And he, I guess, has said to camera that he's done, he's done, he wants out today, he just wants out. He might just be being dramatic, but we don't know, so we have to take it seriously. <laughs> Y'all's batting average sucks. <laughs> it does. I'm just saying, at this point, I don't think it's safe anymore. This probably won't make you feel better, but you know, we've obviously been watching. I mean, you've done a really good job just blending into the background. You know, you're not alone in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess what I'm asking is, um, what do you want to do? I don't know. I mean, it's just like, it's like a 50-50. I'm just trying to get inside your head what's going on. I think I, I underestimated the show, and I think that, I think you guys show as much as you can, but you don't show it all. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, we yeah, can't. Can. There's, there's no way to show it all, yes. I'll be honest with you. This is the dumbest decision I've ever made. I don't think it's safe. I don't. If you put all the mental aside, I don't think it's safe. There's weapons, there's drugs, there's lack of, of respect in every aspect inside of there. They don't give a It's just, it's just not safe. That scares me. You want out. I think that I'm in over my head and I'm kind of questioning my decision. All the seals are soft. They don't strike no fear to nobody. I'm not gonna sit here and be bullied around by them. Why did you give this signal? You're not gonna be able to edit a lot of this because I don't think you all are gonna like some of what I'm about to tell you. So what do you want to do? I'm ready to go. 
She shoot me off. I still haven't had breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I'm I'm getting ready to snap. Coming in, my main goal is to kind of establish, like, look, don't play with me, don't come around me. Hey, get down. I'm not gonna show them any weakness. Cause I ain't scared of nobody. I went ahead and put my clothes outside to do laundry. I'll be back. You'll be okay. I can't believe the guard abandoned me naked in my room. Is this real? Is this really what they do to people in jail? Oh, yeah. In jail. He called me out as soon as I told my story. Have a seat. What's going on? I don't think it's safe. What do you want to do? Just try to give it a few days. People are gonna watch this, and they're gonna see how weak I am. That scares the up. regret it, but yeah. And I am. I'm sorry. It really is. It's okay. It's okay. All right, Matt, how it works is you're going to go through the intake. So you're yeah. going to release out the door. You're going to come out of the gate. Take a right. Go two blocks down. You'll see a production van. We'll pick you up. OK? All right. All right, we're good. We'll get you up. I'm sorry, dude. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Came in here thinking, ah, oh, I can do it. It's, it's, no worries, you know. A hundred percent, this process, it broke me. seasons leading up to this jail made it seem manageable. And the jail was a thousand times worse and tougher, and the experience was not what I expected to get out of it. What you guys show on TV is just like a blink, a blink of what goes on in there and how you actually feel. Jail, prison, whatever you want to call it, is literally hell on earth. And I know I let a lot of people down, but I don't know, I, I got lost in my own head and I couldn't, I just, I couldn't accept it. I just couldn't do it.
wanted. What do you want me? Right over here. Why did you give the signal? Y'all are going to be able to edit a lot of this, because I don't think you all are going to like some of what I'm about to tell you. What's going on? It's been pure f from the moment I walked in through the door. Can you can you give me some examples? When, like, the f guard abandoned me naked in my room. You guys have to know about that situation. We do know about that. That was, that was awful. That's inhumane. That's it. I'm probably going to cry. I told you I didn't want to, but that was the most humiliating moment of my life. Um, well, this jail doesn't provide people with underwear at all. So I'm not wearing underwear right now. I will not wash clothes again because I don't want this situation to happen again until other clothes came in on commissary. They don't give you extra clothes. What's her name? Williams. Officer Williams. I'm not going to call her officer. I'll call her guard Williams. So what do you want to do? Oh, God. Um, OK. I feel better. I'll stay. I just needed to talk to somebody. OK. Yeah. Thanks, Ashley. Yep. I want to go back in there because I have the ability to fight Miss Williams in a very intricate and technical way that other women do not. I'm not going to yell at her. I'm not going to call her names. I want her to be fired and to make sure that this never, ever, ever happens to any woman in custody at Etowah County ever again. feeling okay so are you ready to do this ready i'm ready to do it whenever y'all are ready to do it man so you're ready to do it now i figured that was coming <laughs> so yeah you're ready cool This is the moment, so I'm about, they're about to take me right now. I'm nervous for you. You know, I wouldn't do it. It'll be fine, because I'll come out on the other end stronger. Well, OK. We love you. But I love y'all, too, and uh, I'll see y'all on the other side. Alex? You OK? Yeah, I think I'm just kind of taking it all in right now. I'm interested to see who, um, just like who else is going to be in there. I'm hoping there's a few other like younger guys I can kind of mesh with right out of the gate. So we'll see. At least it's nice outside. Beautiful day to get arrested. <laughs> Good luck. Appreciate it. We'll be watching. I'm a political science major, and I actually have one semester left before I graduate. There's a part of me that has considered becoming a congressman and trying to reform the criminal justice system. And I'll have a lot of firsthand knowledge from this experience to make that happen. She's a good mom. I can't deny that. I think that the audience might think that I'm someone who will have a rough time because I can be kind of like awkward and I do get nervous. But what they don't know about me is I'm also very good in adapting to a lot of different social situations. What about it, Alex? Hey, How's sure. things going, man? Good. How about a week? Chief. Nervous? A little bit, rightfully yeah. so, I guess. Well, you just but... need to take a breath. I think you'll do good. You look like you're a little bit more calm. You're a little bit more relaxed. You're not as shaking as much. Yeah. Are you nervous right now? A little bit. And they're shaking like crazy. These guys will see that, and they will eat you alive. Just be yourself. You know how to act. Good yeah. luck, Alex. Yeah. All right, Alex. Appreciate it. Good luck. See you on the other Step side. Step right back here to our arrest team. They're yes, going to take it from here. All right. All right, sir. Lift your right leg back towards me. That was so sheltered. I definitely had some privilege growing up that probably a lot of people didn't. I've always had, like, my mom or my dad and just kind of bail me out of everything, so I've never really had to, like, get through something on my own. 
I'm glad that I had that great childhood, but I'm not a kid anymore, and I gotta start doing things for myself. Big step. Like, it's just time to grow up and stand fully on my own two feet. of like changing out from my regular clothes to my inmate clothes was very slack. No one watched me change out. I didn't have to do like the whole cough bent or anything like that. They let me keep my socks and my underwear. So I totally could have stuck something up my butt if I wanted to. And y'all would be none the wiser, so. into the pod. It definitely became real at that moment. <laughs> there were a few people freaking out like nothing I've ever heard in my life. Freaking out, but I didn't want to show that I was freaking out. Look at his ass up out of here. <laughs> it's gonna be a long 60 days. the incident with Miss Williams. I told the other inmates, and everybody's like, oh yeah, that was messed up. It's a horrible thing that happened to you. And at that point, I realized, okay, everybody's on board with me. The one thing I hate above anything else is somebody in a position of power abusing that. So I'm gonna do what I do best and fix this. I wrote this like military style. On 427-19, approximately 200 hours, I was advised by Guard Williams that he provided with pink clothes. Guard Williams made me stay cool and be nude, utterly humiliating me. Luckily, my roommate had fixed shirt. I was able to cover my genitals with. Guard Williams needs retraining and disciplinary action taken against her immediately. I was gonna use every tool possible to make sure that that woman was not allowed to torture us anymore. I am 
one of the only people that can really protect these girls at this point. And I decided to show them how to write about what she's done wrong and hope that somebody is going to pay attention to it. I'm not gonna let her win and I'm not gonna let these other women fight alone. I came in after the commissary, so I don't have everything I need. I don't have soap, I don't have anything. I have to get everything from the seal every time I take a shower. They just annoy me. They usually have the liquid soaps um, poured out, but today they didn't have it. So I was like, let me just see if I can just get it. Also, I needed a medical form so I can get my shoes. I could have just grabbed whatever I wanted. I went behind the CEO's desk, grabbed the soap, and then I seen the medical forms, and I just grabbed one of the medical forms. All the CEOs are soft. They don't strike no fear to nobody. I'm not gonna sit here and be bullied around by them. into a pod with 150 women is going to be a challenge because I don't usually get along well with women as friends. Not because I don't want to be friends, but they find some petty reason to turn on me. People are people are trifling. <laughs> people are shady. So we're about 5 minutes out. Okay. Once I see the facility, just stand behind me in case I faint. Thank you. Bye, gentlemen. OK. Right now, I'm a God-fearing woman, but I wasn't always that person. I was a very conniving child. In front of everyone, I looked like I was the perfect kid. And behind the scenes, I was doing a lot of bad stuff. I started drinking at 11. I was a stripper at 14 years old. 
I was involved in cocaine. I just became wild. But then on my 16th birthday, I got pregnant, and I just changed my life. How are you guys doing? Good, Jennifer. You? I'm wonderful, sure. Good to see you guys. All right. If you would, step right this way to the rest team. They're going to take it from here. My life since being born again has been an amazing transformation. All right, let's put it down, left leg. I went from being a very cold-hearted, vindictive, selfish person to someone who can love the unlovable. I feel like my views will be accepted by some of the women in there, but I feel like other people will think that I'm fanatical and, you know, I'll get on their nerves. And that's OK, because I don't care about anyone's opinion. Hey, so how do I, uh, how exactly do showers work? I'm going to take my towel and work. where do I put my clothes? Right now, I don't know much at all, but um, I need to just kind of get to know the basics because I don't know how to use the commissary machine or anything. I don't know how to use the showers. I really don't know how that works, so I got to start figuring that out. Um, Are you going to try to take a shower today? I don't know. I, I should I should try to take a shower today. I'm going to have to do it at some point. I can't go 60 days without showering. I mean, then I will get my ass beat. I am starting to smell myself, so <laughs> I'm just going to have to do it. I don't feel comfortable getting naked right in front of everybody. It's weird. You know, I've, I've been in locker rooms and stuff before, but even those had like, you know, little things you could close off the showers with. And this was just like totally open with like three guys showering here and three guys showering there. So it was just an adjustment. It's like ripping off a bandit. I'm just gonna go in there and I'm, I'm gonna do it. And if I do, I do it. If I do it wrong, I'm sure someone will let me know. I don't really know how you take a shower wrong. Oh, 
Too much. I was surprised that you pulled me out so early. You didn't give the signal? No. <laughs> um, okay. Did it look like I did? Yeah. I do have a tendency to like sometimes I'll like do that, like that's just like a movement. I wouldn't I probably did it wasn't even thinking. Um this has actually never happened before. I'm so, so sorry. Don't be sorry. But you're here now. So how are things going? So far, so good. I, I definitely feel more relaxed today than I did yesterday. The anticipation always gets me more than actually the event. For example, within like five minutes of me getting in there and actually taking the shower, I realized that I wasn't looking at anybody's and nobody was looking at my so it was simple enough. So. Anyway, we should get you back. Okay. against Officer Williams. And at first, I was thinking, does grievances go anywhere? Well, I don't know. Smells <laughs> good. But I got pulled out to talk to the officer who handles all the grievances. This is my opportunity to get this woman fired. All right. All right. Okay, so I don't want to cry. I don't like to cry. But this is the most humiliating moment of my life to be left naked in a cell. If they're not going to take this seriously and they're not going to put a stop to it now, then there's nothing more that I can do and I'm wasting my time. What's going to happen to the officer that left me naked? Is she going to get in trouble for that, for leaving me naked in the room? I'm not the only one that's happened to. I'm just the only one that bitched about it. It's okay. And this one kind of pisses me off. It's by far not the first issue that I have received pertaining to her. Everything regarding her is now going to a cabinet. Okay. That's all that matters to me. When I'm getting this many people say the same thing, when it's come to me, makes that I know full damn well run in different social circles. It kind of raises the hairs on the back of my neck. I'm going to see what I can do for you about her. What's your name again? Deputy Klein. Klein, okay, all right. Thank you. I am very angry, and I'm hope and pray that he takes what I tell him seriously and handles it. I believe he will. food allergy to gluten, called celiac disease. I cannot have anything with gluten in it. My whole life, they misdiagnosed me. And because of the misdiagnosis, I lost 90 pounds. My hair fell out. My hair was about this short. It just sucks, you know, every time I go to my tray, it's, you know, nothing there that I can eat because of celiac. Coming into this program, I thought that I would be able to survive because I believed and hoped that they would have fruits and vegetables because I can eat those. At this point, I've been here for five meals and salad was served once and then they've only had fruit once. It's very easy to dismiss it as frivolous, but this is my health. There's nothing about my health that's frivolous. I can get extremely sick, throwing up, diarrhea, 
so it's really affected my life. Shanice is struggling. I don't think that she was, like me, prepared for how bad it was in here. Their job in this facility is to protect everyone. They're not protecting her by starving her out. Walking into intake, I wasn't really sure what to expect, and this has exceeded anything that I would have thought. Just the sheer noise and pandemonium. It was disgusting. It's so dirty. It smells like armpits and stinking butt and vomit. It's putrid. The girl who pat me down, she absolutely barely touched me. So I could have brought in everything that I wanted to bring in. The girls, everyone who comes in is, is coming down from some drugs. Shake your ass up, bitch! You are man. And then they give you the uniform. And the shirt is a 4X. There's no, this is blood. <laughs> no, we can't ask them. When they gave me my sheets, they were full of blood, and I was not willing to take those sheets. The rookie guy did give me another set of sheets. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And they're warm. But he kind of looked surprised at the fact that I actually said something and expected new sheets because everyone else upstairs has bloody sheets, and they're OK with it. You go ahead, Riley. Ladies up, please. There was no comparison to this pod and what I've seen before on other episodes. It's enormous. And it was so overwhelmingly disgusting. But spiritually, I'm unshakable. I'm unmovable, and I'm not going to cower down and back down to this. I'm determined to make it the full 60 days. I expect it to be more, have more issues with the inmates, but that hasn't been a problem. They've, they've really welcomed me with open arms. It's the staff, like, it's like they, they don't, they don't care. 
I, I just been shaking because I'm like, I feel like I'm really about to like snap. Because I'm like, you don't treat people like this. This place sucks. It sucks. And I want to help out, but it's like they are, they are violating every possible human right. They are violating it. Wow. Um, what do you want to do? All the women are locked down. I'm in my cell. Miss Williams immediately starts taunting inmates. We're not in here to be gawked at, but this is standard. You so mad you can't get to me. Oh, I can open the door. And then the night shift sergeant comes, I guess, to check on Miss Williams. You run the unit. It's my job to have them to conversate with you and make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. That's part of my job. I'm not saying what you're doing is wrong. They just doing whatever they want to. It ain't nobody holding them accountable. Nobody. 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 I have no idea what's going on, but I would love to watch Miss Williams get fired right in front of me. That would be my dream. And I want her to know that I was the one who was responsible for her getting fired. I can stay at home. Walks out and I'm like, <laughs> I'm dreaming. What the f just happened? I don't know if she got fired or she quit, but I hope that she never is gonna come back to jail again. That this is the last time that she's in this facility. The bitch is gone. The bitch is gone. Yeah, yeah. Burn it down, bitch. Burn it down. Burn it down. One of my mission is just getting to know people and building relationships. In most things that I do in life, I'm socially malleable. I consider myself someone who can get along with anybody and has, has a lot of friends and has a lot of genuine connections. I want to make these connections, but I, it's hard because these people are just so different than me. What's your name? Jason. Jason? Yeah. Jason, boss. I'll be honest, I started thinking about Dennis. I'll give him credit where credit's due. He's doing great. He's meeting everybody. Why am I not doing that? And 
I know I said before I came in here that I was a social chameleon. This is like a whole different level of people that I don't relate with. So I felt like, okay, you know, maybe I should just kind of dip. She had her by the hair, throwing uppercuts. I don't get entertainment. This is it for me. This is exciting. Since I've been in here, Dennis hasn't introduced himself at all. I think he thinks he's better than me. He wouldn't shake my hand. He's just an I decided to just go. We were told not to leave the unit. Quit doing all this stupid that you're doing. I don't need that. Don't raise your voice up. We have some concerns. We are now looking at you to help us as soon as possible. Your mission is to save the program. Yes, sir. I failed. You're not, honey, you're not a failure. Listen to me. You could see an inmate because you're a CEO. People are going to watch this, and they're going to see how weak I am. She went out. I'm going to regret it, but yeah. When they gave me my sheets, they were full of blood, and I was not willing to take those sheets. He kind of looked surprised at the fact that I actually said something. I'm the type of guy I can go in any situation and become somebody. All the CEOs are soft. I'm not gonna sit here and be bullied around. Hey, you gonna get beat up. I am overwhelmed with everything in my life. I'm potentially going through a divorce. And Miss Williams abandoned me naked in my room. I'll see what I can do for you about her. You know. I hope this is the last time she's in this facility. Burn in hell, bitch! Jesus! I'm hungry! I have celiac disease. I cannot have anything with gluten in it. I just want them to give me my commissary. You don't treat people like this. What's going on? I have violated every possible human right. I thought that I wasn't gonna have a hard time making genuine connections. But this is like a whole different level of people that I don't relate with. I don't know why he ran up behind me. I think he wanted to maybe intimidate me, just kind of f feel me out. But I did regret giving him the ball the way that I did. But I probably should have probably been a little bit more assertive because that just makes you look like a bitch.
Do I think they bought it? No. I don't think they bought it. I was like, oh, I've been busted on the first week that I'm in here. It, oh, man, it just, that, that hurt. I'm trying to learn how to just fit in. But I don't know if, if I'm fully doing that here, you know? Dennis, he's doing great. He's meeting everybody. Why am I not being accepted by these people? Not right now. I gotta, I gotta have this off real quick. There's a level of comfort in knowing who else is a participant with you. Yo. But he doesn't really give that sense of comfort to me either. Since I've been in here, Dennis hasn't introduced himself at all. But he obviously, I know he's there and he knows I'm there, so. Yeah, I know. I thought we would get along and be able to talk and stuff, but I think he thinks he's better than me. But it's out of my control. <laughs> I sat down to play Uno with Dennis, a group of people. I was just trying to introduce myself like I would any other inmate. You said you were Dennis, right? Oh, yeah, in the jail, I figured I'd just go by Quincy because it just felt more authentic. I put my hand out, and he just looked at me and wouldn't shake my hand. That pissed me off. No! When someone, like, disrespects me like that, it just makes me not like them. I know it's over there. When Alex tried to shake my hand, I didn't shake his hand. Because there's people watching. You know, the black guy's running in there. When it comes to a white guy, like Alex, I have to let him know, like, okay, you can't just come up to me like that. I think Dennis does everything to be about Dennis. I don't think he was cheering me on in training to help me. I think he was trying to make himself look like the tough guy. Duh, like, duh, like what? Duh, duh, like that. Like, yeah. uh, just take it slow. Let's go, Alex. Come get away from me. But I'm not a little bitch, and you're not going to make me look like a little bitch. Thank God. God. Dennis has given everybody else a handshake but me. He made it, like, so extra. That was awkward. Super awkward. I don't need to talk to Alex. You know, I don't owe him anything. I think Dennis is just focusing on making himself look good for TV. I mean, he's got a shirt off all the damn time. He walks around like his don't stink. <laughs> be honest, I expected to be more, have more issues with the inmates, but that hasn't been a problem. It's the staff. Like, it's like they, they don't, they don't care. What do you want to do? I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back. I just hope, I pray my commissary is there. Because if that's there, I'll be okay. I can make it through. But something's gonna have to give. So what are the odds that your commissary is gonna come today? I don't know. Yeah, you really think I can hear you there. My husband is on board with me being a part of this program. Are you at home? 
Yeah. But we are going through a possible divorce. And my husband refuses to talk to me about the divorce until after I'm out of this situation. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let you go. All right. We're just putting, kind of putting a pin in our marriage and we'll revisit that. So I've got 21 hours a day in a cell to think about if my marriage is going to fail or not. All right, you stay safe. Hello, I love you. How does that make you feel? Very trapped. I saw Ashley. I was surprised that Ashley decided to talk to me. But it felt really good to have somebody else that I know in here. Yeah, so I'm working on a corner. She's good. She's good. Like, I'm like, I have an eight. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. The officers have not seen Ms. Cray Cray yet, but if they don't give me my she's coming out. She's coming out. I've been here for a couple hours. After I came in intake, they took my bra. So I'm walking around just covering, you know, my breasts. It's really uncomfortable. You know, I'm gonna get So you just take my bra and then that's it. You have to get someone to bring you some whites up here. I am not from here. Uh... The first time I saw Shanice in the pod, she just has this look on her face like, okay, I'm over it. I feel like she's like a little puppy in a sense, and she needs to be coddled and pampered. This isn't the place for that. We all got problems. They took my bra. Me seeing Ashley, it was just a sigh of relief, but I didn't want to make it seem like we knew each other. Jennifer was in the same situation that I was in. She arrived, they had taken her bra. I was like, don't worry, girl, I got you. First one's free. <laughs> You're fine. First, first, first one's back. Right, With Ashley, our connection was just like, we kind of had each other's back. My roommate, Rita, was my biggest protector, but she left. So I want to be that saving grace for Shanice and Jen. They will not have to go through what I went through. I will protect them and I will take care of them. You just tie it like that, okay? She hooked me up. It was beautiful, it was a beautiful, you never realize how much you appreciate something until you don't have it. I was truly appreciative for that piece of material. Does it work? Yes, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Seeing Shanice and Jen, it was extremely motivating and it made me finally feel like I can do this. I can get my husband and our marriage off of my mind for a while. So game on. I now have a team and we are ready to get the job done. Don't put a shirt on. I'm 
gotten the confidence to kind of just do as I please when I want. I didn't care what anybody said. <laughs> And the little small guy, Mark Bullock, and he wanted to say something. He just wanted to say something. Oh my God. I'm tired of this shirt business, for real. He is making me the target. He's a lame -o. I don't worry about him. Mark Bullock, I'll pass. Dennis gives off a super arrogant vibe. It's such a blatant sign of disrespect. What? He's just a Rules is just not for me. <laughs> Believe that. Since I got in, I've learned my way around the jail. This jail is a big facility. There's so many, like, different pods. My roommate he was telling me about Unit 6, which is SAP. It's a drug program. There's more drugs. A lot of people want to get there because it's freedom down there. So I'm like, oh, it's, it's, it's the land of Mook and Honey on Unit 6. You ain't got to run in no cell. Like, the, the white boys, they come and pay you. They, they, they pay you. There's a lot more go on in 6 than it does in 4 from a contraband perspective. just kind of happened real fast. Me and my roommate decided to just go. I just see Dennis leaving the pod. I have absolutely no idea what was going on. I don't know if he's trying to pull himself from the program or what, but it was very random. This girl is like smart, she's brilliant, she's uh, awesome. Nah, Thank you. Are. First coming in and not having anything, it was really hard for me. They took my bra just because of a zipper. So Ashley made me this makeshift bra, but then the word got out. Here, girl, you gotta have my bra, girl. I don't need And then my roommate, Corey, gave me her bra. I love you. It's good. Hey, yeah. Oh, purple. 
And then I had another woman make me a bra. You're awesome! I love it! What did she make this color? Her shirt. She like ripped the purple off the shirt and weaved it in and kind of made like this little area where you could get cleavage. Yes, thank you. Excellent job. <laughs> People are automatically drawn to me and I don't know exactly what it is. Your eyebrows are awesome. You don't have them tattooed on me. People were already complimenting my eyebrows. Gorgeous. They smile and they giggle. Tell me I'm beautiful or, you know, compliment me. Yes. And I knew it would happen. No, there's just something about me. It's not many people that's in there with 99 teeth and beautiful hair and good lashes. She's really smart. She's really sweet. She really is. She's very intelligent. Jennifer has no anxiety, no worries. She's getting a lot of attention in a short amount of time. I think we had very, very different experiences entering this facility. She a good girl. This is something about her. With the influence you have in the pod, what do you hope to accomplish? There's a lot of hungry people for change. So my goal is to really just transform this place in helping people change. I do have the remedy. You can't get any better than Jesus Christ. I expect they have to go to prison and everything, but I've been praying about it really long. Awesome. God is amazing. God is really Yes, he is. I love God, and I love his people, and I just want to spread the word. And also, I felt blessed that the Holy Spirit brought me all those bras. David said you can undo it and let him sleep it. God had smiled on me. <laughs> I'm just So earlier in the day, Dennis just left and went to a different pod. He hasn't come back. I found out that he went to SAP unit, which to my knowledge is not a part of the jail that's being filmed. I don't know how much of the show he's seen before, but I know that people are usually kind of placed in pods for certain reasons. I think it was stupid of him because it puts the whole program at risk for sure. We have another situation. Yeah. Uh, it's another first. The SOD team came into the men's pod and they asked for volunteers to move to another pod. Okay. For whatever reason, Dennis decided that he was going to volunteer. So they moved him to another unit. So now it's a safety concern for us because we can't see him. My opinion, he's so arrogant. He's just going out on his own to try to do his own little thing. I'll talk to him. All right. I cannot have anything with gluten in it. 
I mean, what the real inmate's supposed to do in a situation like this. She cannot eat noodles. And they keep been giving me noodles every day. Yeah, And my attitude, when I'm hungry, my attitude is so bad. My ex-boyfriend bought me a shirt that said, I'm sorry for what I said when I was hungry. I was, I was just thinking, like, I'm really about to snap, and I'm about to get another 60 or 120 days here. Shanice is struggling with the food. They say it's no wheat. And they've been giving me bread. But she knows what she signed up to, to do. I'm hungry. I've lost weight since I've been here. I hope she has it resolved with complaining and complaining. It's ridiculous. This is not a hotel. This is jail. It sucks. Shanice is half starved because they can't give her the proper food. It is fried cheese. Fried cheese. It tastes like cheese. Sorry, I'm hungry. sitting at the table talking. A couple seconds later, some girls kicking in this lady's face. It just goes to show how things can change in a matter of seconds. It's a little scary. When I heard the commotion and I seen them fighting, I felt like, wow, this place is intoxicated with anger and just frustration and the spirit of hate. As a police officer, normally I would get involved but I don't get TV, I don't get entertainment. This is it for me. I had a front row seat. She had her by the hair and was throwing uppercuts, 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 and I didn't have to do anything. It was exciting. if we were gonna get pepper spray. I didn't know what was gonna happen, so I just did what I was told. You're caged in for 22 hours of the day. What comes out of it? Let's go, lock down! 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 Why did you move to a different pod? Yeah, I'm such a uh, a good guy. The guys wanted me to move to a different pod. The deal was to find out what you needed to do in that unit. We don't need you to go to Unit C. We stuck you in a particular unit where you know you're being watched, you know there's cameras everywhere, and you know that we can get to you in 45 seconds to get you help if something happens to you. We told you to stay in that unit. Don't no, volunteer. Told me to, I didn't want to. Okay. I didn't know what was going on. All right. They called me out of my room. The lady wanted to speak to me. It's the lady looking at me. Yeah. Oh, 
The lady said, Dennis Johnson, pack your bags. Cut the acting here, okay? We all straight. We know what's going on here. Let's make something real clear. We're expecting you to help us out. Your safety is our concern, okay? Yeah, I'm safe. They, they well, no, you're not. Not when you go and move to another unit, okay? They get you back there in one of them pods with no cameras in and whoop your butt. How we ain't even gonna know to come and get you. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back to that unit. Yep. Say you're having some problems with some guys up there, and you just don't feel like you need to be in here. Can I go back to unit four? Understood. Understood. So, so talk to me like a man, and everything's good. I've been doing what I can to do to throw everybody off. Do you understand what you're doing? I'm doing this. How many people do you see take their shirt off every day in front of a camera and work out? The shirts get wet. You know the rules. You can't have your shirt off in the pod. I'm playing by the rules. Did you have your yes, shirt I did. off? Yes, yeah, it's a yes not, or no. Yeah, yeah, it's a yes or no. You had it off. Yeah. That's not following the rules. All that does is draw attention to you. And if we're allowing you to get away with stuff like this, they're going to know something's up. If they know what you're in there actually doing, how safe do you think you'd be? This ain't some schoolyard, some college, or some football field. This is real life. So quit doing all this stupid shit that you're doing. I don't need that. Don't raise your voice, there. Do you understand what you're in here doing? This ain't some schoolyard, some college, or some football field. This is real life. So quit doing all this stupid shit that you're doing trying to look cool and all this kind of stuff. I don't need that. Don't raise your voice at me. You're in my building. Don't turn around anything on me, because I promise you, I will walk you out the door right now, and this will be over with and done. Go in there, do what you're supposed to do, and do your job. Simple as that. We don't have any more problems. We're good. We are. Okay. Go do your job. All right? Hang in there. Hey, you don't have to grip your hand hard, trust me. <laughs> no, sir. Look, we can cut the camera off and we can have a real talk, but at the end of the day, I do this for a living. Don't try me. Chief Pete from the jump, he don't like me. He's threatened by me, intimidated by me, because he thought when I was gonna come in, he thought I was gonna, they was gonna look at me and, you know, pounce on me. But that ain't the case. You get what I'm saying? I'm in there making shit happen. This whole situation right here, like, I can't, I can't deal with that. You're not gonna talk to me like that. No, you ain't gonna talk to me like that. We got a problem. We got a real problem. That fight was the most exciting thing that has happened since I have been there. It was awesome. I don't know what kind of monster I am now. What has this done to me? I'm making sure that Shanice didn't have to do it without. Ashley went around collecting oranges for me. That kind of like touched me to know that she had my back. <sighs> About to get emotional now. Oh my God.
what the f This girl came up to me and was like, you're on 60 days in. We know that you're undercover. What the f At that point, I was just like, I don't know anything about this show. So I took my popcorn and got out of the conversation because I don't want a target on my back. <laughs> How would you say that? I asked if I was undercover. Who? Um, some random ass lady. Nobody Sorry. has like anything else to talk about. I know, right? Besides, look at people that's in here. Look, their only defense to this is because they they think I'm pretty, and I will take that all day long. Have you been in court? What? Have you been in court yet? Can you get off my? <laughs> no. Get off my! You're starting to piss me off for real. We have a reason. I've been 50 days. No, I'm a U.S. Marshal. Hold, dude. I stole from the government. I'm like, look, dude, I'm up here on federal charges. I don't know what you want me to tell you. She's pissing me off. She left the camera after the fire train said, I love this. Because she's 60 days in. The last thing I want to do is talk about my case all day long. Yeah. I don't mind paying bitches. I do not mind paying are you going to count how many days I stay in jail? Mm -hmm. Don't come in here and pretend to be a criminal and pretend like you're going through what we're going through when you're not. Get a life. I'm going to what you say. You're going home to your kid. I don't know her. It pisses me off. What happened in six? Oh, they treat me like a king. Laid out my whole bed for me. The other inmates laid down your bed for you? Yeah. When I come in, it's all of respect, everything. It kind of bothered me when I first saw Dennis come back to the pod. The audacity was just beyond me. When I was in Unit 6, I told the officer, hey, man, I'm just not feeling right. I got to get back down to 4. But, like, seriously, nobody never said to stay in that particular pod. It don't go outside that pod. Nobody never said anything. We don't have cameras in 6, so... Now I know. Now I know. I think there's a part of Dennis that, you know, doesn't really take the program that seriously. I think he wants to be the big shot of the season. I think he wants the most camera time. I don't think there's any way in, you know, a week that Dennis could have done anywhere near enough to be cocky enough to think that he could just, what, pod hop? You had one job to do, Quincy. I don't know if that's what he was trying to do, think that he would just go from unit to unit. And that was to stay on unit six, dog. Maybe he could work his way into the female's pod and just be running that I don't know. I thought you was just in there. I was. You didn't pay your rent and got run off? No, I think it's something about charge. It was a, it, it, it was a, a stupid move. No, I got some happy people true. You know what I'm saying? Rookie mistake, Dennis. I'm sorry, man. I won't need you again, man. I won't need you again, man. <laughs> that meeting, I'm still thinking about that. She picked, tried to bully me. He tried to bully me. He tried to bully me. But he showed his weakness. I'm not intimidated at all.
I could have just like hit that guy. He told me that I had to respect him, but there was no respect given on the other side, but I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna get my respect. I'm gonna get it. When the show over, I'm gonna talk to Chief P. You're not gonna do nothing to nobody twice the size. Chief P, you ain't do nothing. White boy. You know, when I was talking to Dennis, what I was trying to do is help him because he was getting himself into a situation that he was not prepared for. He could have possibly got hurt, and he took that the wrong way. He bowed up, flexed his muscles, tried to act like he was the bigger man, like he was going to put me in my place, and I think he forgot what his mission was. I'm very concerned about the safety and success of the program because we've got so many major problems. We've had two participants drop out in a short amount of time. Matt, we thought he was gonna get in here and run with it. In three days, he tapped out. I was shocked. Jacob, he made it in booking for a couple hours. With all these participants tapping out, with Dennis going rogue, is he going to take this program and sell it out to everybody and put everybody in danger? And he's just real cocky, real arrogant. I really don't know what he's thinking. And Alex, I have my doubts about him. So we need to back up and look at what we're doing and make sure the program's going to be a success. I'm Jonathan Horton, Sheriff of Etowah County. With me is my Chief of Corrections, Keith Pete. We have some concerns. We've taken four male individuals and put them in our jail. Two of them were unsuccessful. We are now looking at you to help us as soon as possible. And we're counting on you because of your background. And I believe you've got the initiative to want to help us. Your mission is to save the program. Can you do that for us, Tony? Yes, sir. For my commissary, I'm about to be eating good. Yes, sir, John. He told me I was probably going to get robbed. Why was it going to be me? You better be prepared in here. If Alex gets himself into trouble with his commissary, I can't help him. That's on you. What the I was shocked to see Miss Williams walk back into the pod. She's taking her power and using it in the wrong way. She gets this really evil, wicked grin on her face, and the only way to eradicate evil is to pray. husband filed for divorce. My life is falling apart. If I stay here any longer, I'm going to lose my mind. I feel broken. You're our salvation to see that this program is successful. I can be extremely intimidating. I can do damage. You ready for this? Absolutely. By the end of this show, I want to go down in history as the best participant ever with 60 days in. Ever. I consider myself someone who has a lot of genuine connection. But it's hard because these people are just so different than me. Even Dennis wouldn't shake my hand. He's just a You want to go to the seats? Go to the I decided to just go. We were told not to leave the unit. This ain't some schoolyard, some college, or some football field. This is real life. 
So quit doing all this stupid that you're doing. I don't need that. No, there's your voice over. It's been pure from the moment I walked in through the door. Miss Williams abandoned me naked in my room. That's inhumane. I hope this is the last time she's in this facility. Burn it Out of four male individuals, two are unsuccessful. Your mission is to save the program. Can you do that for us, Tony? Yes, sir. This is Matt. He's the one that we was most confident was gonna have zero problems. He made it three days. You couldn't get him out of there fast enough. Jacob is a correction officer. Mentally, I didn't think he was prepared when he came. Never made it out of our intake area. Alex, he's still in our facility. He's still nervous, so he needs to have that confidence instilled in him. We want you to help him over the hump. This is Dennis. Works out every day in front of the camera, hoping to make it to Hollywood. He's cocky, he's arrogant. He thinks he's gonna be a movie star after this. He forgot his purpose, which is looking out for us. Hopefully he gets his head out of his ass and does what's right. You coming in is a game changer because this program means the world to me. The information, the knowledge, and what that can lead to to make us a more efficient, safe facility. And I'm not trying to build you up. I believe you've got what it takes. I have no doubt that you're gonna be successful. Thank you. My name is Tony. I'm 32. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm a correctional officer at Fulton County Jail. One fall in. Can't cut. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Which is the jail in seasons three and four of 60 Days In. We actually put undercover participants in this jail. I've been there roughly six years. Respect in jail is everything. I have a zero policy for disrespect. You have to have structure. You have to have order. If there's no structure, if there's no order, there's chaos. I'm gonna show you some of the contraband that we get out of our jail. Weight equipment that people turned into a hammer. Knives. Wow. An actual knife. Never ever seen those at my facility. You know we don't sell knives on the commissary. So how do you think I got in there? Someone brought it in. Somebody brought it in. With this much contraband, there is definitely some officers who are being compromised, without a doubt. But I'm definitely, honestly, I'm your guy. Being a detention officer, you have to stay on point. I can be extremely intimidating, but forced to be reckoned with. If I'm backed in a corner, I'm not going to hesitate to do whatever needs to be done. I can do damage. We're counting on you. You're our salvation to see that this program is successful. You ready for this? Absolutely. I'm pumped. Um, I want to see what this facility has to offer and see what feedback I can offer the sheriff as well. I want to go down in history as the best participant ever with 60 Days In. Ever. My husband and I filed for divorce, but we were working on it, and we still say that we love each other and that we miss each other, and he's the one that puts money on my books. I had too much time to think, and I pushed him, and I pushed him. I was like, I need to know, because all I'm doing is sitting in this cell, and I have no clue where my life is going to be after I walk out of this jail. He pretty much told me, like, you should prepare to be by yourself. And I just, I died. So my marriage is over, officially.
It's been headed that way. But when you still love somebody, you hold on to hope. And that is gone now. I don't want to have a divorce. I'm depressed. I'm sad. I'm lonely. Emotionally. Just like a final sense of defeat. My life is falling apart. Rogers, Rogers. Four, six, and seven. Four. I was shocked to see Miss Williams walk through that door. Absolutely shocked. Why was she there? I have tried so hard to get this woman fired and she is still here and I don't understand why. I felt like the jail had failed us all. Why the f is that bitch here? It was already a very sensitive, heartbreaking day with my divorce and everything. And then Miss Williams showed up. This is a complete nightmare. That whole incident with Chief Peak and, and Bullock, that just kind of threw me for a loop. Those guys like really disrespected me on, from a human being perspective. I feel like I'm on my own. So I'm gonna take a step back. Kind of like lay low and do my time. Dennis hasn't been the same guy since he's been back in the pot. I don't know what was going on with him. So with commissary, I'd been in there a couple days. I was hungry because up until then, all I had was pretty much water and the three meals a day that they have, if I liked it. I was just like ravenously hungry. I knew I needed to have my order in by Sunday to be able to get it by Tuesday. So I was definitely anxious to go ahead and, and get that started. I was really hungry. It was hard not to over order. And I definitely found myself kind of wanting everything. It's not a good idea to order commissary at Edward County Detention Center. A couple of guys down sales for me, he got the beat out of him. Over six packs of Raymond noodles. Extortion, your life taken, robbed. There's just so many negatives that come with just one positive. I ordered Butterfingers, I ordered Snickers, I ordered Chili Cheese Fritos. A couple of Honey Buns, e-cigarette. I ordered peanut butter, that was my favorite thing. And it's about $75, $80 of the 120 that I got. I'm about to be eating good. Don't go and buy a $50 though, $60 though, because that's going to put a target on your back. We're going we gonna to get that. Bones and Dalton come up to me. Bones is a tall, lean guy, about 6'4", you know, tattoos all over, you know, Aryan Brotherhood. Dalton's a young guy, he's 20 with long, longer blonde hair, he's got the teardrop tattoo. And they're like, hey man, just so you know, you're probably gonna get robbed. You're a young white guy, you're not very big, you're gonna be a target. I wanted to think that maybe they had my best interest in mind. But you can't trust anybody in jail.
I was a little bit nervous. It was the first time that any sort of violence had been alluded to. But if I get robbed, I'm going to make it as hard for them as possible to take my stuff. I've got my ass kicked outside of here, so I kicked ass and I've got my ass kicked. I've my ass kicked more times than one. I was so hungry, I was kind of like, I was prepared to fight and get my ass kicked. Take my life before you take my peanut butter. I'll fight for the Emergency signals? I don't think I'll be needing that. I definitely think I'm uniquely qualified for this. Fulton County Jail offers some of the best training that is out there. How you feeling, Tony? Um, I feel good about it. Just keep thinking of us and everything that you'll be bringing back to us as well, because we're going to pick your brains when you get back. Good luck to you. You don't need luck. You're just blessed. So yes, yes. take care of yourself and uh, do them a good job. I really, really do appreciate that. That means a lot to me. All right, take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like fuel to the fire. With his blessings, I mean, let's go. Let's, let's, let's get it done. Tony, how's it going, man? All right, sir. How you doing? Good. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. You know, we got a lot of weight in this. Two guys have skipped out. We really got a lot of dependence upon your success. Keep your head on and know that this is game time. Tony's got it. The ability to talk, carry himself. I look for him to bring us the most information. He's going to be a real game changer for us. I'm ready. Going in, my strategy is to let everyone know that I'm not to be played with. I will fight you. I'm gonna find out where the drug's at, who bring it in, if it's officers, inmate workers, or whoever. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be a key player. Hands down, no, no questions asked. <laughs> I walked in the intake, the guy had his feet up. I could tell he was probably high on something. But at that point, I just moved him for him. And then he looked up, oh, OK, OK. He had big, bulky pockets, $40 out of his pocket. He was like, filling his pocket. Then he realized he didn't feel the money. He's like, oh. See a little fighting. Okay, all right, all right. I'm in intake. When it's already crazy. Okay, well, shoot, we about to see a little fight in here. Okay, all right, all right. I'm gonna show you one of them. No, no, I'm gonna show you one of them. Come on, let's see about them. It's a one of them. It's a one of them. 
So he pulled out, he was like, hey, this is the 20. This is your 20, come get it. Yeah, so I knew not to trust your ass. <laughs> I don't know if he used the N-word like four times and he could, and if he would have used it again, I would have gone break his job. Walking into the pod, first thought getting to mind is like, Comparing their facility to Fulton County Jail, it's a different type of beast. Hey, man. You're real. Inmates are watching me. They're watching me. And the image that I'm putting off is, don't play with me. I don't laugh and joke with, with, with people. And then when I walk in the cell, <laughs> my cell is nasty. I got burnt marks all in my floor. Got cigarette, like blunt roaches all over the bed. <laughs> the room stink. Just nasty. <laughs> this facility is horrible. But, you know, if I can fix it, I mean, that's what I'm gonna do. It was Mother's Day, a very sensitive, heartbreaking day in Unit 5. Most of those women in there are mothers, so emotions are already super high. And then Miss Williams shows up. Mother's Day. On Mother's Day, we just wanted to call home. Miss Williams likes to take away our free time. I don't care. Just because she can. I said no free time. All I wanted to do was talk to my mother. My mother has never been without me for Mother's Day. But she took that away from us because she feels like she has that power. I don't know why the f y'all been trying to play me. Everybody is in jail. That's what I'm saying. Everybody ain't guilty. She is so disrespectful. She's taking her power and using it in the wrong way. Okay, y'all. C.O. Williams abuses her authority. It's absolutely unacceptable. Dealing with Miss Williams, she does not need to work around people, animals. She didn't even, she's not even fit to work around plants. Everybody's breaking down. Everybody's on edge. I'm on edge. So whatever you got to say, is really. I don't want to be here any longer than I have to be, but I'm going to snap off on Miss Williams. I can't take any more. I feel it coming.
On Mother's Day, because Miss Williams came in, we were all locked down. Love your ass out now. Come on. Janice is going to lose it on Miss Williams. I do. She was completely intoxicated with anger and just frustration. That power has got to her head. It was just an emotional day for um, all the inmates. Everyone was missing their families and their children and, you know, their moms. Ladies, Although I wasn't with my family, I deal with it a little differently. God, it's crazy, Lord, according to your word that if I abide in you and you abide in me, Father, that I can ask anything and it shall be done. When I look into Miss Williams' eyes, I see the devil. And the only way to eradicate evil is to pray. Touch each person. Prisoners to the seals. Oh yeah, Miss Williams, God's on board. Speaking in tongues is a gift of the spirit. It's a, a heavenly language. Enables me to battle things that I cannot see. I feel like I have the ability to help change these girls' lives in this facility by praying for them. And I 100% feel like that's why I'm here. Commissary was going to come on Tuesday. I ordered probably more commissary than I should have. When Dalton and Bones first told me, be prepared, you're probably going to be a target, you're young, you're white. Yeah, I mean, I got, I got a little nervous. I didn't want to show that I was freaking out, obviously. But I went and took off like $20 worth of commissary out of my order. show came up to me, then I started to think, well, maybe I am a target. I was scared, I was, I was nervous. Started thinking, like, why, why was it gonna be me? I wasn't the only white person, so why are you saying that it's gonna be me specifically? It's it's a tough situation to be ganged up on and feel like you don't you don't have anybody. You better be prepared in here. I didn't have the pull with anybody yet to really stop that from happening if it was gonna happen. You gotta take a for real with these criminals. Getting bullied. It's a it's a feeling whether you're a kid or whether you're you know an, an adult. I'm not trying to make it worse on myself. I'm here right now, I would never trust that white, that big ass white man. When I was in junior high, I was overweight, I was kind of awkward, so I got picked on pretty, pretty badly. It's very, it's very tough to come back from that. Three different people told me, yeah, and they're all white. 
Yeah. And I think there will always be times where it kind of comes back to haunt you. That makes me a target, it makes me a target, but I mean, I, I can't defend myself. Not a bitch. Mother's Day, but we're locked down and we are unable to talk to our families. She allows us out to take showers and that's it. The next group that went in included a girl named Misty. People's at their doors. How the f are they supposed to get in when you don't open them? Misty was pissed that this Mother's Day had been taken away from her. Did you get away from me? Not ever. Yes, you are. You are a bitch. She went up to the officer's desk, called her a bitch. I'm tired of you. There's a mother there. That's why you're here. I'm out of my face. She sprayed. Who is the spray from that? And then received a full can of pepper spray to the face. They took her out to medical, brought her back, locked her in her cell. She kept talking to me, and then she called me a bitch and started coming towards me. Miss Williams, she is such a mean woman. So instead of me beating her ass, this bitch would just burn her. How can you be guarding inmates when you're acting like one of them? What a fat ass. is very abusive with her words. If I talked that way on my job, I wouldn't have a job. Yep, I sprayed you. That's why you're red. Red, it's burning too This is a guard saying this to an inmate who still has burning pepper spray, who was locked behind a door. Every time you run, it's gonna burn. I bet you remember me, though. It's like taunting a puppy in a cage. Hey. It's ridiculous. Wow. This is a hell of a day. If I had not been in there watching that and listening to it, I wouldn't believe it. I wouldn't. stored it in the pod, and it's where everybody gets all their commissary, all their candy, chips, and everything like that. Yeah. I woke up, there was still the fear of getting robbed. Now record. So when I saw Alex, ordering a lot of story, but would definitely put eyes on him. It's a target on your back. You got a big store, a little white boy. Oh, they about to come get it. If Alice gets herself into trouble, I can't help him. That's on you. You know, I got to protect myself.
My strategy going into commissary is to get it. I didn't want to draw any attention to myself. I wanted to get it and go. I got out of there and just beelined it. Got back in the room, kind of was going through my inventory. Oh, sweet <laughs> neck here, <good> guy. <laughs> and I see it, the jar of peanut butter. And I rip open that freaking jar. You want a spoonful of peanut butter? Nah. I rip up the peel, I lick the freaking top, I don't care, and I grab my spork that I got to and just get a fat scoop. Fruit drain in it. I probably killed 25% of the jar just right then and there. God, it was the best $4 I've ever spent in my life. You did three sodas, right? You're right. Fuck, this morning, man. I went out in the day room and uh, had the e cig and a Coke. Everybody and their freaking brother coming up to you asking for a hit. So they're not taking little puffs, you know, they're they're going to a blink of like just cheap in it. It reminds me of just like feeling like I'm used, like, you know, the only way that I could be cool with people was to give them something. And I, I just don't I don't like that. After that, I was like, I'm never taking this thing out of the room again. Worst horrible decision. I'm walking around with the pod. I, I just got a certain presence about myself, a certain demeanor. It's, it's pretty noticeable. I see Dennis and Alex. Alex is no good. He don't do nothing. Dennis is coming off more with a softer approach, like a big brother or a older uncle. I just got here yesterday. So, lucky enough, I had time for me to put money on my books and make calls. I know that you don't have to be soft in jail. You can be straightforward, and people will not think that you're up to something or you are the police. I'm trying to smoke too. Got cream, gas, and tobacco. Ooh, just came with this bitch. My cellmate, Danielle, all he want to do is smoke and get high. Smoke and get high. And he smoked clean all day. Hey, pay me the lights. Let me fire this up. Come on That's some drugs with like roach spray in it. You see the flame, see how we got it? It's a week. He's like a junkie. I'm 33 years old. I've been coming here since I was 18. I love to smoke ice. I love to smoke weed. I love to smoke cone. I snort coke too. I snort a little hair on every now and then. But I just love to smoke, man. Everybody come in my room and smoke it. And it's funny like a crack house. You know, when you was here by yourself or your previous cellmate, you know, they probably was cool with you smoking some cone. <coughs> Not me. No. Don, my cellmate, he's always stoned. That's <coughs> All his friends come in here and want to smoke. That's not going to happen while I'm in here. Yo! I come back in, it's like three guys in there. One got a wick and one smoking some cone. I mean, these guys are... 
Okay. I don't trust him bringing people in. Everybody just walk in the cell, smoking blunts. So I put a stop to that. No, he just, nah, he don't want that smoke around, bro. That's you don't smoke, do you, bro? You don't want that shit From the jump, I'm letting them know, if you don't like it, you can get out my cell now. Respect. I don't smoke that. Shit, but I, be real. I don't want my shit smell like that. I'm trying to get in, get the out. I ain't got time for no free work or none of that. Shit, just straight up. Look, bro. While we in here, I run this. You know, just straight up. It's just how it is. Miss Williams took away our free time on Mother's Day. <laughs> what is she banging on? And then she decided that she would not allow us to sleep. banging on the walls, just taunting us as a group. Why are you doing that? Because I want you to get up and do it too. I'm asking you to stop. We got to go to class in the morning. Are you a child? Yes, I am. I'm a child. I'm a child. Tripping She's worse than the inmates. She gets this really evil, wicked grin on her face. She's been good all night. Yeah. Horrible. I was angry. I was really angry with her abuse of power. I have never in my life seen this. She made her night a living hell. She was also turning the lights off and then back on all night long. Mm. I am here. Waging psychological warfare on this evil human being. For 12 hours, we're under this woman's thumb with no help. Yuka! We can't scream for help. You are the help. Now shut the up. Who are you? Who are you? That bitch is crazy. <laughs> For real. Shut up! She derives joy out of demeaning people. I don't know what more to do. Don't want to sit here and continue to have my mental health beaten down. If I stay here any longer, I'm going to lose my mind. Good night, ladies. It's too crowded. 
We like sleep with Carl. One by one, they caught us all in the room. Hey, on your shirt, pants, and boxers, squat go. <laughs> it's embarrassing for sure. It makes you feel like less than a man. Take a shower, you're getting the out for real. Danielle, he don't like to take baths. That's a major problem for Justin and I. Dude, Shanice is like a little puppy in a sense, and she needs to be coddled and pampered. This isn't the place for that. Just keep getting more and more crowded in this place. After the fight, I was talking to a guy, Tony. He is making me think he's the participant. I don't know why. So you want to stay? My strategy is to let everyone know that I'm not to be played with. While we in here, I run this. Okay, sir. I ordered probably more commissary than I should have. Bones and Dalton come up to me and they're like, hey man, you're probably gonna get robbed. I wanted to think that maybe they had my best interest in mind, but you can't trust anybody in jail. That whole incident with Chief Pete and Bullock, those guys really disrespecting me you know, from a human being perspective. This is real life, so quit doing all this stupid that you're doing. I don't need that. I feel like I'm on my own, so I'm gonna take a step back and do my time. It was Mother's Day. Emotions are already super high. And then Miss Williams shows up. We can just praise the last. I don't give a about this job and her either. What is she on? Shut up! We can't scream for help. You are the help. Happy Mother's Day, my lady.
and now I don't know how I'm going to be able to move forward and do my job. So you want to stay or you want to go? <laughs> Since I've been in here, people know not to mess with me. Um, it's not a matter of because I'm big or I'm intimidating, but that is a factor, don't get me wrong. However, I can fit in pretty good. <laughs> I've been hanging out with this guy named Justin. How you, how you get off the train? You walk around, let's outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if I seen him. He went around and asked for somebody food. Or it was something he did, and I was like, hey, bro, like, like that, like that, that stuff like that bothers me because I mean, he seemed like a pretty cool guy. <laughs> I had DUI on my 21st birthday. I'm young. I don't know what to do. Scared to death. It's straight heartbreaking. I have a family. This place ain't for me. Luckily, my friend Tony, he's not a drug addict. You know, we got families to feed. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Justin's a family man. I'm a family man. I can relate to him 100%. Um, he loved his kids. You know, we just clicked. We really did. Just, 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 we just clicked. Can I ask a question? Yes. How did you move Justin into your cell? How do you do that? <laughs> Justin, go get your come on. Come on, come here. Come on, way cool, bro. I wanted Justin in my cell for his protection. I mean, let's just be honest, he's white and he's small. And he's up top, all the blacks are up top. Mostly all the whites are at the bottom. He's, he's extremely vulnerable. So I'm going to look out for him, I'm going to feed him, I'm going to, you know, look out for him, take him under my wing like a little big, like a big brother type deal. We just woke up and there was no Ashley. I was shocked. If Ashley tapped out, I feel like she would regret it. I feel like you all put a lot of faith in me and then I have failed you. So I'm stressed about struggling with whether or not I want to continue with this program because it, this continuing with this may cost me my, my mental health. And if, if I stay here any longer, I don't know if I'm going to be able to continue to do my job as a police officer. But at the same time, I cannot stand by and watch 118 women be officially oppressed by somebody who's taken an, an oath to be in a position of authority over them. So you want to stay or do you want to go? I don't want to let her win. So I'm not going home. I'm going to stay here. I feel like I am one of the only people that can really protect these girls at this point. To make sure that this never, ever, ever happens to any woman in custody at Etowah County ever again.
Wednesday morning. I woke up, and then right after that, you see the, the SOD team, side team, come in, raiding people's rooms. I 15 on my third dog. I just wanted to get back in my cell. I just didn't want to get in any trouble. I didn't want to get busted. I didn't care less what was going on out there. What is it? 6.30 in the morning. They pulled all of us out. I think it was a random shakedown. It was a scary situation because, unfortunately, I don't know what my roommates have in the cell. One by one, they called us all in the room. Take off your shirt, your pants, your boxers. They made us take off all of our clothes and do the whole like squat and cough, which surprised me because I didn't have to do that at booking. Take your boxers off, squat and go. I need your pants and boxers real quick. Yeah. It's embarrassing for sure. It makes you feel like less than a man. Squat and cough. <coughs> One by one, they called us all in the room. They made us take off all of our clothes. Take your boxes off, squat and go. I need your pants and boxes real quick. Yeah. Squat and go. <coughs> like, what could I have done? I couldn't resist the strip search, or then I'm just going to get, you know, placed in isolation. It sucks when, like, you feel like you have no power. <coughs> Okay, put your boxes back on, buddy. It did take me back to junior high when I got I got picked on a good bit. I worked pretty hard to like get over a lot of those issues, but um, now they're coming back. Do this to your roommates, and we'll be able to be done. demons in this place. There are demons in Etowah County. Last night in my dream, a demon had sex with me. Oh. Right, that I couldn't see, but I could feel. And I had to cry out to one of my aunts for help, and then it turned into like a kid looking thing. That was horrible. And when I was casting it and looking it, it was like they looked at me and laughed. Oh, Lord. Right, and I was just like, wow. In my dream, I mean, I didn't see anything, but this is feeling the penetration of something, you know, in your sleep. <laughs> I know that sounds so crazy, but it's the truth. In the nighttime, a lot of like, witching warlocks and people who come against Christians, satanic things happen through the night. And I don't know, maybe I'm, they're just trying to mess with me while I'm sleeping. Yeah, that's all it is. Probably people in here who have those spirits within them. There are so many demonic presences in this place. Violence, addiction, depression, hopelessness. Back to your cell. And so the only way I know how to fight is biblically. I'm a child of the living God. You can't mess with me. 
no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm not shook. I'm not wondering. I'm not negotiating with the enemy. Tonight when we pray, I'll just, you know, like put the devil in this place and not allow him in this room. There is absolutely major spiritual warfare going on. <laughs> And I'm gonna win. I've been trying to act as a mentor to Justin. Um, I definitely think he's a great guy. But however, with Danielle, my other cellmate, I am still struggling. He don't like to take baths. That's a major problem for Justin and I. He's charged with like criminal trespassing or something like that. Um, so most of the time when people are charged with that, they're probably homeless. In that type of world, people don't shower every day. People don't take care of themselves. Hey, bro, I'm gonna tell you straight up. I'm telling you right here, right now. If you don't wash your ass, I don't wash my ass. I'm getting that you no know, breast stinking like a it ain't coming from me, but it's white boy, bro. I'm telling you what, I'm telling you what movie. I ain't no white boy, I'm done talking. I'm done talking to you. 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 I'm I'm finally getting some sleep. It's the middle of the night. And I hear the door open, and in pops Miss Williams. Ashley. Yes, ma'am. And I was wondering if you would be interested in becoming a Can I do it? Good. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. I'm trustee. Excuse me? <laughs> what? Would you like to be trustee? I said, uh, sure. Just gonna give me an insight into uh, how to work. I think the reason she did that was because I am articulating excellent complaints against her. I believe her response to that is to just treat me like I'm honey. handpicked by my arch nemesis herself. Weird. Keep your friends close, your enemies closer, right? Sure, Miss Williams. I'd love to trust you for you tonight. Now we're just waiting on breakfast, and we serve breakfast, and then after that's done, we are gonna the tables. Am I the first participant to ever be a trustee? Ever. It's never happened before. The job, getting that job, I mean, you're being trusted. We get to be out, like, we get to be out past, you know, take showers with just a group of trustees instead of everybody. We get to just sit and watch TV a little bit longer than everybody else. Last call train! It's a lot of work, like, you got a lot to do, but what else do you have to do with your time? I was ready to serve trays, serve ice. 
sweep and mop and clean and wipe off tables. I was just happy to be physically moving. I need 10 more. And in terms of completing my mission, I can observe the officers a lot better who have become my targets. Before going into jail, I did my research, you know, watched some shows, watched some movies, but nothing can prepare you for physically, mentally, emotionally, just all of that This comes with being in jail. I was really excited to see Shanice when she first came in there because it was like, okay, I have an ally. I think I've eaten more apples in here than I've had in the last five years. <laughs> and I tried to be very encouraging. Where my stomach is, I don't really stuff this many out of the refrigerator for like two hours without a seat. But now she's just continuously stirring the pot. I still like to She is, only talks about herself and her food. Yesterday, I was like, is it gonna end? No. Yeah. She's irritating me. Shanice is not doing well. I just, I have a hard time with grown people whining. I can't take it. Just like the fact we don't get pillows. Like, I have baby little pillows. They took it. This isn't the place for that. Hey, guys, go stand by yourself. Keep trying to try it. I gotta go before I snap out. I'm on edge right now, and I, I feel it. <laughs> I never start something not to finish it. I'm sitting here in my cell talking to myself, trying to talk myself off the edge. This is crazy. But it's getting to be a lot. It just keeps getting more and more crowded in this place. Extremely crowded. So I decided to get this haircut today. I was hoping it would help me fit in. But I probably shouldn't have done that. I know that this guy cut my hair a little shorter than I wanted to, so I definitely have a cop haircut right now, but I'm not a cop. After that, I was in my cell taking a nap. I didn't know anything about like moving. He was like, I was like, where am I going? He said six. And I thought for a second I was about to like switch and go to a different like unit or something. He's like, oh, 406. I'm moving? To 406. Good luck, man. Why am I moving? I don't know. There's confusion at first because you don't know exactly why you're getting moved. What happened to you, bro? I have no clue. They told me that, that I swear to God. I don't know, but um, it's out of my control. 
when I, I get into my two cellmates, I'm cellmates with, uh, their names are Dalton and Bones. These are actually the same guys that were the first ones to warn me that I was gonna be a target for getting robbed. No, I was like, I was like, I knew that moving in with them was gonna add a whole new element. Well, first of all, I was gonna have to tell the whole story all over again in detail. Second of all, they're like known hustlers and stuff, and so I knew I was about to have to get involved in all that. So there's a panic that sets in because I know as soon as I get in there, they were gonna shut the doors and the questions are gonna start coming. You got a felony or a misdemeanor? Felony. What's your charge? Uh, cocaine possession. Possession of cocaine control stuff? Yeah. All uh, right. You know what I'm going to say? All right. So you ready to write some plenty of hands yet? Yeah. So you're going to play that trip? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking so. I, I still, you still got to be indicted. Yeah. Bones is one of those people, he'll talk and he'll talk and he'll talk. So once he asks me about the story, he's asking me all these questions. He's like, this is what you need to do. What do you mean you don't have a court date yet? And I'm talking Bones has like a pen and paper is asking me questions. He was getting suspicious because I don't talk the talk. I don't really walk the walk. This haircut damn sure didn't help. Who's your lawyer? I don't have one either. Yeah, you got to have one. Who's your court appointed lawyer? They haven't told me. That's what I'm saying. You haven't been to a, a friend of a foot? Here? No. How long have you been in here? Two weeks. You ain't been in no court dates yet? I thought you said you waved the right to London. I wasn't sure what you meant, so I said yes. Did they buy your cover story? I think I sold it a little bit better to them than I did the first time that I told it in the pod. Do I think they bought it? No. So you gave the signal. Mm -hmm. Is there an emergency? To me, there is. I, I definitely see everybody's breaking down. Everybody's on edge. I'm on edge. I have never in my life <laughs> seen this. So you know that the emergency signal is for emergencies. Mm -hmm. Is there an emergency? I don't, there, I think there could be. Do you want out? I don't want out now. No, I don't. I don't want out now. I'm committed. I'm so committed that my mom just ordered me some stuff from Alabama Packaging. So I'll have a comment and it won't be here for a couple weeks. So. Um, so what do you need? What do you need from me? So, um, I, I, the energy is very off. I just, I feel on edge because I know something's getting ready to happen. I feel it coming. I feel it coming. Is there an emergency? No, but, um, you know. Okay, so just to be clear, the emergency signal is for serious emergencies only. Okay. Okay, let's get you back. Okay. Uh, we gotta, we gotta ask right away. I've been a trustee for a couple days. And of all people to name me trustee is Miss Williams, my arch nemesis. I was not expecting that, but I feel like it helped with my cover story a little bit, which is good because if word gets out that I am a police officer, I will probably be in the hospital.
We went up to a particular cell of an inmate who has mental health problems, who has been neglected. Her toilet has not been functioning for what appears to be weeks. There was feces concave over the top of the toilet bowl. <laughs> also urine and ripped up books and papers stuffed down. I believe there was also a towel and some clothes as well. I somehow have assumed leadership position to tackle this room. Hey, you no, know I don't touch it. Get another trash bag, then we're going to reach in there with that trash bag. I'm directing them. All right, girls, we've got this. Miss Lee, go downstairs, get some trash bags. Amber, stand by and do this. Uh, look, this is well above my pay grade. Quit. Quit. This is well above my pay grade. I quit it all county. Hold that bag open, Amber. Oh, that was fun for me in a weird way. At this point, I feel like I've gotten closer to some of the trustees and the officers, and as far as my cover goes, I'm floating right along in the middle and not drawing attention to myself. What's up? Calls are subject to monitoring and recording. Hello. Hello. What are you doing? Just getting back from the bank. So pissed off right now. Why? Because like when I'm like, taking a nap, when the CEO comes in and tells me, tells me to grab my stuff, it tells me I'm moving two cells over. <laughs> Cellmates, Dalton and Bones, they are definitely participants in the in the drug um, issue that goes on in the jail. They smoke cologne, which is uh, tobacco sprayed with God knows what chemicals on it, and it makes me feel a little bit nervous. Because there's always a risk of a cop coming in. I don't want to be facing a felony for somebody else's drugs. <laughs> I, I'm weighing out my options. Smoking the clone could definitely be good for my mission. I think establishing that kind of relationship where you're smoking drugs together that's obviously not allowed kind of takes away some of those barriers. This ain't no real good right here. It's all right. You know. We had some bars, so it was nice. Good one, sugar. How long has it been since we had drugs in there? Like, it's like weird. It's long outside. Yeah, it's pretty good. So I said, when in Rome, and I, I, I smoked the joint with him. I'm sorry, Mom. <laughs> He 
people were telling stories in, in my old cell about, oh, that'll make you, you know, eat people's faces off and, you know, go crazy. You feel it? Yeah, I'll do a little bit. None of that happened. I didn't, I didn't get a taste for human flesh. I just kind of was just buzzing. I wanted to kind of get that establishment with them. That like, yeah, he's cool, or he's not a snitch, he's not gonna, and a rat on us. And now that I smoked it, I think I have the opportunity to kind of get in with them and kind of that whole drug using crowd. You don't want to be a square. You got to smoke drugs if you got them. You know, smoke them if you got them. Yeah. The brain. Well, like I was right at the end, I sucked it and it wouldn't look out. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Justin now, um, he, he's starting to get more confidence being around me, I feel. I feel like he's coming out of his shell. Like, now he's a little more confident, a little, you know, got his chest out a little more. But Justin and Danielle is becoming a major problem. This dude stinks, bro. Dude, I mean, the sheet, bro, is like all that, bro. That ain't ever been washed. I can't be looking like a pig pen, bro. That's nasty. Man, I ain't used to that, bro. Uh, yeah, you want my shirt today? No, you, dude, for real. You smell like you ain't bathing. I know a solid week, and yesterday you said Monday was the day, so today is the day. Get the up and go get the job. So we're in the cell, all three of us. Um, prior to that, Justin was like, hey, man, you know, I'm tired of Danielle not wanting to shower, this and that. You keep saying, oh, I'm going to shower. I'm going to No, you haven't. See my you go around saying the wrong thing, I'm gonna beat your ass. Should take a shower. <laughs> your sheets are crusty brown, bro. Get your towel, bro. Either you take a shower or you're getting out. For real. I really am thinking about beating his ass, dude. Like, that's to the point I'm, I'm at. I've asked you too many times nicely. You know that for grown ass, man. Yeah, what's your grown ass? Yeah, wait, bitch. Yeah. If I jump up, whoop your ass, man, you'll be fine, man. Good bro. Good I mean, me personally, I'm all for a fight. A straight fight? Hey, do what you need to do. Justin caught him, hit him like maybe three times. And Danielle hit him in the back of the head really good. Justin pushed Danielle back in the toilet. His right hand fell in the toilet. And I think Justin hit the side of his face. She going? Get off me, bro. What's she doing? Yo, bro. All right, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. You wash your ass, bro. So at, at that point, Danielle, he won. You good? No, I'm pretty mad. I mean, what you want to hear it again? No. All right, stand up then. Shake your hand. Get over with. Dap him up. Get over with. Real. So everybody can sleep. Ain't no none of that sneaking. Let y'all sleep. Everything good. I have to ask, so Justin's your boy. Do you feel like you had his back? Yeah, 100%. Tony just stood there. He jumped up on his bunk. It's broke. There's no doubt in my mind it's, it's broke. Hey, get that stinking ass in the <laughs> I can't say much other than I wish he would have intervened and like broke it up or been like, nah, bro, you're gonna bathe. Oh, 
I don't like any of this. See, uh, <clears throat> just because it's like this. If my brother get in a fight in the jail, and if it's a one-on-one -on -one fight, I'm not jumping in. I'm not one of them guys that say, oh, I'm going to fight regardless. No, I'm not. You got to fight with who? They stinking in this dude, man. Big old black guy. No, he's the other one. I'm the big old black guy. I know. Who's the other guy? The other guy. I'm the girl, but snap the at you. Big ass black dude. That's it. For real. You think you I feel betrayed, you know? Like, I feel like he's not there to help me no more. Do you feel like Justin expected you to jump in? Um, I don't, I, I mean, maybe he did. Maybe, I mean, if he did, I mean, I, I'm not. Hey, bro, listen, I am looking out for Justin. However, like, I, I don't want to be there. I'm not your daddy. Bro, come on, man. You wasting time to ask something. Justin started the fight, as far as I'm concerned. And the winner win, the loser lose. After the fight, we were talking upstairs, and um, I was talking to a guy, uh, one of the guys that was in there, Tony. <laughs> Run around doing dumb all day, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's crazy, I, I think the first time I seen him was uh, late last week, maybe Friday or Saturday last week or whatnot. Tall, big guy. Nobody really messes around with him and stuff like that. Everybody, everybody fears Tony, but I'm not worried about Tony at all. Why? He's giving me the <laughs> like. He is making me think he's uh, is, is a participant. I don't know why. I don't know why. I'll figure it out though. Dennis definitely followed me around. He watched what I do, how I move. Tony's definitely a participant. And uh, anything that Tony can do, I think I can do better. <laughs> Every day, I have to hear from Shanice. We know that there's issues in the jail. I'm tired of hearing about it. I don't fit in. It's more than I feel like I can handle. This environment is extremely dangerous. I know for a fact there's a lot of weapons in here. Me all these questions, like, what do you mean you don't have a court date yet? People that I'm in with, they're, they're just like sketchy. Oh, no. Smoking would definitely be good for my mission. So I said, when in Rome, and I, I, I smoked the joint with him. I'm sorry, Mom. Am I the first participant to ever be a trustee? Ever. It's never happened before. I was ready to serve trays, serve ice, sweep, and mop, and I can observe the officers a lot better who have become my targets. Shanice needs to be coddled and pampered. She is only talks about herself. She's irritating me. From the jump, people know not to mess with me. I can fit in pretty good. Everybody fears Tony, but I'm not worried about Tony at all. Why? Like, he is making me think he's a participant.
So I know that Alex and Dennis are participants, but they don't officially know that I am participating. Tony's definitely a participant. I just know that for sure. Come on. But I know how to keep my mouth shut. The last couple of weeks kind of threw me for a loop. But now I have a new profile understanding of why am I in there. And yeah, I'm killing it. I own it now. Yeah. My name is still ringing inside the jail because I'm a known guy. I played quarterback my whole life, and I just feel like I'm a quarterback in here too as well. Yeah, I appreciate it. So people do look up to me. I think they consider me a pop boss. Dennis claims that he has reached pod boss status. Do you see that? No, nah, not at all, no. No, Dennis, Dennis, <laughs> Dennis is definitely not a pod boss. No. Why? Because you work out? I'm curious to know what he do for a living. I guarantee he probably sit behind somebody's desk somewhere, work from home or something, sell insurance or something. He's an interesting character. We talk a lot, but pod boss. <laughs> hey, what's up, bro? What's good? Too many people out in one officer. Right, right. They ain't got no locks on the door. It's 2019. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, I need a banger, man. <laughs> I need a banger, bro. Right, right. I'm here by myself. I ain't right. Tony, he was like, look, man, I'm trying to get me a, a banger. And uh What's a banger? A banger is uh something that you can stab somebody with. It's a shank. Basically, that's what they call it in there. They call it. They call it bangers. They call it fire. They call it smoke. They call it. They call it everything. I can take an ass. You know, I, 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 I can take a broke old bust. I, I know that. Ass. I'm cool with that. You know what I mean? If I got that, you gonna be you gonna be worse. I'm gonna show you some of the contraband that we get out of our jail. Wow, an actual knife. I came here with a purpose. One of my goals is to get me a shank. I don't plan on leaving until I reach what I set out to do. Me too. Nah, you good, man. Hey, I respect that one, man. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody gotta get it, bro. One got to get it. But if I'm one of the gang lads, I'm about to go now. What's up? <laughs> if it's a shank in there, I can get the shank. I am going to get a shank. Before Tony, <laughs> I'm trying. I, I am going to get one, so. It's game time. And Dennis is too green. Anything that Tony can do, I think I can do better. gig to be a trustee, but all of the trustees this weekend have been sick. They've had back problems or they've got new medication. So I nominated Jen to be trustee. She really, really wanted it, and I wanted to provide her that opportunity. Are we allowed to call Lisa? Yeah. Okay, so here's the Should I keep that behind me? I became a trustee like Ashley. Do you like it? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. Good. Do it. I'm absolutely loving it. As a trustee, I don't feel like I'm in prison, except for the poop-filled toilets. We need five. Five trays. I, I do look up to you for a lot of things. Aww. I love Jen. I love working with her. You're kind of like my big sister, because you're just as weird as I am. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's made us have a really, really tight bond and a tight friendship. Totally so weird. Yes. Jennifer and Ashley should definitely be careful. Thank you. Have a good day. Them being trustees, it could bring a lot more negative attention to them. I'm good. I don't want to be trustee. I don't want to be in the limelight. I don't want to piss people off. I was just being myself. <laughs> I'm at y'all. I noticed my damn feet was swollen. Jim was like, I've been noticing your feet have been swollen for two days. I already deal with a lot, and I knew mentally I would come in here because I knew I had the gluten intolerance to go against. But my roommate, Tiffany, she is going to be a, much, a bit much. 
Can you see what I'm doing here? I'm trying to ask him, John, to pack him up and John for my cigarettes. Real talk, and I'm a phone girl. She's always taking these drugs. She's a John, what the f is phone? <laughs> I've never been around that type of stuff before. So, you know, marijuana, yeah, but like hardcore drugs, no. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little tooting in there, you know what I'm saying? Cause I have, I have devilish friends that likes to give it to me. Where the hell you get that from? It's not from Angel. Everybody always follow me. I might not do the right things all the time, but I know what I'm talking about. She don't f with nobody. Angel is kingpin. She's selling drugs. She the one having all. You know, the police don't like her. I run the unit. I'm the one to do it. I ain't got nothing to say right now. I'm about to y'all behind closed doors. She's one of the people we call, like, the pod boss. And she's good friends with my roommate, which sucks. Angel, that she asked me to pee. Oh, Angel, I need to pee. I was like, don't ask me to pee. That's why I'm in here. I felt a good test. Really? Hold on, hold on, hold on. That might be a touch on you. I'm hearing her do that. I was thinking, oh my God, are we gonna get caught? My ass paranoid like I'm doing something. I already feel sick and I don't need her some cocaine or crack or whatever it is in my room. If she's doing this now, what's next? <laughs> Cutting a line pisses me off. It's the same people that do it every day. I mean, it's such a blatant sign of disrespect. It's like, dude, the line is literally around the stairwell. And like, what gives you the right to come up and cut in line? That's why you're in jail, because you didn't learn basic respect like that on the streets. Maybe I should say something, but is it better to just wait the 30 seconds and let the one person do it? But then, you know, you let one person do it, now it's 10 people. Pretty soon, the cutting line is longer than the actual line. It's super tough. And then there's Dennis. I've been four or five spots back up in line. I've seen Dennis come right in front of everybody, including me. He's definitely disrespecting me when he when he does that. 49, 49. Once an a-hole, always an a-hole. I definitely cut in line. Yes, I do. They already know, like, this is how it runs in here. Good, good, good. Go back. Me cutting the line, that's how I show, like, status. Hey, you ever been to prison now, I was, you know, my approach, his approach, totally different. He doesn't have a lot of friends in there. <laughs> this place is really, like, is getting to me super hard. I don't fit in. I tried getting this haircut. I tried smoking cologne. It's just, it's not, it's not working. <laughs> I said, damn. I just feel so far out of my element. And it seems like every day it's getting worse. It's like a cop. 
totally sincere. <laughs> I thought I'd be liked more by the pod. Like I thought I, I thought I'd be pretty in by now. It's just that, like I, I just feel like, what am I really doing? I just don't get respect in the pod. Then it's gotten more and more frustrating to the point where now I don't even know what to do. <laughs> Main things that I'm struggling with in here, I have a breakout from my gluten sensitivity. My roommate's doing cocaine, they're doing clone, my feet are swollen, and now they're hurting. So I got a laundry list of issues that I'm trying to work through. If it was just a couple, I could do it, but it's a lot. I went to that doctor that won't do anything. Shanice is not doing well. She complains continuously. And I cannot tolerate it. My feet are swollen and they gave me pasta again or whatever it is. It's ridiculous to me. So I just smile and nod, and oftentimes just get up and walk away. But I can't get away from her. Whenever I have food, I have discoloration. Every day, I have to hear from Shanice. I don't quite understand how you can knowingly go to jail with all of these health problems and allergies, thinking that they were just gonna cater to you. What more can we, we do for you? We know that there's issues in the jail. I'm tired of hearing about it. God, I mean, this is non-stop. They can't get the food right. I mean, this is good. There's nothing that we can do. You know what I mean? Oh, my dad, get out. Maybe I can still under the American Disability Act. Four prisons, jails, universities, schools, workplaces. It's coming. It's serious. If you don't do somebody for religion, that's the choice that somebody has. Jennifer is just being a butthole. Don't ever belittle what I have going on. I didn't make it to the best of So it, it should be comfortable. It's like they have kosher. That's what no take is a computer. But you don't take over for Shanice, she's in way over her head. She's not built to be here. Yeah. Jennifer, you. You don't know the I've been through. You don't know what this disease has done to me. So go kick rocks with Jesus sandals and say, probably you. I went ahead and bought the $17 radio and some headphones on commissary. I like music and I knew it would be a good distraction. It helps me to kind of get out of myself to walk around with the radio. I was gonna ask you guys, like, what's going on with Alex? You know, you would see him come out of cell and just walk around all day long, like, all day. He just walk around all day with headphones in. He got the same poker face all day, every day. Now, I could go in there and just be a, a frog on the log and just sit, but that, that's not what I'm here for. Alex, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, 
some guy stopped me that I'd never talked to before, and he asked if he can borrow the radio for the night. I trust you. I just want to listen to that number. Hey, he just kind of caught me off guard to the point where I kind of stumbled instead of just saying no right away. So I was like, I'll give it to you, but like, you gotta give it back to me the next, like, breakfast the next morning. I have a tendency, if I wanna say no, I'll kinda dance around it, but you can't give these people an inch or they'll, you know, bug you and bug you. But he caught me in a weak moment and uh, he, he probably got the best of me on that. Lending out my stuff has given me problems before. Two, three sodas, right? He's right. Like when everybody and their freaking brother took hits of my e-cigarette. Everybody's out for themselves. I mean, it sucks. I gave someone my radio and I hope they didn't make a mistake. You're taking a lot of risks, man. <laughs> like your car, man. It's like your car. It's like don't do that. I didn't want to do it, but like, if I, if he was like, press me about it. <laughs> I didn't want to argue with him about the radio, which I shouldn't have to argue about. It's mine. I freaking paid for it. You don't think he would actually keep that radio, though, right? Or, like, make That's a big deal about giving it back? It's a bill, man. It's a jail. I guess I would have to fight. I really don't want to. You have to get somebody to pump his ass. <laughs> if he doesn't give my radio back, uh, will you beat him up for me? I, I, I couldn't do it. I'm going to throw him on there. I don't have the ability to go full inmate and be hard and get in people's faces. So I just feel like it's gonna be hard getting the radio back. What if I get hit or what if somebody does beat me up? This is like a real fear that I'm having. This place is so far removed from everything I've known and it's pushed me way out of my comfort zone. I'm getting anxious and like nervous and it's more than I feel like I can handle. What's the emergency? How are you feeling? It's just like, I, I just really thought I could come in here and be socially malleable. Like I, I've been in a lot of other situations in my life, but coming to this jail, I, I feel like has like reopened a wound for me. And that wound is one of constantly worrying what other people think about me and how I'm perceived. It's regressing me to a point that I haven't really felt since I was like a fat kid in like fourth, fifth grade where I just like didn't have like friends or anything. Say more about that. It kind of gets me back to the point where I was and like, you know, I'm getting picked on when I was younger. <laughs> Having to like buy friends and stuff, you know, it was a very dark time in my life. I don't really talk about it. That's why I didn't bring it up before. Why not? Why didn't you talk about it much? Uh, I just don't like to talk about things that are hard to talk about. Uh, I just like to <laughs> pretend they're not there. I don't, I don't know who to be when I'm in here, just like I didn't know who to be back then. And I'm scared that I'm going to get beat up or say something stupid to the wrong person and get jumped. Like, I, I'm just, yeah. <clears throat> This is this place is really like it, it's hell and it's it's so much harder than I I thought it I thought it would be and it's it's more than I feel like I I, I can handle. 
So you're saying you want it? Yeah. This is not a safe environment for the inmates. This environment is extremely dangerous. I know that this place is infested with weapons, so I want to find a shank. I tell one person, and before I know it, people just coming up looking to help me get whatever. There has been no suspicion of me because I'm so aggressive. I tell them I just need to make a little money while I'm here, and I want a shank. So they're thinking he want a shank. Nah, he don't. He ain't the police. It, he can't be. O'Shea and I came in together. We intake together. He come in, act crazy, you know, talking real loud. So he can probably get me what I need. He said, well, I got some fire for you. He referred to it as fire. Fire. That's what they call shanks in jail. We walked in the bathroom, and he showed me this shank. He had it right here, wrapped in here. This is the hiding spot for everything. He brushed it up against me, I feel that. He said he can make me a good one. So we're trying to figure out a deal. to give O'Shea 10 soups for the shank. So I see Tony and O'Shea talking and stuff like that. Tony's definitely trying to get a shank. So now I got to step up, get one as soon as I can. How are you going to get it? Not sure yet, but it's always, you know, figure it out. I'm going to get it. O'Shea's working on the shank now. So, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. I don't trust any inmates in here. And I don't plan on giving him commissary until he presents the shank. I will show y'all. <laughs> This Jennifer is a bit much. I was trying to tell her the stuff that I've been through, and she made her snide remark, like, well, it is jail. And I was like, okay. So, yeah, that kind of that kind of ticks me off because I've been through a lot. I think she doesn't understand my condition. I don't know if she thinks that, you know, I'm trying to do it to get attention. Just like some people may think you're a fake Christian, you know, but that's not my place to say. Using prayer for every situation, that's something that I don't understand. At all. <laughs> I give it an increase. And so, Father, we thank you for the increase this morning. Yes. 
I think that always saying let's pray on it and talking in tongues, it's too much. It's too much. Jennifer is all about drama and attention. Like, just give me a break. In Jesus' name. She's wearing on me. In Jesus' name. Yeah. I'm really tired of it. Dennis, that would have been cool just to have somebody like kind of do what I was going through and I could I could be myself. But that didn't happen, so. Well, yeah. Alex leaving. Honestly, that 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 really don't surprise me. When I saw Alex walking with his bed and everything, I figured he cracked under pressure. I think he just felt like out of place. I wish I could have took him under my wing, kind of introduced him to a lot more people and make him feel more at home because I think he just didn't know too many people. It wasn't easy at all. Jail got the best of me. My roommate Tiffany came in and she said, Angel needs you to pee for her. And I was like, what? I was like, I, I what? Like, I just start stuttering. What can she get her sister? Drugs. Angel is scary. I don't want to piss her off. Can't be. You know I've been doing uh, I'm trying to think of what stays on my system. I'm like, that's what we. It ain't in there now. You've been in here a couple weeks. I was like, thank you, but no, thank you. I'm not gonna do this. Next thing I know, Angel's at the door, staring at me. I know I've been a leader, not a follower. If you cross me, we got a problem. What about Penny then? Oh, hell no. What the f is that? I ain't gotta be. I gotta drink something. I did pee for Angel. I never thought that I would be peeing for anyone in jail. I mean, 
I was told that between me and the pregnant girls, we were probably some of the cleanest people in there. So I wasn't thinking like I normally do because I just I don't feel well, like physically, and I don't want to have an altercation with Angel. After I did it, I had all kind of things going through my mind. What if she doesn't pass? Is she going to try to fight me? Am I going to have to try to fight her back? But I felt like I, I just do it, and whatever happens, happens. This is serious. I definitely could get in trouble. I would pin my leaving much more on internal struggles than any, anything specific. It may not seem like that much was going on, but there was stuff going on in my own head. My parents have eaten this morning. Hello? Hey. What's going on? Uh, I, I pulled myself. I started going crazy like the last three days. That's why I didn't call you. Yeah. It's it's miserable in there. Imagine the poor people who are stuck there forever. I know, I mean in hindsight I probably should have talked to somebody earlier, but I just I just let it build and kept everything in and it got to me. You have to do what's best for you. I love you. Alright, I love you too. Bye. Bye. She's probably disappointed, but she was probably thinking of me as more of a more of a quitter than anything. I kind of wanted a total break and disconnect from my family for a little bit, just to totally live on my own and do whatever I wanted to do. But maybe I'm not quite ready to fully, you know, be on my own and totally away from my parents. I still need them. I probably was making it worse in my head than it actually was. I might have been giving up a little bit. So I don't think it's totally fair to say that I did the right thing. So I did pee for Angel, and now she's getting released. <laughs> but I don't think one has anything to do with the other.
Shanice comes over to me and says, I gave Angel some of my urine. What, what do I say to that? I had to just walk away. I am not on board with that. Janice doesn't know I'm a cop. I don't like that behavior. Obviously, she doesn't care about these women, and she's not really seeing the big picture, so I'm extremely furious. Janice needs to go home. I want you gone. Sachi and Willie walking around arguing, fussing, cussing, acting a fool type deal. Willie man cool with everybody. So I'm just thinking they're joking. I'm thinking Willie man like just joking around. They're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm trying to jump in and say, listen, you need to stop. We're gonna get locked down, man. Let's go. I don't want to do with nothing y'all got going on. I hit the shank in my room. So if this please to shake down. That's a major problem. They're not stopping. The CO not doing anything about it. CO don't even Willie man like when to go pick up the garbage can. Getting ready to go, like, hit him. But he put it back. So I'm thinking is is over. You ain't talking about fight. Shut the up on top of it. Look over, and I see it in his hand. It's a shame. I don't want to get to a point where Jennifer pisses me off, and I reveal that she's part of 60 Days In. I want Shanice to go home as soon as possible. So I said, maybe you should give the signal again. I got a big, big bag of commissary. That's how I'm gonna get another shank and drugs. Sierra? Sierra comes running out, gets on her belly, and dives. So I grabbed her legs. Rail? Yeah. Rail was like, I know what you are. People are assuming that I'm a cop. That puts me in a very, very dangerous situation. I got a new cellmate, Zook. He comes back, he got two gloves on, pulling out drugs out of his ass. If they come check the room, they come find a shank. Wait, you have a shank? Yeah. Yeah, they kind of ticked me 
off because I've been through a lot. Jennifer is just being a butthole. She's wearing on me. Tony's been there for about two weeks now. He came in there like he's been there before. Tony's definitely trying to get a shank. <laughs> I'm trying, I, I am gonna get one, so. Anything that Tony can do, I think I can do better. <laughs> Why? Did you work out? This is <sighs> Shanice comes over to me and says, I gave Angel some of my urine for a drug test. I am not on board with that. Shanice doesn't know I'm a cop. I'm extremely furious. Shanice, I want you gone. We walked in the bathroom, and he showed me his shank. He said he can make me a good one. Camera, I got something for you. They're going back and forth, back and forth. Who the up, bitch I look over and I see it in his hand. Who's doing this? It's a shame. Who's doing this? Oh, something about to go down. If I was a CEO there, that stabbing could have been prevented 110%. Okay, let's say the officer did not know that Versace had a shank. You seen clearly that Willie had a broom. So now, loud verbal commands, put the broom down, put your hands behind your back. If he failed to comply, you spray him. But before you even act, you should have been on the radio calling back up for his safety and the, everyone else's safety. Masachi stabbed him a couple times, boom, 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 boom. And to me, it looked like he walked to the shower, flushed the shank in the toilet. Next thing you know, you see Versace upstairs. The CO let him back in the cell, blood on him and everything. I'm like, this man just damn near killed somebody. What the hell? And as far as I can see from my cell, when I went in, he was never handcuffed. Eventually, they end up coming to get him. You see him walking down the stairs with all this stuff. Versace did get removed from the pod. Uh, he's probably going to the hole. Seeing a guy get stabbed two feet from my face, it was a humbling experience. Very humbling, very humbling, because that could have been me. I don't know. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, bro, bro. This is not a show. This is not something like, you know, you want to sign up for to be, you know, to be on TV for or anything like that. This is real life. And somebody could have lost their life for real. The 
main things that I'm struggling with in here, of course, with the food, I've had diarrhea for four days. I've had a nonstop headache. My feet are swollen. And it pisses me off that Jennifer does not understand my condition. Shanice is an emotional wreck. She's not making eye contact with me, nor is she speaking to me. When I came in here originally, it was a team situation. That's gone. So I decided not to talk to Jennifer. Because when I get to the point of, I call it my level of pissivity that I'm at now, I black out and I can't control what I say. I think it was up what she did. And where I'm at right now is I don't want to get to a point where Jennifer pisses me off and I say something or do something that revealed that she's part of 60 Days In. And you're afraid that you could do that? I'm definitely afraid that I could do that because I'm on edge right now. I don't really care what Shanice does because I'm in here to do a job and I'm going to do it whether I'm liked or not. For Shanice to keep going on and on about, I'm done, I want to go home. Like, um, what about our cover? <laughs> We're the ones that everybody has targeted as being a part of this program. Don't come and shout things like that. I want Shanice to go home as soon as possible, please. So after the whole stabbing, the COs said, hey, go back in your cell. They lock us down. Side team comes in and they're searching cells, looking for the shame. You know, I'm nervous as crap because I have a shame. If the side team come in, search the cell, find the shame, I'm gonna be screwed. They send me to the hole and now have to, you know, possibly blow my cover. I need you all to pull me out. Shanice is putting me and Jennifer in a very risky, dangerous situation. I've had this massive target on my back, and now she's just continuously stirring the pot. So I'm ready to do whatever I can to fix that. I'm going to ask her what her game plan is for getting out and possibly encourage her in the direction of making that happen. 
Do you want, you can accidentally shut us in here too, because she's about to pop all the doors here in just a minute. Perfect. Okay, now we can like really talk about anything. Even though I don't fully trust really anybody, I trust Ashley more than I do Jennifer. How do I say this? I have trust issues, major trust issues. That's one of the reasons I'm ready to leave, because I don't trust them. I do not want to discuss with Shanice any of these feelings that I have towards her because I don't trust her and I don't know what she is going to do behind my back. I'm, I'm like, I gotta go. I gotta go to the doctor. Right? Especially after the situation with the medical. I, I can't. Why would you volunteer to come to jail when you have A, B, C, and D medically wrong with you? and put yourself in this environment to where you could put other people at risk through your selfish actions. That's not okay. I am not okay with that. I'm disappointed in that, and I don't approve of that. I gotta get home. I'm like, I'm not trying to be difficult, but I gotta go. Uh, She's yeah, not shopping. And you shouldn't be there. Let's go. I've made a commitment to this sheriff, and I am doing things that can put me in danger in order to make a better living environment for the women of Etowah County. I don't have time to sit here and complain. I want Shanice to go home as soon as possible. Shanice told me to my face that she was going to blow all of our covers if she did not get to leave. So I said, maybe you should give the signal again. How you doing? Ready to go home. <laughs> That's how I'm doing. Yeah. You know, I've been thinking about this a lot. This has been the worst experience in my life and the best experience in my life all in one. So I'm ready for the worst part to be over. <laughs> Tell me more. Because I, I have some, um, how do I say this? I have some issues with, with another participant and um, this is doing this with me. Who are you talking about? Jen. When I came into this, I came into it like we're family, and if I hear something, I'm gonna let you know to try to protect everybody. Where I'm at right now is I'm protecting me, myself, and I. So what did Jennifer do exactly? Um, we were talking about, she was like, you know, how are you doing? And I was like, you know. I can't get the food right. I need this. Yeah. I have nothing that we can do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? And so it was just kind of like, a snide remark like, well, it is jail. And I was like, don't say it's jail because I've been through a lot from, I can't have kids, I've lost my hair, I lost 90 pounds, it's not a joke. And that's why I was like, let me, before my attitude gets too bad and I jack up everything for everybody, I would rather just bow out gracefully. You went out. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Mm-mm, I'm done. Get your head show us eventually. Yeah, but I already got rid of it. I didn't, yeah. The, you already got rid of it? The shank? Yeah. Yeah, I got rid of it, I flushed it. 
You did? Yeah, I flushed it because the sauteing kept coming and I didn't want to get caught with it. And then they say, hey, you got a shank and then get possibly moved somewhere else or whatever, whatever. So yeah, I flushed it. So let's start at the beginning. How'd you get the shank? Uh, O'Shea. What was um, it made out of? Metal. It was, a, it was, it was serious. It was really serious. Yeah, um, I, I know for a fact I can get another one. Um, I, I, I mean, if it's in there, I can get it. You can talk to the cell camera when, when nobody's in there. Yeah. We can hear you. Okay. You can keep us updated. Yeah. You know, obviously, it's we've never done this before, so it's new territory for us. Yeah, I told you it's gonna be something different, man. I told you. I told you I'm, I'm gonna give you something, man. I'll, I'll tell you that from the jump. <laughs> Clean Jack 10-9, get my call. That's how you feel? Okay. I feel like that's real. That's okay. Shanae Simmons, pack it up! What? Pack it up. Yeah, dude! Get it, I won! Shanae Simmons! Shanae Simmons, pack it up. Good, bye. Jesus, I'm shaking, I'm so excited. I feel great that Shanice is leaving early. The worry is gone, wondering what she's saying, what she is doing, whether or not I have to hear her or about her complaining about the food. I love you, chick. All right, I love you. So stay together, Jill. Don't yeah, care. Yeah, listen. Y'all come. Look me up on Facebook. Y'all okay. bring me, and I'll bring you. I did not say goodbye to Shanice. I don't care. I'm glad she's gone. What really kind of blew my mind is she left with all of her food while we have girls who don't get any store. They're po they're cheeking their pills just so they can buy some M&Ms. <laughs> and you are blessed with all of this stuff and you're gonna take it home. Bye. Well done, Shanice. Well done. You've made everybody think you're an Shanice is gone now. It's time to move on and remain focused on my mission. Working as a trustee, I'm privileged to see what's going on. And there's one girl in lockdown who I desperately want to help. Sierra is a sweet, genuinely nice, kind human being whenever she's sober. Right now, she's flooding her cell, and feces and urine are absolutely everywhere. They coated every surface. She's jumping up and down on the bed. She's completely nude. Sierra has problems that are made even worse by being locked down in seclusion for days and days and days. Sierra, when she acts out, instead of them getting her the appropriate care, they put her in her cell by herself. She does not eat, she does not drink, she does not bathe. Nothing healthy comes out of being locked down 23 hours a day. They'll punish you and put you on lockdown for 45 days because you called them a bitch. That ain't right. I mean, that's just like a dog if you keep it in a behind a fence. I mean, when it finally gets out and gets in the yard to run free, it ain't gonna know what to do. They will break you in here in more ways than one. The steel will break you. I 
want to help Sierra because she is a vulnerable human being in a terrible environment. So I got a shank from Moshe. You know, we just clicked. We really did. Just, 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 we just clicked. You, I, 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 I can tell the way he talked, you feel me? I like the way he yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. They all kill who you bang with, what color you is, you got money. I, Moshe, he, he's really plugged in with all the drugs. I got a brand with them. If yeah, I sell a whole brand on the streets, I'm only making $20, $30. So I go right now and my big brother, and my big brother got a gram. Let me see what you want. Put 80 on my books. Wow, just like that. O'Shea is uh, a junkie. He do smoke chrome every day, all day. Uh, he sells it. I mean, he's in there. Every jail, every prison you go, there's going to be dope. There's no stopping it. In these streets, you just got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do to survive. Every chance I get, I seize. That's what my name means in, in Persian. Demarja means king and conqueror. I'm not praying. I'm not the mouse in the field. I'm not the tuna swimming around. And I, I'll be damned if I be the band be finna get ate. I'm an apex predator, so there's nothing that's gonna be out here trying to eat me. We all have a natural hustler mentality in us. If you don't, you starve off and die. I was like, what the? So people come to jail with a dollar, get drugs, make money off drugs in jail, and leave with thousands of dollars? To me, that is crazy. I didn't even know the number, but like, band, two bands, three bands. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work from the inside and make me money. I done broke the trust circle. I'm, and honestly, I'm like, y'all don't even know me. Y'all just plugging me in with everything and everyone. I cannot be that convincing. There's no way. the guard if we could help Sierra to take a shower. Jesus is gonna deliver you and you're gonna tell your testimony. She's a lost girl. I feel like she's been through a lot of things. Sierra, you know the love you, right? Luckily, the guard got on board with it and said yes. We escorted Sierra downstairs, got her in the shower. The moment that she got in the shower, she was so happy. She was laughing and joking. <laughs> Ashley and I, literally, we started seeing the transformation of this girl, which was a great thing because she needs help. The kindness that we showed her helped that girl. We had finally gotten this girl clean, had shown her love. We get her calmed down, but that did not last long. We can wear this mat. Oh, can we take it to her? 30 minutes later, we go to bring her a mat to sleep on. Sierra's completely.
completely gone. She's back to screaming, jumping up and down, yelling, flooding her cell again. It was just that quick, that quick. So the door opens and Sierra comes running out, gets on her belly and dives underneath the bars. So I dove on her and I grabbed her legs and kept her from going over the edge. That should have been Miss Wildman doing that. Miss Wildman did not handle that situation with Sierra appropriately at all. At that point, I became the officer. I had to do what needed to be done. I'm not gonna let somebody get hurt when I'm there and I can make a difference. I've invested a lot of emotions. Probably now. Five or six. Yeah. Did you hear her tell me she's gonna knock my glasses off? She said you better back off, Ashley. I'm gonna knock the glasses off, Ashley. You better back off, Ashley. Which don't she care? Well. I went downstairs and Rail was like, I saw what you did. I know what you are. I don't know if Rail was referencing to me being an assumed police officer or something different, but a normal inmate would never put their hands on another inmate. So that was pretty much a red flag that I'm not a normal inmate. I drew attention to myself. This is not good. O'Shea want to go in business with me. So now I need to get my commissary so I can, you know, make different deals. I got a big, big bag of commissary. So now that's putting off to everybody. They think I got money now. So now everybody like, oh, look, bro, you got money. Uh, you can give me $100 or $50. I can get some drugs. That's how I plan on moving forward. Let's go. Have a nice day. You got it. In this jail, commissary is go. Because a lot of people don't have money to get anything. So if you order in a big, huge bag, you can get whatever you want in that jail. I mean, the commissary, uh, the soups and this and that, that's how I'm gonna get another shank and drugs. I made a deal with O'Shea for another shank. I gave O'Shea a couple soups, pastries, honey buns, I think a couple of Kool-Aid packs, roughly 11 to $12 worth of items. So now, it's game time. It's just a matter of time till I reach my goals, reach what I set out to do. Look at, look at the <laughs> It's about the best thing on the tray right there, that pie.
So. Ne? So, dann go ich. I got a new cellmate, Zook. Zook is uh, been in jail plenty of times. I guess in, involved in the drug game outside of the jail. We leave out to go to breakfast. And we come back, he got two gloves on. He's on the toilet. Get that flush. I don't even play that. Like, don't in my room. Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't do that. Apparently, he was He was pulling out drugs out his ass. Oh, so he really just stuff in their ass. the um the shank um i actually have the shank you have it right now yeah i have a shank it's not it's not as good as the one i had originally but yeah i have one now you want to show us yeah so i uh have it wrapped in here i just roll it up and i paid a little less for this one because he didn't put the put the actual sharp point on it so this is the one <clears throat> that he, he gave me um so he put a point, he started, he told me to, I could put a point here. He told me a guy downstairs on the lower tier who could put a point uh, in the rec yard here and here. This is a, extremely dangerous, not only dangerous for the inmates, for the staff. I've been hiding this on the conduit, uh, on the cameras in the cell. Um, that's been my hiding place, not only for this one, but for the first one I had as well. I honestly couldn't believe how easy it was for me to get just a matter of going up to someone, hey, I got money. Oh, what you need? A chain. Okay, come on. It's, it's that simple. What do you want to do with it? <clears throat> um, I want to give it to you guys um, and ultimately get to the sheriff or the chief. Well, why don't I take it from you? Yes. I'll hold on to it, and then when it's time, when you're out, when it's time for your debrief, I'll give it back to you, and you can present it to Chief Peak and to Sheriff Gordon. Okay. drugs inside. He had uh, ice, so that's meth. Took it out of his ass. They call it um, clenching. There's more drugs in here sometimes than he is on the streets. Spots in here when coke, uh, meth, clone, clone be here all the time. There's gonna be one way or another we're gonna get drugs in here, no matter what. Put it on the ball sack, put it in between your butt crack, put it in your jail pocket. Some is so savage that I mean they going in people's ass to get them. Like, like no gloves, no nothing. They're gonna beat you up and hold you down, and they're gonna take it. I'm dead right now. I'm coming out in a minute. I'll holler at you. I'm gonna holler at you when I come out. Hey! He'll yeah, holler at you when you come out. I say yeah, I'll holler at you when you come out. Alright. Zook goes and tells somebody that he has ice on, has drugs on. The wrong thing to do. 
Next thing you know, word gets out. So now, 20 people come knocking on my door. Hey, hey, so, hey, I'm gonna let bro chill for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hold on for a second. Let him chill for a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, let me holler at him, let me holler at him. And everybody trying to get a cut of it. So, now nah, I'm just gonna give you a rundown. Nobody don't really with us in here. Because I'm a killer. But, um, what I'm trying to tell you is, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you got something, just be your own thing. You know, make some money. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta, you gotta tell them everybody. You know what I'm saying? You see what I'm doing. Like, you know what I'm saying? You still got it on you? Yeah. 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 Down my you know what I'm saying? I didn't necessarily tell him he had to go. I just told him I just don't want going down in here. I guess he got the picture because he left my room and Zook probably was just like nervous or just scared, you know what I'm saying? That he done already told me about the eyes. He thought I was gonna probably beat him up and take it from him. You're here looking for contraband, you're here looking for drugs, you're here, and somebody brings it to your room and you turn it away. On the surface, that looks like you have an amazing opportunity in executing your mission. Yeah, but I had to do something about it because if they come check the room, they come find my shank. Wait, back up. You have a shank? Yeah. On the surface, that looks like you have an amazing opportunity in executing your mission. Yeah, but I had to do something about it because if they come check the room, they come find my shank. Wait, back up. You have a shank? Yeah. You want to see what it looked like? I do. Yeah. Just real small, but real sharp, though. Somebody actually, I guess, put it in the middle of a toothbrush. It's a nail, right? It's a nail, it's a, it's a, it's a nail, probably about three inches, four inches long, um, and put it through the cap so it can stay. Tell me what happened, how'd you do it? So uh, one of my guys that I know who had it, he ended up leaving, he ended up um, getting freed. He left the banger inside his room with his cellmate, and I went in there and told the cellmate, I was like, hey, such and such, left, it, left the banger for me. And he, I told him, I was like, I'll buy it from you. So I gave him, what, a couple soups, honey bun, uh, some chips, and like a couple oatmeal pies, and he was good. Like, he was one of the guys that was starving, so I could have literally got the banger for nothing. But I just wanted to take care of him so he can keep it on the hush hush. As far as, um, you know, me having a name, a presence inside of the jail, you know, people come up to me, talk to me, you know, I feel like I can probably go and try to, um, you know, move around a little bit a little bit easier, a little bit smoother, and make a, a real play as far as like with the drugs. I found my flow, I'm making moves, uh, quicker than I thought I would, and I'm the man in jail, to be honest with you. Before the whole Sierra incident, people thought I was part of the program and they joked about it. But when they saw me react in that split second, <laughs> that was the moment where, all right, she's definitely a cop. And that puts me in a very, very dangerous situation. I like the narrative. I mean, at least I keep it real. I'm not going to talk behind the back. The way you talk, the way you approach me, the way you speak. They are police to go to jail for 60 days. I have watched the show. I know. Okay. Uh, no, the way you carry this stuff. Sure, you know what? Yeah. Okay, okay. 
being identified as a police officer is a very, very scary situation in a jail environment because every person in that jail has had a negative interaction with a police officer. Officer McNair. <laughs> the entire unit knows she's the police. So I'm worried about her safety within the facility. This is real life. These are real drug dealers. They are fighters. They're murderers. This is not a joke. There was already so much suspicion. But now they know I'm a cop. I'm just trying not to get killed. I would like very much not to be the next person stabbed in Etowah County. I want to understand where the drugs are coming from. This is the first time I'm just buying drugs. If I get caught, I can land in jail for real. Sierra is a person with serious disturbances. The other inmates feed her drugs as entertainment. That is something that's very dangerous because she cannot control the situation. I do not want to leave here until I figure out a way to help Sierra. Today is time to collect. He's telling me like this little sad story and I ain't buying it. You know, I'm not with you, I'm not playing with you. I really will beat your ass. Essentially, our cover's blown at this point. Oh my God, she am I in trouble? I don't know, are you? You're giving me a panic attack. You feel like they know that you're a cop? <laughs> We're in an unsafe place. All right. <laughs> for four days. I've had a nonstop headache. My feet are swollen. She went out. It's not worth it. Mm -mm. I'm done. Seeing a guy get stabbed two feet from my face, that could have been me. I got stabbed. I ain't lying. That's when I got my shank to uh, show the sheriff. It's like very easy to get. She's a lost girl. I feel like she's been through a lot of things. I'm in here to do a job, and I'm going to do it whether I'm liked or not. Tony Real! I got a big, big bag of commissary. So now that's putting off to everybody. They think I got money now. So I can make different deals. I mean, the commissary, that's how I'm going to get another shank and drugs. Ms. Wildman did not handle that situation with Sierra appropriately. At that point, I became the officer. I had to do what needed to be done. Rail was like, I saw what you did. I know what you are. I love McNair too. Officer McNair. They know I'm a cop. And I would like very much not to be the next person stabbed at Etowah County. Today's store is coming. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Everybody is excited. Okay. Tell, tell DJ you got to get his sheet too. For me, store means money because I sell my store to other inmates. Totally real. With that, I can buy drugs, get shanks, you know, get whatever I want. Store runs everything. If you got stores, you run everything. Because people get hungry all the time. 
if I get a suit from you, you pay me back two. If you take two, they want four. If you get four, they want six. And they're gonna get that from you. I have everything. I have soups. I think I have 37 soups, eight honey buns, three boxes of nutty bars, about 10 uh, sodas. How many people would you say um, you sell to? Oh, wow. Hey. I sell to a lot. Roughly 25 to 30 people. Easy, easy. Oh, Kool-Aid. Yeah, yeah, hold on. What's that? Sugar. Hey, can you look at the paper and see who I owe? I use Justin, my cellmate, as my bookie. Justin's job is to keep up with everyone who borrows something, everyone who pays it back. No shades on two suits. 14 is three. Tony, he's a really cool guy. He's a businessman, and he's an entrepreneur. But to me, it's not about the money. I need to build a better reputation. Otherwise, it's going to be harder for me to get drugs. I already had a guy a couple days ago run off with a couple soups I gave. I need to collect what's owed to me, because I can't I can't have a reputation like that in jail. You, you don't want that. I'm going to go down there and do It's gotten to the point now where I'll go out for a few minutes and I'll make phone calls or I'll check my messages on the kiosk, look at the store, and then I'm right back in here. So I went from like wanting to get out as much as possible to now I'm just like kind of just stay in here and just think and just and what well, can I give you a break from yourself? Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean I'll go with you guys because I get to like breathe and not not this place. Yeah, why don't you get yourself? There you go now? Yeah. Sure. Okay. What's going on? I have been on the edge of my seat and stressed out since I got in there because I was worried that my cover wouldn't stick. Now I know my cover did not stick. Why do you feel that your cover's blown? Because every day all I hear is you're 60 days in, your story doesn't fit, you're not one of us, that I'm a cop and I'm undercover in the jail looking for drugs. Stuff starting to get aggressive towards me. I keep trying to do what I can to keep up with my cover, but at the end of the day, these women are not stupid. In real life, legitimately, they know I'm a cop. Because the suspicion is just... Oh, the suspicion is... There's not even a suspicion anymore. We're at the point where it's straight-up accusations constantly, all day long. And that puts me in a very, very dangerous situation. So you want to leave early? I don't want to leave right now because I don't feel like I've given Etowah County everything I have to give. But as far as me being inside of the jail and sitting there, I'm worried. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned. Okay. Here's what I can tell you. We have to have a conversation with Chief Peak about this. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know what the next step is. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of that's going to be kind of up to him. But we'll see what he says. OK, we should get you back.
minute left. I'm counting down like literally minutes and days. If the program was to end today and I had to tell the sheriff, you know, what I found, I wouldn't be proud because I know there's a lot more that I can do. So you're here looking for contraband, you're looking for drugs. Before you walk out of here, what's your plan? Yeah, so, I mean, now uh, that I got, got some fire or shank on me, I think I can uh, get involved in some dope. There's a ton of drugs, a ton of drugs that destroy these inmates. What drugs have you seen? <sighs> uh, some of everything. Uh, any drug you can think of, i put it like that. Anything that's out in the street is in the jail. Have you been offered drugs? No, no, no. I don't know why, but people don't offer me drugs. So it's, it's hard for me to actually get to the people who have the drugs, you know what I'm saying? Because they don't offer. So for me, it's it just I have to let it happen. You know, I, I don't have a, a set goal of how I want to do it. I just want to keep an open mind and let it come to me. You just got to be really, really uh, careful about, you know, how you approach it. But I'm going to get it. What are your next steps? Not sure yet, but it's always, you know, figure it out. Hey, Chief. So Ashley contacted us, and the bottom line is that she feels her cover's been compromised and that everyone in the pod knows that she's a police officer. She feels that she's ineffective. There's nothing more she can do because none of the inmates are going to tell her anything. None of the inmates are going to show her anything. I mean, I don't want to get hurt if she actually thinks they know that. I guess our question for you is, what do you want to do about this? If she's thinking she's in that danger and something was to happen, and us knowing that she feels unsafe. She's been very clear she's not tapping out, but when somebody but, says 100% of the pod knows that I'm a part of 60 Days In, it feels like we have to address that. I think she'll end up doing more damage than she would do. All right. I think to protect all of us, I think she's got to go. Door runs on Tuesday. Today is time to collect. Who owes you? My bookie, Justin. Uh, you have to talk to him about that. Um... <laughs> I literally walk around and collect. At this point, most people approach me. Hey, big bro. Hey, OGA. Here's this. Here's this. I owe you this. When an inmate owes another inmate for store, yeah, they get beat up pretty bad. This guy named Anthony, I gave him some grits because the man said he was hungry, so I fed him. He said he was going to give me three soups in return for the three packs of grits I gave him. But come time for him to pay me back, Nothing. Give me this sad story. My girlfriend, she's ignorant. She's she's playing with my money and this and that. And I tell him, look, bro, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I just want my money. My mind's made up. A guy's giving me the runaround as far as paying me. And it's jail, so I can't be letting them, you know, take my kindness for weakness. I don't necessarily want to put my hands on the guy, but I will if I had to. That's a fight waiting to happen. Oh my god. She in my trouble. I don't know, are you? You're giving me a panic attack. What's happening? You tell me. Do you feel like they know that you're a cop? I feel like it's been, it has been discussed and I've been called the police multiple times. And when but... you have concerns like that, I have concerns. So the way I look at that, we're in an unsafe place. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull you out today. Because I can't sleep at night knowing that you're in an unsafe environment. 
that that bothers me. Now I feel like a failure. You're not a failure. It's not about failing. Don't. Uh, just I have I have eight days left. Just breathe. It ain't about being a failure. It's about doing the smart, safe thing. From what I hear, you've got good intel, and I look forward to sitting down with you and hearing what you found out and the things that you see. Don't, don't cry. Just, just relax, okay? Just breathe. Baby. You're okay. You've done good. You're not a failure. <laughs> Have you got me some good information that's going to help me? Yes, I just okay. don't. I'm so close to the end. <laughs> You've made it to the end. Your mission is complete. I just don't want anybody to think that I'm a failure because I care so much about the success of this program. Do you feel like you're a failure? Do you feel like you're a failure? Because I can assure you the rest of the world doesn't. Okay. Because they don't put your uniform on every day. They don't go out there and do the job that you do every day. The only person that matters is you. Because if you don't feel that way about you, nobody else is going to feel that way. And here's the thing, too. This right here is to make you a stronger police officer. I believe that 100%. So let me ask you this. What do you think is a successful shift when you're on patrol? Everybody goes home. Safe. That is the number one goal when you put on your uniform. What's, what's happening today? You're sending me home safe. Safe. OK. That's success, OK? OK. in the vestibule serving trays. And then all of a sudden I heard somebody say that Ashley was getting packed up. Shocked. Sure enough, they were packing her up. I cannot see Ashley tabbing out, but I'm glad that she's not here anymore. Things have escalated more recently, and Ashley has been a target. She had every right to be nervous. Why would they transfer her like this? Should have called me. I don't know. I have no idea. She wants to go see Yep. It feels like there's a giant spotlight on me because of the strength of Ashley and, and my relationship. But I don't care what they say. I'm not tapping out. I'll find out what the sheriff needs me to find out, but overall, it's way more important to be able to help the women here. The devil has a stronghold on this unit. But I'm absolutely confident and positive that I can help bring deliverance. I'm spiritually preparing for that every single day, and it will happen. first person to be sad to leave jail. <sighs> I just, I had a very clear vision of how I thought that this was going to go. And, you know, life had other plans.
does that taste? I'm gonna cry. I've looked at myself in a, in a mirror and oh my god I've gotten so fat here I don't want the cookie anymore the moments leading up to that ultimate decision were difficult I left feeling very disappointed but I knew ultimately it was not safe Yeah, it's like, I just, I want to do laundry. I want to watch TV. I want to wash my hands. I really want to brush my teeth really, really bad. My experience in Etowah County Jail bothered me. I went through a lot emotionally. Seeing these officers behave so poorly, I was so angry. It was going to the point where I was going to have a mental breakdown and I was gonna suffer some, probably some damage to my mental health. I don't believe that inmates should be treated that way. And it made a difference in me. It made a difference in how I'm going to police and how I'm going to continue my career. I woke up this morning and I was concerned about what I was gonna buy from store and now I'm lounging by the pool watching the sunset and it feels like everything has been a dream and none of it was real and it's gonna take it's gonna take a while for me to process all this um, it's gonna take a while Contraband on me already with the shank. And I was just pondering in my mind, like, how do I want to get some drugs? And it just hit me. It was like, all right. Red is the guy that knows about everything that goes on in the jail. Red knows everything because Red is the runner. He maybe has the drugs or just knows what the drugs are. And we play cards together all the time. So my plan was to hopefully he knows something about how they bring it in. So I was like, all right. Oh. I was like, hey, you know what, Red? Because we won in the cars game or whatnot, I'm going to get you some ice. This way, he can go and actually make it happen for me. Red goes and find out who has it. And then he comes back to me and tells me who to go talk to. He was like, look, go talk to Megatron. I got the green light to uh, get involved in some dope, and that's what's going down. I'm in here trying to find the drugs and contraband for the sheriff, but first I got to deal with Anthony. Anthony owed me three soups. He didn't have anything to give me at the time when the debt was due. You know, I'm here to get drugs, shanks, all types of contraband that I gave the sheriff my word that I was going to do. And now if I look weak, ain't nobody going to want to sell me no drugs or do anything like that. Now, they're not going to want to do any business with me. I have to protect my reputation at this point and take care of business.
give me all your clothes. I want all your clothes, because I want everything. I want your socks, I want your shoes, I want your pants. Now, at that point, it was like no mercy. Like, you lucky I left you with your drawers, you know what I mean? I should have took them, to be honest, at this point, I'm thinking I should have took them. I went upstairs and gave them all out to my friends and my cellmates. I mean, I don't want them. It's like Robin Hood thing, rob the, you know, and give them. <laughs> and you don't feel like you're losing yourself at all? Right? No, I, I, don't, I don't feel like I'm losing myself. I don't feel like uh, mentally, I'm, you know, I'm losing it. I came here under the impression I'm an inmate. The COs think I'm an inmate. The inmates think I'm an inmate. So I'm going to do what an inmate does. Now that I understand where the drugs are coming from, I just want to know how to, you know, put myself in a position where I can get it. I got my eyes on Megatron. I was sitting down like, in the middle of the pot, and then Red ended up sending Megatron over to me. And that's when Megatron's like, yo, you want some ice? <laughs> I got the name Megatron for a reason. I'm going to cut up, I'm going to turn up, I'm going to act crazy, I'm going to do what I want. And if you don't like it, then I don't care. My reputation precedes itself. People come to me every day, make sure you got this, make sure you got that, you got this, you got that, you got this. Everything come through, go through my hands, you know what I'm saying? Hang gang. <laughs> Megatron just a runner, kind of. But he was like, oh, I, I got you, I got you, I got you. And then um, he went to the guy in, like, 11 cell. Just seeing that um, just showed me that it could be anybody in a pot. You just never know. And I would have walked by that guy 10 times out of 10 and said, nah, he ain't, he ain't doing nothing. Seriously. But they hit me with a big number of items, 10 honey buns and um, 10 soups to get that. And I told him, all right, cool, let them know, like, my money good on my end. And now it's solid. That's what's going down. when you think like you're retreating to your cell, people will start just screaming and banging, and I mean, it's almost never ending. Really something that you would see on a horror movie. Sierra is the girl who Ashley and I helped take a shower. She's such a beautiful girl, but she is a person with serious disturbances. She screams and bangs and um, floods toilets to get out of her cell. 
and the COs do not care. And the other inmates feed her drugs as entertainment. And when they do, different personalities come out of her. She'll talk in this really sweet voice, and then all of a sudden, the most demonic, possessed voice comes out of her. Where are you? Behind you. Oh, oh. oh that chick is forget. Oh, that chick is forget. what the response was, and it was not what I expected. When I look into her eyes, you see someone who is just hurting and just wants to be normal. And then the presence just takes over, and it's not even her anymore. You can see that this is not her. Plus, some of the people are high, and so they just get really um, aggressive and combative. That is something that's very dangerous because she cannot control the situation. She could get physically hurt. I do not want to leave here until I figure out a way to help Sierra because her life could be at risk. So you have to do You can swing now or I'll swing. Initially, I thought that it was drugs. Central be your balance. Uh, code red on top of that code yellow. Now I absolutely think it's a spiritual war. I think that she has trauma. I think that there are hurts and pains and scars, which open up portals that have allowed demons to, to grab hold on her. I could touch this girl, like, and change her if I could get out of here and talk and sit with her. My goal is to have Sierra spiritually set free before I leave this place. Anthony owed me three suits, so I shook him down for everything. I took his socks, pants, shirts, blanket. Anthony went to the female CEO and said, hey, Tony said he's going to stab me and beat my ass. PC means protective custody. If you're in fear of your life, then you can go to PC. Anthony was extremely terrified. You know, I think he got the message, that's why he went to PC. 
Yeah, he's still a little bitch ass. He don't give a about it. He ain't got no pants on. For real. He owed money and he didn't have what he needed to pay his debt. So that's what happened to him. He walked out, you know, in his drawers. And now I got a little reputation that I'll stab you. Now people would definitely take me serious and I can get all the drugs that I want and as much as I want. <laughs> to the back to talk about the deal. What I do, give to you. This is the first time I'm just buying drugs. So I was a little nervous. Megatron just basically sealed the deal for me. 20 items for some meth. Everything was definitely riding on this transaction. It's either gonna go down or it's not. The Megatron came up to myself for the commissary, and the CEO was right there, so I was just in the back of my mind, like, oh. Shit. Hey, Megatron, I'm off the bed. I'm off the bed. I'm like, all right, all right, just open the door. You know, I got to get this. I lost a bet, whatever the case may be. I got to give it to the... We got the cover up here and got the sales. I'm going back to the sale. If I get caught buying drugs, I can land in jail for real. It's been a crazy ride. Yeah. Well, you just started. Um, first of all, Chief Peak, we left on a really bad note. I didn't think so. Since then, I've had time to recoup and think about what you said and what you did for me. Um, I think you may have saved my career. So I thank you for that. Well, that's good. I'm going to start with my initial intake. The first thing that happened when I came in was I was given a pat down. That pat down was pathetic. She patted right underneath my breasts along this side and didn't really check anything else. My bra had underwire, so I left it behind. I had no bra and I had no underwear. Turns out I could have taken both of them upstairs. This bra I was able to obtain within the facility. I traded coffee. You see right in here, they'll put their drugs inside the pocket right here behind the padding. I can fit my whole hand in there. This is the number one way that I saw of drugs and contraband entering your facility. Let's have, take a moment and talk about Miss Williams. She left me naked in my cell for 12 hours. I really have nothing. I'll be naked all night. I'll be back. You'll be OK. She's going to sit back down. It humiliated me. I had to go into survival mode. And whenever there was extra clothes available, I started taking them. So that that really bothered me. Another thing about Miss Williams is, are you aware of what happened on Mother's Day? Y'all with me, I'm gonna with you. She took her handcuffs and her keys and banged and banged and banged on our cell doors for hours. Yeah. We turn the lights off and turn the lights on. The main things that, that we're really trying to focus on is, is officer misconduct. It's a huge issue, and uh, Miss Williams, that's why I was terminated. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Yeah. I hope she never gets any type of law enforcement job ever again, because I love my job. Yeah. I love being a cop more than anything in the whole world. Watching my home team fail right in front of my eyes, mm -hmm. it shook me and it broke me. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I hope that I've given you information that you guys can use. Absolutely. And you'll never know really how much we appreciate it. Just want to right. thank you again. Thank, thank you, you guys. Thank you. It was you great to see you. Trip back. The 
Megatron came up to myself from the commissary, and the CEO immediately started questioning that situation. I just didn't want to get in any trouble. I didn't want to get busted. I had to tell him I lost the bet. I'm trying to bet again for this next game. And the CEO just, all right, get out. So that was, that was intense. That was intense. And after that, I was just like a little nervous. I was like, man, look, I don't know what's gonna happen next. Like, you just never know. I was sitting down like, in the middle of the pot. Megatron comes to sit down. And he just whips it out in public. I'm like, Megatron, what the hell? You know, I don't want nobody to know that I'm actually buying these drugs. And I'm like, no, let's go to the back. I've got all eyes on me. Maybe the CEO probably looking at me. What are you doing? And next thing you know, what the hell am I going to say? I just don't want to get caught getting drugs inside of a jail. I know that Dennis is trying to get drugs in the pod through Megatron, but I do not think Dennis would be as successful as me finding drugs. And I'm not going to stop. If I get caught with it, drop it, I can catch a charge, and I can probably bring down this whole program. I'm going in. I'm going in. Father, we, we love you with all that we are. Father, we love you with all that we are. I am not willing to allow Sierra to be tormented. I'm going to pray and see what God wants to do. Overall, I think we were 50-50. Half of the participants did an excellent job. The other half were just the fish out of water. If we could do it again, and we had more people like Tony, I'd be all about it. So you want to do this again? Sheriff Jonathan W. Horton out of Walk County, Alabama. I, Jonathan Horton, when I took office back in January, I inherited a very broken jail. The pods were overflowing with contraband. And there were more drugs in jail than there were out on the streets. Since day one in office, it was clear to me that we needed 60 days in more than any other jail in America. So we put seven undercover participants into our facility. And right out of the gate, they started dropping like flies. I hate myself right now. I failed. You watch the show, and it looks completely different than when you're in here. In the back of my head, I was like, you should have just stayed a fan. Like, I'm not as mentally strong as I thought it was. Yeah. 
I just really thought I could come in here and be socially malleable, but I don't fit in. <laughs> then it's more than I can handle. You coming in is a game changer. With so many people dropping out early, we brought in Tony as CEO from the Fulton County Jail in Atlanta. Your mission is to save the program. Can you do that for us, Tony? Yes, sir. Some of the participants came in thinking they were just going to be on a TV show, but this jail ate them alive. I already deal with a lot, and I knew mentally I would come in here because I knew I had the gluten intolerance to go against. But Jennifer is just being a butthole. When I get to the level of festivity that I'm at now, I black out, and I can't control what I say. So I would rather just bow out gracefully. Officer McNair. They know I'm a cop. And that puts me in a very, very dangerous situation. I'm just trying not to get killed. I would like very much not to be the next person stabbed at Etowah County. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull you out today. It's about doing the smart, safe thing. With half of the participants dropping out early and another one's cover being compromised, we're in a dire situation. We're down to the final three participants. And now I'm worried I'm not going to get enough information to make a difference in the jail. The 60 days is up, and it's time to pull the last three out. I hope and pray that they were able to find some useful information for me and that this all just wasn't a big waste of time. Fourth quarter, minute left. I'm counting down like literally minutes. And Megatron just basically sealed the deal for me. 20 items for some meth. Megatron came back with the product and he just whips it out in public and I'm like, Oh, Megatron, what the hell? You know, I don't want nobody to know that I'm actually buying these drugs. And I'm like, no, let's go to the back. I'm in the day room and I see Dennis talking to Megatron. I'm like, oh, he must be trying to buy some drugs from him. But I do not think Dennis would be as successful as me finding drugs because at this point, Everyone trusts me 100%, and I'm making a lot of money from store. I gave uh, Megatron just some of the dust of it, just for helping me out. And then I wrapped it up and put it right in the cups of my jeans. Can I see it? Hold on. Uh, it's a little dope sack. So that's the, that's, called, that's ice. So basically like crystal meth, just a, another term for it, which is called ice. I paid, what, 20 items for it? I want to give it to you guys, just hold it, you know. If I get caught with it, drop it, you know what I'm saying? I can catch a charge. I can land in jail for real in Alabama, which I don't want to happen. And I can probably bring, about, bring down this whole program. Hold this with your life, all right? <laughs> Look, I'm a new guy, never been to jail, and I can get this stuff very easy. So imagine somebody who's been to jail in and out that know the system better than I do. Something 
very upbeat and encourage and honor everybody that's here. Let's pray. We were in church service. Father, we, we love you with all that we are. And so I was praying and just like looking for guidance and leading of the Holy Spirit. We say, Holy Spirit, come. You're the minister of the sanctuary. There's no one that is like you that loves us more. And all of a sudden, I heard banging and screaming and all kinds of stuff. I see Sierra. You can literally see that her face was distorted. And I looked up in her window, and we made eye contact. And I just allowed the Holy Spirit just to pray through me. And so I'm praying under my breath, and she's up there just throwing out profanities. And in the name of Jesus, I commanded her to shut up. And that was the very moment where I took control spiritually and gave her her right frame of mind. And so as I'm praying down on the ground, the Holy Spirit was in her room comforting her. I'm telling you, I looked at this girl and under my breath prayed, and this girl shut up immediately, and she never even came back to the window. I am not willing to allow Sierra or any other person that I see to be tormented by a demon. Spiritually, I'm going to command it to go. It's essential to pray. It's so important. It makes all the difference in the world here. Let's pray. God's work with her isn't done. My goal is to have Sierra spiritually set free before I leave this place. Encourage and strengthen and build up is something you can do in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. So Dennis may have got a little bit of drugs. That's cool. That I, I ain't tripping on that. However, he's not gonna get nowhere near as much as what I get, especially from Megatron. I know these white boys are coming in. I know they got some. There's some in here though. I got all the commissary. I got all the money. I got the biggest influence in this pod. That's why I'm called the pod boss. So if it's drugs in here, I'm going to get all the drugs. This is how it's going to be. So you go find out how much it is, and I'll buy it. Make it money. You know what I think? I'll do this stuff. Uh, 
you know, Dennis, he honestly can't do what I can do. Since I've been running the store, I probably made about three to 400 bucks easy. We'll be able to get a bomber piece. So now I, I have the money to buy all the drugs, and I'm not going to stop with the clones. The 60 days is up, and it's time to pull the last three out. I'm going to pull Dennis out first because I'm really not worried about Tony. on and it just all fell off and I was just ready to get up out of there. Yeah, yeah, you too, you? What's up, guys? You made it. Hell yeah, I made it. Hell yeah. How does it feel? Amazing. I'm just happy to be out that place. It's a jungle in there, man. You gotta, you gotta look over your shoulder every second, every minute. You know? Did you bring out something with you? Hell yeah, I brought it with me. Can we see? Yeah. So, bought it with me. Bought my shank. How easy was it to get that out of the jail? It was too easy. Too easy. Went right through the metal detector. Didn't even sound off nothing. This is going to be something I'm going to give to the sheriff and the chief to let them know, you know, how easy it is to take and bring stuff out of the jail, how easy it is and how endangered their employees are. I'm hoping that it shocks the shit out of them, like, you know, because the guy like me, they probably just was like, oh, this, this guy or whatnot, I just probably come in jail. Said, but no, I got in the mix. and. Put my life on the line for this, so I can't wait to. I don't even want to like hand it. I want to toss it over to him. Like, yeah, that's how terrible your jail is. I had not stretched out my legs to run in two months, so right now I just wanted to get out and like just run and just uh, take it all in. You guys have no idea what it feels like to be locked down for 60 days in the jail and be a free man and really take in nature, really take in the little things in life. Man, it's a blessing to be out. for spiritual deliverance for Sierra. 
I plan to pray and wait for a door to open. I don't know, will I approach the CO? How will I be able to go into her room? Will I do it inside her room? I don't want it to be a spectacle. So I'm not really sure. I'm going to pray and see what God wants to do. Tonight, we were out in the day room. Sierra got out, had found out how to disengage the locks. She wouldn't listen to the CO, and she just started acting up. and she just became irate. Why don't you go to California Street? Ho, ho, ho. Now, you know why you see all that writing on the wall? She in the room now and then. So I walked up the stairs and just talked to her and asked her to come down. And when Miss B seen that she listened to me, she had this great idea to put her in my cell. Praise God, this is a beautiful moment in time. I felt like this was an amazing opportunity. This was the Holy Spirit leading me to go pray for her and deliver Sierra. I'm not going in there to fight with a demon. I'm not going in there to argue with a demon. I'm going in there to tell it what to do and I'm fully expecting it to respond and leave. Miss V had this great idea to put her in my cell. This is a beautiful moment in time because I'm confident in prayer that God is gonna do something. And my goal is to not leave here without her being delivered. I'm so glad you're in here with me. It's gonna be a great night. I told everybody you can have sleep rivers in jail. Yeah, we are. But first, I need to listen to her story, kind of gauge where her mind is before, you know, delivering her from her demons. Have you, have you ever been locked down by yourself and, oh my God, never. It messes with your brain. Like you get mentally, you're like, oh my God, you get to start talking to yourself. And like, there's this fly in my room with the name and everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's my butt in my head. It's like, this is, I'm like, oh, quit it, man, you scared me. Yeah, that, they shouldn't be able to stick you in and firm that long. She had talked and poured her heart out to me. I just listened to her and God was building a rapport for her to come to me and ask for prayer. See, I do get Adderall's and Xanax. I get a push pop. Okay. So if I can't get my prescriptions, yeah, I do a little bit of ice and it helps me. And it, like, because as you say, when I get a talking, I'm like scattered everywhere. I think that it was such a beautiful moment to be able to share those hours with her and to see her in her right frame of mind for most of that. I mean, there were times where the information kind of was scattered, but for the most part, she made sense. Every day when you come down for meds, that's what they give you, Adderall and Xanax. No, no, you're not allowed to get any narcotics. In this really? So what do they give you to help you? No, nothing. So what do you take when you come down for med call? I'm broken. What? Yeah, that's all I'm taking. I don't take no mental meds. They don't give anyone in here mental meds. No, they don't have, they don't do anything. I feel like the entire facility handles Sierra as though she's only a convict as opposed to having mental health issues. You know, when it was the cell up here and then when you were in church that day and like you were the only person that I could visually see, mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that. I do remember it. Yeah, and it was like something just kept on up. I was focusing on you, but in not like in a weird kind of way. It was like you was just somehow that was giving me hope, like just calm down, Sierra. This is not your fault, and the truth will be known, and it's going to be okay. It was just like a refreshing moment of just praise God that my prayers are being answered. I was praying for you, and I was just asking God to give you peace and to calm you down. It was like, and I felt that, and I knew that, and I did. 
God has shown his presence in this place. I think you're awesome. It was a great night. We had a great time together. Look, that's what I swear. I was like, in my head, I was thinking that about you when I started this night. <laughs> really? I was like, she's so cool. I wish everybody could be like this. God delivered her, and I'm really confident that her behaviors are going to begin to change, and I think she'll do really well. All right, sweetie pie, good night. Sweet day. And say your prayer, okay? I was able to get clone. So now I'm waiting for Megatron to get ice. Uh, Megatron know that, you know, I get commissary stuff, so he automatically assumed that I would have the money to buy the drugs from him. So it's just a matter of time. Megatron said he didn't have no ice, but he did say he had some cream. So I was like, all right, cool. Bring everything you got, I'll buy it from you. And what is cream? I think cream is, uh, I think they call cream like uh, crack, coke, something like that. OK, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to call you back in like, say, about 15, 20 minutes at the most. Okay. All right. sitting at the table, he was like, hey, bro, look, I got this for you. You know, he showed me the cream, and I turn around and seal, like, right here in my face. So I'm like, oh, snap, like, put it up, put it up, put it up. I'm going to pull Jennifer next. She's the only participant left in the female unit. The CEO came to me and she said she needed to talk to me and she was walking me towards my cell. And when she said, pack it up, I couldn't believe it. I was just in shock, in disbelief. I just didn't want to leave. I did not want to leave them. But many times in life, I've thought God's timing should be one thing, and then it wasn't, and it proved out to be exactly what that situation needed. The door closes behind me and I just, it, it, it's not really real until I walk out the doors and I see the traffic and can take a breath of fresh air. Hi, everyone. I'm so awesome. Let me in. Let me out. Let me out. Hello. Hi. Hi. 
What are you feeling? I'm feeling excited. I can breathe and there's no mold and there's no disgusting smells and it's beautiful. I'm so happy. I just feel human again. I, I feel like I'm, I've been let out of the zoo and you know, I can shave my legs and pluck my eyebrows and bathe in cinnamon oil soon. <laughs> just my regular routine. I feel like I brought positivity. I feel like I brought the truth, the truth of Jesus Christ, the hope that's in him. I was able to pray for so many people and just God, again, he answered prayers every single day and he did things for these women. The world is so great. It's such a beautiful world. And um, I think I just brought encouragement, a positive outlook on life, no matter what the outward circumstances are. This is a great moment. I didn't expect it to be this great. I can't wait to go in there and debrief like all the stuff that I got and all the information. I did my job and now it's, it, you know, I'm showing. With Dennis, I think he wanted to be the center of attention. He wanted to be the star of the show. Kind of like, I don't care what they've told me to do. I'm gonna take it upon myself to do what I want to do. This is real life. So quit doing all this stupid shit that you're doing. I don't need that. It's definitely wrong about me. But as far as, you know, calling me overconfident, I am confident. So he was right about that. What about this? Long time ago. Hey, good. You? Good. Yeah, you too, man. Good. 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 Glad to be on this side of the bars. Yeah. Definitely. Enjoying a little freedom. Oh, yeah. Enjoy my freedom. So you was in there. Uh, the whole allotted time that, that, that you were asked to be, we appreciate that. And, uh, and, and and me being straight with you, you know, I think at first it was like, I don't know about Dennis. He's sort of kind of like working out a lot, walked around, shirt off. I wasn't like just kind of working out and staying to myself. I was talking to any and everybody. You got to make a name for yourself. You know, kind of people kind of respect you a little bit before you just start jumping in and trying to find out what's going on. This jail here in particular, man, it was a jungle. Uh -huh. A lot of drugs come in through intake. Um, from off the street. And when I do talk to the people that have brung it in um, from off the street, what they've done is they just uh, stuffed it up their, their jail pocket. And I actually had a cellmate that actually did it in front of me. In his butt, you're talking about? Yeah, in his butt. Yeah. In his butt. How that? How do you feel about that situation? I was just like shocked. First thing that went through my head is this, this, this ain't for TV. So uh, yeah, so that happened uh, right in front of me. So I got lucky. Uh, and what did you end up saying you ended up giving up for the ice? It was about maybe a quarter gram, something like that, I think it was. I paid about 20 items for it. 20 items? Really? 20 items. Yeah, where would that supposedly come from? It was actually my roommate that actually, it was part of his ice. I got you. Yeah. He brought it in with him when he was booked. Mm -hmm. Was it that that came on his butt? Yeah, because that was the only ice in the unit at the time. You know, we're going to uh, deal with that, but the, the drugs were turned over to the Alabama County Drug Enforcement Unit, and they were destroyed. That's what happens in a case like that. So, okay. Uh, anything else that you know you feel is important? Uh, I got this for you. Okay. Um. Anything else that you know you feel is important? Uh, I got this for you. Shank made out of a toothbrush and concrete nail mm -hmm. and a cap. It's pieced together pretty well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it could cause, you know, some it could cause some damage. It's oh, yeah. necrotic, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's not made in China. It's made in Etowah County. Yeah, that's exactly right. It looks like a lot of things that it came from the uh, renovation of the jail, the nail and everything. Yeah, that's a good job, Dennis. We, we, we really appreciate that. This goes a long way. It does. We just want to say thanks. All right, man. Thank hey, be you. careful. Thank you. All right, Thank you. Thanks. Have a safe trip back. Will do. I'm ready to get back. Ready to get back to the beaches. So finally, Dennis. Again, I think he turned it on there at the end. Uh, to begin with, I'm not too sure he uh, really was that productive. If he had focused on his real mission of being in there in the beginning, he could have done so much more. So. Now that I'm out, I am ready to sit down and debrief with Sheriff Horton. How Jennifer, are you? How are you? 
Long time no see. Long time no see. It's good to see you again. Yeah. We appreciate the fact that you made it from the day you were committed until the day they released you. So thank you. Thankful for that. First of all, booking. A lot of the drugs were coming in there. They absolutely do a horrible job of patting you down. The girl who pat me down, she absolutely barely touched me. They didn't look in my mouth. They didn't, you know, really check me when I was supposed to squat down and cough. There was women who came in and they were wearing layers of clothing. And in every layer, they had some sort of drug in those layers. That could, you know, feed the addiction of 20 or 30 inmates. So we certainly know that's, that's certainly an issue. Um, in the female unit uh, that you were in, uh, unit five, right? Correct. Were the door locks when you left, are they still in the process of being fixed, or what's the condition there? The door locks, um, every, working, yeah, they're working. So there is a way that one of the inmates, um, Sierra, she was able to disengage the lock. They take a bottle of water and squeeze into that little sensory hole and actually completely disengage the lock. Well, we have been made aware of that, and we are now working on that issue there with the maintenance. So. Well, again, Jennifer, thank you a lot for the time and, and what you've done for us. Thank, thank you. God, God bless, bless you. I'll be praying for you. Thank you. Jennifer was great from an evangelical standpoint. As far as the grand scheme or scope of things for what we needed Jennifer to do, she was somewhat helpful. But at this point, I've got to be honest with you, I'm still eager to get more information. Reels. Who's Reels? Pack it up. Pack it up. I hear the door open, and the CO says, Reels, pack it up. I'm like, no You going home? You going home? Huh? Did you just call me, told me to tell you to pack up? The emotions, you know, gosh, I'm going home. You know, this is really happening. Yeah, I'll take it. Y'all split me. I'm excited going home. However, it's still a lot of work that needs to be done in here. So it's like a bittersweet moment. I just wanted to run right through those those glass doors, the metal doors. I was like, I'm gone now. As soon as I entered the sunshine, I'm like, yes, freedom. Oh, f it's me. Up. We did it. It's over with. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking right. Good job, man. Good job, dude. You did it. Damn. Yes, it's just, just let's just go. Like, don't, don't, don't stop it. Go, just go, just go. You did it. I did it. And guess what else I did? What? I got the drugs. Man, you did it. I did it. And guess what else I did? What? I got the drugs. You got them on you? Yeah. Can we see them? Yeah. Uh, Megatron. I actually put them under my uh, private area. Um, I knew I would be leaving, didn't know when exactly, so I just kept them there until I was called. Well, this here is the coke. Uh, be careful with that. Yeah. Don't sneeze. I gave $40 for this on the guy's books. This here is the clone. What are you gonna do with it now? Um, give it to you. <laughs> I 
Uh, I don't want it in my possession. Yeah, I'm happy to take it from you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> nice doing business with you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you want to do now? Eat, man. You want something to eat? Yes, what, yes. What do you want? You want you can take it through drive through Yeah, whatever. Hello, yes. Um, can I get the number two, the Baconator? Ketchup, mustard, onions, bacon, a large Sprite, a frosty cookie sundae. And like, can I get a, a large uh, sweet tea on the side? And a taco salad. Oh, yeah, we're going to go big. We're going to go big. Oh, uh, yeah, that'll do it. Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry. And two baked cookies, chocolate chip. Thank you. Everything in here? All right, thank you. Oh, man, let's see. Yeah, finally, finally, finally here. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm, yeah. Real food. You know, I'm definitely going to approach and handle situations different based off this experience. A hundred percent. Like an example, when they locked everyone down because of one incident, which had nothing to do with me or any of the other inmates. You know, that, that's that's kind of, that's rough. You know, I will make that a priority now once I get back to work. Pretty good, it's been sir. A little while, not too long, but a little while. Yeah, yes, Tony. Tony came in late to save this program. He was a correctional officer. He knew what to look for. So I'm hoping that he's got the most useful information. Um, lay it out to us. What you found out? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, feel like need to invest more time, um, in training. Uh, like when the stabbing took place, like an example. Stabbing was over. The officer did not spray him. You didn't handcuff him. As far as I know, you didn't call back up. He didn't do anything. To me, that tells me training. You're going to be in situations where it's possible you can freeze up. So when that happens, all you can rely on is your training. Your training, training, training. Better equipment, I feel like. They don't have enough stuff on their belt to do their job. Don't have any cuff pouches, no tasers. The side team, they're the only one with tasers. They don't have pouches for their, for their gloves if, if, if they got to, you know, stop the bleeding or, you know, with that whole stabbing situation. Another inmate said, why didn't you spray him? He said, come here. He walked over to the inmate. He took his can. He said, here, listen, ain't nothing in it. <laughs> That's no lie. <laughs> he, took, he took his OC can off his hip and said, look, there's nothing in the can. And I'm just looking like, what? Like, why would you even tell an inmate that, that it is, if, even if it is? Even if I just used it and I just haven't had the chance to get to the warehouse, why would I tell an inmate that it's in? We've got some, some real issues that have to be dealt with. Uh, that being said, I know that you happen to be one of the first participants to physically uh, put your hand on narcotics. Um, I have a couple here. This. It's some cash that I got. Um, this is one of two shanks. I gave roughly 11 items for this. Comes from a dust mop. Dust mop. And this is some clone. Very dangerous. I mean, messes people's minds up, shuts their kidneys down just ridiculously. I agree. Nice I gave, I think, 40 bucks for this. Um, and I mean, it was, it was easy. I mean, and here is a razor blade. This stuff was extremely easy for me to get. This is some coke. 
with the drugs, I feel like you could never stop it. Sure. It's just too, too much, but you can slow it down. We uh, appreciate you taking time away from your job to come and, and help us. We appreciate it, Tony. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Thank you, Tony. Yes, sir, yes, sir. We can help you let us know. The things I found was extremely disappointing. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it hurt, it hurt. At a Wild County Sheriff's Office, you know, hopefully, you know, you can benefit from this, like, majorly. Thank Have you. a safe trip. Thank you. Because there's a lot of things that need to be addressed, and I'm hoping this can help. And I'm just thinking, like, man, I, like, I really do feel like this is the last hope for that facility. I feel that Tony was a game changer, and I'm very, very pleased with what Tony brought to the table. But uh, out of eight participants, there were three that actually finished the 60 days in. I feel like if the other five wouldn't have gotten out so early, that we would have obtained more information. We wanted to check in and see how you were feeling about the information you got from the debriefs that you had. I think that there were some of the participants that did an excellent job. Uh, the other half, uh, um... We wanted to check in and see how you were feeling about the information you got from the debriefs that you had. Yeah, so it was quite revealing. Um, I think that there were some of the participants that did an excellent job. Uh, the other half uh, were just a fish out of water that just sort of appeased themselves to make it through the period of time they had to make it through. Outside of that, uh, Tony was a wealth of information. And, uh, you know, of course, he had that background. He came from the corrections field, and so he knew what to look for. He knew, and, and that played a big role in being able to give us great information. If we could do it again and we had more people like Tony, I'd be all about it. participants' feedback. We've made a lot of positive changes. We've seen to it our correctional officers are better equipped. Stand by. Folks needed to be retrained. <laughs> and made to do their job correctly. Now I'm going to send in another group of highly trained professionals a special ops group of people, but only for 30 days. I'm a narcotics detective. I'm ready to get placed in the facility and to do what I do, and that's undercover work. I am the commander of operations of a county jail. If somebody were to attack you, what would you do? I'd probably feel bad for them. I'm a firefighter, and I have eight years experience in corrections. I do not take from anybody. If you put your hands on me, I guess it's, it's, it's go time. I'm a retired sergeant. I'm not going to allow you to come up to me and say, I'm going to kick your ass. I'm going to take my attack on you first. He was so beneficial to us in the first phase, we're going to bring him back for the second phase. Back in this bitch like I never lived. Nobody is going to question if I'm 60 days in. I mean, I'm 6'3", 250. You don't want to play with me. We're not looking for participants to just observe and report. We're looking for them to get their hands dirty, to get involved, and to show us where our problems are. I'm supposed to be one of them. So if I'm getting meth, I'm going to have to act like I'm methed up for six hours a day. If I get cocaine, the same thing. I am going to identify how those drugs are getting in and who's bringing them in. There should be no distress signals, no weakness, twice the work, half the time. Holy shit, here we go. My goal this phase is to test the COs 100%. I'm going to go to the 
wait till you say it. Turn around. Hey, let's go. put eight undercover participants into our facility. And only three made it the entire 60 days. I feel like if the other five wouldn't have gotten out so early, that we would have obtained more information. Outside of that, uh, Tony was a wealth of information. And uh, if we could do it again, and we had more people like Tony, I'd be all about it. Amateur hour's over. It's time to put in real professionals to get the job done. Since phase one, we've made a lot of drastic changes. The biggest change is all the locks have been fixed. Now we've installed the new locks, which actually have a, a light that indicates that the door is secure. So if this is barely shut, it's not going to turn green until I secure it back. Okay. Come on, guys. We've also placed a supervisor there in the intake area to store up booking. Everyone gets a shower. Everyone squats and coughs. <clears throat> Everyone gets the full stripped down treatment to ensure that we're not missing anything. We learned that this was not happening on a regular basis, so uh, we're seeing to it now that it's happening 100% of the time. We've seen to it our correctional officers are better equipped. Folks needed to be retrained. Stand by. We've given them tasers so that they can add another inmate compliance to their belt. Taser, taser, taser. We learned a lot from Tony when it came to how our officers conduct themselves. I told you during your interview, this profession will chew people up and spit them out and it just keeps rolling. We learned that we need to extend our training for our new officers. When you spray, you want to target straight across the eyes. Come on now. All right, go find your guy. Right here, right here. Right here. You got to know where it is and get to it. If you look down on it, well, I took my eyes off my target that's coming at me now. I got two problems. I got to get this out, and I don't know where the hell he's at. We're definitely making progress, but because five of our participants didn't finish in phase one. We're sending in four more law enforcement professionals for 30 days to test these changes and see how we can further improve our facility. Failure is not an option, so we're sending in the big guns. My name is Donovan. I'm a narcotics detective, and I've been a police officer for a little over 12 years. Taking bad guys off the street really gets my adrenaline going. My name's Heather. Currently, I am the commander of operations of a county jail. If someone were to attack me in jail, I would feel bad for them. My name is Vanessa. I'm a firefighter, and I have eight years experience in corrections. I do not take from anybody. My name's Mark. I'm a retired sergeant. I don't need to sugarcoat things. I don't have time for your If there's a problem, I'm going to handle it. We're not looking for participants to just observe and report. We're looking for them to get their hands dirty, to get involved, and to show us where our problems are. Hey. hey. How are you? Good, how are you? Mark. Heather. Nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you. So where are you from? Utah. Oh. But yourself? Philadelphia. Oh, very nice. Awesome. Hey. Hi. Hi. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, Mark? Donovan here, Mark. Nice, nice to meet you. You too. 
And they're so long hey. for a while. Hey, Heather, how, you how are you? Oh, I'm a hugger? Hey. All right, I'll take it. Well, they didn't tell me someone would have nicer hair than me, so <laughs> we might have All to right. do something oh, about that. Oh, was it me? <laughs> you guys ready to rock and roll or what? Yeah. yeah. I think so, yeah. Hi. Hello. How are you, Mark? I'm, fine. I'm Vanessa. Nice to meet Vanessa. you. Vanessa, Heather. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Hey, Vanessa, Donovan here. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We've been kind of sitting here chilling and talking and... <laughs> We've been waiting for you. Yeah, <laughs> we're waiting for that. Have you guys uh, watched the show? What do you think? Yeah, I actually, I'm kind of a little bit of a fan. How about you guys? The Six Days Inn actually started in the county. I'm from Clark County. It started, oh, yeah. started oh, really? on jail. Our mm -hmm. sheriff, Sheriff Jamie Noel. So, like, when it did come out and they did show the series, I was like, Man, you know, I was like, I've been loved to be involved in that. What's up? Why do you keep us in the sick kind of stuff? So, um, fast forward to that uh, a few, a couple years later, the sheriff's like, Hey, remember what you said back then about being involved with six days? Then I'm like, Yeah. He's like, You ready to go? That's what's going to be interesting to me is watching the show. You're like, Oh, I would, I would so, oh, I would not do that. Yeah. Right. Now I'm going to be there. It's like, Okay, here we go. Yes. Go time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Sheriff Jonathan Horton, Etowah County, Alabama. To my left is Keith Peake, the Chief of Corrections. To my right, Mark Bullock, the Assistant Chief of Corrections. And we feel blessed that we were approached and able to invite 60 Days In to help us see where we stood and make changes that would make our jail not only safer for the inmates, but the correctional officers as well. Uh, we have completed phase one with 60 days in, as you know, we put time and energy in selecting you individually to be special ops, if you will, to have a group come back and go in and give us an idea of how much we've grown or what other things we still yet need to work on is tremendous. But we want to know the truth. If we're not doing as well as we can do, we want to know it. And that's why we selected you. I'm going to turn to Chief Peak. Chief, is there anything you'd like to say? Just a few months ago, we had a group of participants from Phase 1 that was sitting in the same chair as you are today. We're going to show you what each one of them done. This is Jacob. He was a correction officer. He came in, felt like he was going to be real good at this. He was going to have a lot to offer. He didn't even make it out of our intake area and tapped out. This is Matt. He was a Marine that said that was gonna help him through, walked in confident, he gets in our facility, I'm ready to go home. This is Alex. He's a college student who's trying to prove himself. He actually lasted a lot longer than what I thought. He tapped out, he left. This is Shanice, and she worked with at-risk youth. Her students called her Cray Cray because she'd throw chairs in the classroom. She was built for this, tapped out, said she had to go. She just couldn't take it anymore. Y'all see the pattern? All right. Ashley. Ashley was a police officer. She came in with this attitude that I'm not going to cry during this process and they're not going to beat me down. That was totally opposite of what happened. And I made the decision to pull her out. So remember that when you're switching this world. I know we've been undercover, and I know you've been in high-risk situations, but now you're going into their world to where your buddy ain't on backup on the radio. Dennis, he came in arrogant. He got in there and spent the whole time taking his shirt off and working out in front of the cameras. But Dennis actually made it through the whole process. This is Jennifer. She worked with mental health. She actually made it through the whole program also. There was one person that went a step above everybody else, actually five or six steps above everyone else. He was here for the right reasons. He was here to help us. He tested the officers. He tested the inmates. He got more information in a week than some of the participants got during the whole time they was here. He was so beneficial to us in the first phase of this we're gonna bring him back for the second phase and let him sort of be y'all's quarterback. So with that, we welcome Tony back to participate in this part of the program along with you guys. Good to see you again, Tony. Yes, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do you, as an individual, 
plan to do this time differently than you did the last time? Um, well, Sheriff, you tell me you made changes. However, I'm gonna verify that for myself. Um, every change that I brought to your attention, I'm gonna pretty much call you out on it and make sure it's done. If it's not fixed or in, in, in uh, order. end up in jail for real, Tony. Be careful, man. <laughs> 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 You know what we're doing. You've been here before. That's why we feel good about having you back. We welcome you and like for you to be the team captain or leader of this next phase. Thank you again, Tony. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, we don't expect you to ever have to tap out. That's not who we chose to do this. But God forbid you need to take that opportunity. You're physical sign will be this. We'll call it like praying hands, just methodically thinking of I need help, okay? So everybody together, God help me make it 30 days or this sheriff's gonna kick my ass. Tony's the team leader, so I'd like to give him the opportunity, since he's been here before, to discuss and brief the other participants. Hey, Tony. Hello. How you doing? Good. And give him a few helpful tips. I'd love to see Tony help urge the others to, to duplicate his success. Have anybody ever been locked up before? No? As a kid. OK. So in a nutshell, it's going to be like this. When we go in the pod, they're going to be judging us the moment we walk in, right? Don't think you're going to go in there and be super cop, because I'm going to tell you, as soon as you walk in, they're going to look at you. Uh, you might be with the <laughs> You, mm, I don't know. I'm going to just watch your body language, see how you move. You, you sell drugs. You holding drugs. You, I'm going to take whatever I want to take from you when I want to take it. So do not put off like you're a big, bad guy. And if, you, if, you, if you're not willing to fulfill that when the time comes, don't be that guy. Same thing with the females. Do y'all feel comfortable um, with y'all cover stories? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I feel comfortable with it. Like, if I, if I say what you locked up for, uh, what, what are you locked up for? Uh, I locked up for I got, I got a warrant. OK, what's the warrant for? It was like threat of violence or something like that. OK, yeah. So you want them to have to pull it out. You don't just volunteer information. You don't have to tell me anything. Right. However, you do want to lead people along to, to get them pretty much on your team. Right. What's your cover? What's your story? Man, it's just straight <laughs> honestly. Mm -hmm. It's assault charge. Assault? Yeah. Uh, you ever been down the road? Down the road? Yeah. You mean? ever been to prison? No. Oh, you must have never been locked up before. You ain't never done no time before, have you? I've been, I've, I've been held before. I ain't been, like, locked up. I ain't done no real time. OK. All right. Sir, what you locked up for? Man, I got me on some stuff one up north. We Def playing one. games. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, what, what they, uh, what they say you stuck? What, they, what you stealing? Sure, man. It don't matter. I'm about to get out quick, though. Yeah, you got a bond? Nah, I ain't got no bond yet, but I'm about to get out Talk of here. Talk to your lawyer? Nah, yet, man. My peeps get me out of here. You, do you got a lawyer? Nope. How long you been locked up? Man, I just got here. I mean, you got I'm here like to to last here. week, got here? Nah, I just got here today. Oh, 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 okay, okay, I understand. What you locked up for, sir? I got a warrant out of Philly. Philly? Okay. So why you here? Got pulled over. I didn't, I didn't out to uh, the Alabama game. Yeah, so uh, what, what your charges is, though? What's... Selling oxy. Selling oxy. Selling scripts. You were selling them? Yep. So who the wait, man? I'm trying, I'm trying to move some stuff myself. Yeah. Now what? I, I, I ain't say nobody's name here. OK. You ever heard of 60 Days In? Nah, what's up? You ain't never, all these cameras around here, you ain't never heard no 60 Days In. Nah, I'm not a TV guy. So I'm just trying to figure out what y'all folks got going on, man. No, you got nothing going on. You got the wrong guy. OK. Hey, me. OK, OK. Mark, honestly, he's the only one I'm concerned about. I think he's going to become a target and possibly not be able to finish. So the point of all that is this. You're not obligated to answer any of my questions. Right. However, just know if you don't answer certain questions, you're going to be looked at a certain way. You know what I mean? And I don't say this jokingly. I do see someone picking you out because you're sitting back with your hands crossed and you're looking like you're an easy target. If you come in and I see you just sitting there and then you go and buy $300 worth of store, either you're going to get to me or you're going to get beat up. Tony definitely underestimates me. I felt what he did was disrespectful. 
You know, I am more than capable of handling myself. You don't have to like me, you don't have to think anything of me, but at the end of the day, I'll be the winner of whatever situation I'm put in. I'm, I'm going to be the pod boss. So don't neither one of y'all think y'all going to come in there and be the pod boss, because that's not your role. I'm going to tell you straight up, it's not going to happen. That's me. He's an overconfident, cocky person. If I were him, going back a second time, then, you know, there could be somebody else different in there now. And it may not be as easy. That confidence could backfire, and it'll look, you know, foolish. Could put you in danger. We get in there, you don't know me. I don't know you. I don't know where you from. You don't know where I'm from. That's how we. That's how it's going to rock until you work your way inside my circle. That's how it's going to work. The females, I feel confident about them. They're nervous, but they're it's a normal nervous. Mark, um, I'm, I hope I'm wrong, <laughs> but if he go along with it in two weeks, stay on me, buddy. Stay on me. If no one else have any questions for me, um, I think that'll do it. I look forward to seeing everyone in the inside. No matter what goes on, watch out for each other. I'd like Tony to go in first and sort of lead the group and urge the others to be a lot more successful. Deja vu. <laughs> Sheriff said a lot has changed. Honestly, I really don't believe it. Supposedly, he retrained all of his officers, so I'm going to put all that to the test. If they can be broke, I'm the one to break you. We've never done this before. We've never put somebody back into jail who's already been part of the program once. So how does that feel? <laughs> People are going to love this. Let's go make history, you know, because, I mean, I, I know what I'm going to bring to the table. So you think there's going to be some suspicion, but you can handle it? I mean, I, I carry myself a certain way where you, I'm not one that you want to challenge. I mean, I'm 6'3", 250. You don't want to play with me. Oh, man, they, like, they ready, too. <laughs> Oh, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Good luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We watching you. All righty. All righty. How's it going, Tony? Pretty good. Pretty good. How you doing, sir? Pretty good. Yes, Been sir. a minute yes, since sir. a couple of days ago. You up ready for this? Yes, sir. I am. All right. I'm ready. And we look forward to your success. I feel 100% confident. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, good deal, Tony. Good luck. If you would, step right back here to our cuff team. They'll take you from here. You know the routine. Yes, sir. Phase one, I got shanks. I got drugs. Put your arms out for me. I did what I wanted to do. Second phase, buckle up. <laughs> buckle up. One of the things that I'm looking to see has changed is intake. Matt, you bet? You bet? Yeah. All right, then. You ever have any feelings of hopelessness? Yeah. Hopeless right now, I'm in here. Yeah. This way, you ain't got nothing else on you. Put your hands up on the wall. The pat down compared to last time was night and day. Kick your shoes off for me. He actually patted me down, like crotch, you know, socks, like winning my shoes. Like he, he, yeah, they figured it out. All right, let's go stand right over there at that door and they'll be with you. After the pat down, they put me in the tank. I didn't make a bar. So there's this older white guy, right? He started bragging and boasting about some money. 
He tell me it's $1,700. Apparently, you ain't never been to jail or been robbed. Mind you, I'm an inmate now. You know, survival of the fittest. I got to eat, man. I got to call my folks. I got to get make store, use the phone. I ain't trying to spend my own money. I'm trying to test the COs in every opportunity they presented. If I wanted to take all his money, there was no one to stop me. It don't matter if you're old, white, black. The CO's not jumping in and saving you. That's the nature of the beast. So I'm, I'm sitting there in intake. Um, there's this older white guy, right? He started bragging and boasting about $1,700. Mind you, I'm an inmate now. You know, survival of the fittest. I got to eat. No sooner than he gave me the 50, the CO called me out. So I'm like, well, shoot, I got to do what the CO say. I need I need your pants and your shirt. Can you take it off right here? I do. Yeah. I gotta get you to take a shower before you go. Shower? Yep. Uh, I look homeless. No, we make everybody shower. This time, intake is a thousand times better. They made me take a shower. I need you to turn on SWAT call for me. <clears throat> they strip searched me, everything. All right. Good. Pick your sack up. Turn around, you know, the whole nine. Thank you, sir. In my book, it was 100% correct. Well, I'll definitely get in my A+. Plus. They, they figured it out. The CEO was like, hey, you know, can't take no money to the pod. Put the rest on the uh, machine. So I put 50 bucks on my books. Eventually, I'm going to give it back. But right now, I'm an inmate. I got to do what inmates do. Hey, I'll see you in four. I got you, huh? Yeah, pr appreciate you. You have a work for me. Unit four? No, they don't have females in the men's unit. Well, I don't ever see you in passing. You're not going to be able to? No. No. <laughs> well, I got you smiling, though. Look at you. Look at you. I'm ready, I'm motivated, I'm ready to get it done. All right, so how are you feeling? I'm, I'm, ex I'm excited, I truly am. You've uh, wanted not, to do this for a long time. I have, yeah, I've watched several seasons and I've wanted to be a part of this, uh, not, not just as being a fan, but being uh, in a jail commander role just being able to go in and get that insight and, and bring it back to my agency and make improvements there. So I'm excited. My name's Heather. I'm 41 years old. I am the jail commander over operations at a county jail in Utah. I oversee about 190 staff members at my facility. People describe me as tough. Uh, they, they have called me a badass. I was a semi-pro boxer for about nine years and did MMA for another two years. That uh, experience, both boxing and doing MMA, uh, gave me even more confidence in my career in corrections, being able to defend myself. So I definitely have the abilities to take care of myself and handle things if I need to. What about unwanted attention, sexual advances? I am a lesbian, so I do know that that could create some unwanted attention from some of the other female inmates. I don't worry about that. I can I can squash that pretty quickly, or if it's something that I can can you know manipulate to get intel uh, or to get information for the sheriff, I can absolutely do that. I'm obviously not going to cross any lines physically, but if one of the female inmates is flirting with me and I can use that to my advantage to get some intel, I, I have no problem doing that. Good morning, Heather. Nice to see you again. 
Good to see you again. Feeling good this morning? I am serious. So, Heather, we're looking for great expectations, and I have no doubt that that's what you'll produce. Thank you for giving of your time to help us. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you so much. Right. So you feel confident? Feel good? All right, 30 days. Yes, sir. You can do it. Can do All right. It. If you would, just step right over here to our cuff team. They'll take Absolutely. it from here. Move the parts in front of the van, place your hands up on the hood. Yes, sir. Start with the legs back. Let's really lift up your left leg. Can you flip? I've been an officer, I've been a sergeant, I've been a lieutenant, and I'm now a captain. But I've never been an inmate. Step over here to the side of the land. That's one side that you can only get by being an inmate. So I just think it's an awesome opportunity to learn, to grow, uh, to provide feedback for the sheriff. I'm super excited, uh, ready to just get in there and, and, and get at it. As a jail commander, walking into intake, it all hits me. Turn around and face the wall. Spread your arms out. Place them on the wall. Do you have anything on you that a poker stick? No. I walked into chaos. They assume you've been here before and you know what to do. At one point in time, I was just standing. And I'm like, do you want me to go sit down? Like, they just assume you're knowing what to do. You should be in charge of every area, including booking. And that's just part of the whole security aspect. There were several times there were not really any security staff around. You do want security staff around, especially when you have mixed gender so close in proximity. What I'm seeing, the safety and security issues, um, I know that in, in my jail, uh, I would want to know about these issues immediately to rectify them, to fix them, and to make sure they're in the past. Walking into 400, a couple people remember me. And I think O'Shea. Everything's coming back to me. It's like, get on, get on your grind. Like, you've been here before, this ain't nothing new. But back to business. I plan on challenging every single CO, every step of the way. At 123. First test, I'm pretty much gonna pick my own cell. I'm looking for a cellmate I can live with. I just want somebody clean, decent, that I don't have to worry about. I say one I like. There was this old black guy in there. I think he was on the bottom bunk, and I was like, hey, yo, you got you on the top. I was like, man, you can't make that an old man get up top, this and that. I said, well, I guess I ain't going in there then. I'm not only, you know, showing my dominance for the inmates, I'm doing it to get the COs on board, too, to be honest. Once I see that little hesitant, oh, yeah, I'm about to run with it. I ain't doing nothing, you say. The CO was extremely passive. Um, I could have done anything I want to. I go upstairs, look in the cells. I see that little white boy come out of his cell. 
And I'm like, yeah, he, he's, he's definitely doable. I can live with him. Boom, this is my cell. Man, I'm back. As an inmate, I shouldn't be able to pick my own cell. The reason why that's crazy is because it's this. Say if we got locked up because we got an altercation, now you're putting us in the same room. What do you think about to happen? You see what I'm saying? So first test uh, on the officers, they failed. I went through an entire strip search process. It was actually a very thorough strip search. Sheets, blankets, washcloth, towel. So here's your bag. Just have a seat right out front, and they'll tell you where you're going. All right, thank you. I was kind of just going over, how's my demeanor? What am I going to say if people ask what's going on? You know, a million times over in my head as we're walking to the unit. All right. 140 for me, please. And the door's open, and, and it's game on. Walking into the unit, it's very obvious. This is not a direct supervision designed facility. The guard is in the unit, but that's not all a direct supervision facility is. You should be able to see into the cells. You cannot. There's a little tiny window in the cell door, and that's it. That's not direct supervision. You should be able to see at any point in time all inmates. So I feel like staff are already at a disadvantage. As a jail commander, I would be not just scared for the inmates, petrified for my staff. It's, it's scary. This is my second time going in. Pod boss, that's 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 some phase one. Shit. This is like my kids' playground in my backyard. I, I can do what I want to do. Y'all trying to see how it is around this place? They all want you to talk. They all want you to snitch. They want everybody around and snitch, set somebody up. I ain't with that. I'm in the day room, and I see this white kid who said, hey, bro, you working with the camera crew? I'm like, nah, I won't play this. Like, I, I could just go up and just smack them, and that's just going to seal the deal. Don't even open your mouth wrong. Hey, sir, I can't, I can't hear you. Speak up. I can't hear you. Speak up. You got something to say, sir. You disrespect me, I'm going to put blood in your mouth. He shut up. Wouldn't you shut up? <laughs> and then all the same gangsters surrounding him who encouraged him enough to even approach me to say that. Now they like, nah, big homie, he ain't made nothing like that. Now I'm cool, big bruh, unk, OG, all this. Man, my name is Tony. I mean, Austin would never confront me if he didn't have like five, six people uh, telling him what to do. With him being the, obviously the oddball because he's white, the black people, they in his ear because they ain't got the balls enough to come to me and say, they know better. So keep your mouth shut and we good. So we're about five minutes out. How you feeling? Overall, I'm feeling good. Uh, we're just, uh, I guess the butterflies kicking in a little bit now. You know, it's not something I'm used to doing. A lot of my undercover work is a day-to-day -day operation, or maybe a couple-day operation. This, by far, will be the biggest operation uh, that I've been involved in. The uh, last little bit of communication to the outside world that I have to my life. Power it off. 
I'm 46 years old. I'm a narcotics detective for the Clark County Sheriff's Office in Clark County, Indiana, where season one and two of 60 Days In originated. So I worked for Sheriff Jamie Noel, and he actually recommended me for this program. We're used to as police officers taking people to jail and turn around leaving, and you're going to stay behind and <laughs> see what's going on behind the bars. Right. The people we deal with are not your everyday citizens. It's usually the worst of the worst. Working undercover, I can go from Sunday school speaking uh, to street speaking pretty quick. Yeah, you're going to hear a different diamond when I'm on the inside. Uh, instead of saying, hey, uh, pass my tray, but hey, give me the tray, you know? Be safe, dude. Use your experience and have fun. Good deal. I appreciate it, Sheriff. Thank you, sir. Yes, I'm ready to be placed in jail and uh, get going. Can I volunteer for this? Thanks. Sheriff. Good morning. Looking forward to this? Yes, sir, I am. Obviously, you know, we chose you because you have gotten a special set of skills, special ops, if you will. We count on you to be able to do really twice as much in half the time, 30 days. I have no doubt you're going to succeed, and any type of intelligence that will help better us is what we're after. Well, I can assure you I'm going to draw on every bit of training experience I have, and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to the opportunity and chance to get in do some good for you. Well, we got full confidence in you. Yes, sir. If that Thank helps. You. All right. I'm going to tell you by far, as a law enforcement officer, this is about the worst feeling I could have right now. It feels kind of weird. I'm in handcuffs, I'm a police officer, I'm going to jail. But uh, that's what I signed up for. I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to, to, uh, to get placed in the facility and to do what I do, and that's undercover work. So I'm in the van, I'm on the way to jail, and the arresting officer uh, just stops the van, and he gets out. It's just an arrest report. I'm like, you know, what's going on? It happens as I'm going to run. We're getting back out. Now, um, I'm kind of getting nervous. Where's the keys at? You one? And the arresting officer wanted me to try to sneak something into the jail, uh, which was a four inch long handcuff key. I don't know it sounds kind of crazy, but a split second decision there, I was like, I'm taking it. Good. Go. I don't think it's ever been done before. It's just, it's just, it's, it's crazy. I was worried that if I got caught coming in with that key, that was gonna be some uh, like some lockdown time, some solitary confinement time, or a good old fashioned beat down. Anything else on you, sir? I actually stuck the key in my waistband. Uh, it should be easily uh, felt on any, any type of pat down. So now I'm really getting nervous. Anxiety's really kicking in, and then we come to the metal detector. My heart rate was probably at its highest it's been in a long time. If they find the handcuff key, I'm afraid of catching a real charge. was probably at its highest it's been in a long time. If they find the handcuff key, I'm afraid of catching a real charge. Uh, I walked through the metal detector and it, it never alerted. Face wall. 
I'm halfway home with it. Now I've got a pat down process to get through. The pat down was uh, was pretty basic, but he he wanted me uh, thoroughly and never picked it up. I could have basically come in with a lot more than just a handcuff key. I get through the pat down process, I get the detectors. Now, what do I do with it? <laughs> I go in, I take a shower, so I slide into my shoe. When I come out, they had found the key in my shoe. This right here it potentially could be used to escape. It could be used to stab somebody with. And they put me in a holding cell by myself. That's pretty obvious. I'm thinking, what have I done? And now I'm worried about what's going to happen next. Thirty days. Half the time, looking for twice the job. It's no turning back. It's no tapping out. It's no giving up. Mark, I want to be straight and I'll be honest with you, OK? It's not going to be easy. You obviously don't know me. But when I set out to do something, I'm going to do it at all costs. No, no, but stop this I know I'm going to do a good job for the sheriff. I know I'm going to find things. Horrific things can happen if the person in charge of the safety and security of the unit is part of the problem. This place is terrible. As bad as yesterday was, today is 10 times worse, and I didn't think it could get worse. I never thought that I would be embarrassed of my profession as, as much as I am in here. She should have not just been fired. She should have been arrested for what she did the other day. Arrested. Champagne is one of the guys that I was watching because he's a ticking time bomb. If I got to fight somebody, I hope it ain't this guy. Champagne, he definitely thinks he's big stuff. That's fine. But if it was a fight between me and Champagne, I would definitely put Champagne on ice. Within hours, we were talking about finding something to get high. I know I'm going to do a good job for the sheriff. I know I'm going to find things. I did think about what are they saying when I'm outside of this room. Wow. She's 60 days in. I don't, I'm going to scare the out of her. If Angel suspects me, I'm in danger. I already know it's a shank in there. They talking about jumping on her and everything. She ain't going to cut her throat out of Right now, this is beyond undercover. Mark seemed extremely nervous. I see him when he come down, so he's just like he like he's a recovering addict or something. Yeah, you nervous as crap. Yeah, it's literally all over your face. Uh, with the way things are progressing, I'm really scared things might might proceed to a physical level. What's your plan? Um, honestly, I don't need a plan. They'll bring me the clone. You see how I am in there. I'm a gorilla. I'm a beast. Damn, Tony, you got a train, don't you? Anything Tony tells Chad to do, Chad does. He a grown man. He make his own decisions. I think Tony is becoming more than just a participant. But he's actually becoming an, uh, a, a, a bad guy. Let's see how far we can take it.
Since phase one, we've made a lot of drastic changes. We're sending in four more law enforcement professionals for 30 days to test these changes and see how we can further improve our facility. We put time and energy in selecting you individually. God help me make it 30 days or this sheriff's gonna kick my ass. We learned a lot from Tony here in phase one. I'd like to bring Tony back and make him a team leader to help urge the others to be a lot more successful. I do see someone picking you out because you're sitting back with your hands crossed and you're looking like you're an easy target. Tony definitely underestimates me. I felt what he did was disrespectful. You know, I am more than capable of handling myself. If he go along within two weeks, stake on me, buddy. Stay on me. As the jail commander, I would be not just scared for the inmates, petrified for my staff. It's it's scary. Hey. Walking into 400, a couple people remember me. Everything's coming back to me. It's like get on get on your grind. As a law enforcement officer, this is about the worst feeling I could have right now. They wanted me to try to sneak something into the jail, uh, which was a four inch long handcuff key. I'm thinking, what have I done? And now I'm worried about what's gonna happen next. Show us. Yes, I do have something to show you. Um, I get I get busy real quick. So wow. we have another shank. Um when did you get it? Two days after I got here. This is no more than a um a piece of an eyeglass. I mean you pretty much they made a piece for your thumb up top, lock your thumb in, and pretty much that's all I would use to stab somebody. If I get it in your neck, it'll be deadly. You know, I mean it's 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 rough. It's 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 pretty rough. How did you get the shape? Uh, actually, uh, it was just thrown in my lap, <laughs> to be honest. My cellmate, Chad, told me, he was like, hey, uh, this, this was my old cellmate. So he bent down under my bunk and uh, reached up under there, and I was like, well, damn, I ain't even see it. But he gave it to me, so I ain't have to, you know, buy nothing or trade out nothing for it. It just literally just fell in my hand. What does it tell you about the jail, that there's a shank just lying around in your cell? Um, it tells me that there's more shanks in the jail and there's still a lot of work that needs to be done in here. And actually, we don't need this in the pod. Yeah, so I would give this to you just to get it out of the pod, um, just be one less shank. I'm sure I'll be able to get another one. I'll give it to the sheriff. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So tell me who Chad is. Chad is my cellmate. Um, he's my bookie. He washed my dishes. Is there a term, like a jail term, for what that is? Um. Well, I mean, you know, people call it different stuff. A hoe, a do boy. Do boys get protection in exchange for services. A do boy is an inmate that will do anything. Wash my clothes, go get my coffee out of the microwave, clean the cell up. You know, just doing what everything what a person tell them to do. That is common, and most white guys coming in is targeted. Do a lot of guys in jail have a do boy? Uh, with my status, yeah. That's how you handle business. You feel me? They're talking all that old shit, buddy. Are they trying to tell you to post because you're not for the interview? Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> man. I ain't playing, man. A Chad is like a, like in phase one, my old Sally Justin. Yeah. 
he, he don't really have much going on in jail. You know, he don't have a support system out there. So I pretty much gave him a job, like I did with Justin. Hey, come on, man. We got a sweet boy. Uh, he pretty much do everything I ask him. What about that corn left foot flop? And um, while I'm in here now to test the jail system, I'm gonna use that to my advantage. Help you help me, help me, I help you, no, no. Yeah, you figured it out. I'm good. Uh, it's it's been going. I don't know that I've slept yet. The unit just screams. I mean, just screams. Anything and everything is happening in the unit. There's drugs all over the unit. There's contraband being passed to and from. There's, you know, sexual relations happening. Pull your pants up, girl! I will be honest, I kind of thought maybe it was blown a little bit out of proportion with training. But this is by far the worst female unit that you guys have ever been in. So I'm, I'm ready to see what I can learn and what, what intel I can get. Can you tell me what you're doing today? I'm getting arrested and going to jail today. My name is Vanessa. I'm 32 years old. I'm a firefighter and EMT, and I have eight years experience in corrections. Work as a firefighter and EMT is crazy 24 7. It's just, it's, it's go, go, go. You never know what it is until that tone hits and you just go. I am an excellent special ops candidate because I was a CO for eight years in the county jail, and I got a good feel of the system inside and out. I'm not confrontational, but if you're bringing the confrontation to me, it's go time. He busted in his life. Why did he have a hand Shit. Wow. I have no idea. That's I I would have told them not to do that. What are they gonna do with him? Well, just keep me posted. Okay, bye. You're not trying to smuggle anything in, are you? I don't have any. <laughs> Nothing. In the state of Alabama, it's a felony to conceal or carry a handcuff key into a jail facility or correction facility. Obviously, just going to jail, my anxiety levels are up. Now they're up tenfold because they have found the key on me. I'm in segregation by myself and guys that brought me to the jail facility are, are gone. Why are you in this room instead of that room? You wanna know? Right now, we're just waiting on our lieutenant to determine exactly the disciplinary actions that we're gonna do with him. What's up, man? I told the officer that I had found the key in the nurse's station, but he, he didn't believe it. And I'm thinking, now the beatdown, 
or now solitary or you know some troubles going on. And either way, I'm gonna be here a while. You can just pull over there on the other side of the car. All right, you want to just wait here for a minute? We got a, we have a situation we have to deal with. Be right back. So we have a situation. I just got off the phone with my producer, and she said that Donovan was down in intake and he was getting strip searched, and they found a handcuff key on him in intake. We didn't know about it. We didn't ask him to do it, so. We don't know what to do next. So we have a situation. I just got off the phone with my producer, and she said that Donovan was down in intake, and they found a handcuff key on him in, in, in intake. That's, that's never happened before. And they put him in a seg cell by himself. We didn't know about it. We didn't ask him to do it, so. We don't know what to do next. We did it. You did it. I did it. You you put him in the sex cell? No, I gave him the handcuff key. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Why? Well, with all the bad things y'all found the first time, I wanted to see if we fixed some of it. Will this put any kind of suspicion on him with no, the staff? not at all. OK. None whatsoever. You look at Donovan, he has nothing on him that says police, or he looks more like a meth cooker than he is anything. Long beard, long hair, look like we got him out of the backwoods of Kentucky, and best one to do it with. So wait, but what, what's gonna happen to him? He's he gonna... goes right back in, just regular unit, like nothing ever happened. I don't know what's going on. But after sitting in there worrying to death and not being able to do anything, they take me out of SEG and they take me on a long walk up to the pod. 140, unit four. Go ahead. Hit more. Entering the pod is way different than, than it seems on TV. It's probably 10 times bigger and uh, just as much scarier. Cell 50. Go up that set of stairs. It's right there. <laughs> They open the cell door, there's two bunks and a small space on the floor. Uh, there's already two gentlemen laying in the bunks. My spot was on the floor to the right. Not, uh, not a good place to be. Uh, but to get through that, you just, uh, you go to some place that you're comfortable with, like you would do on the street working undercover. So uh, I kind of settled in a little bit and decided, okay, it's time to get to work now. Thank you. See you there. Vanessa, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? 30 days, half the time, looking for twice the job. I've noticed, and I just throw it out there, that you seem to be a little bit timid, a little bit of reserve, but we want you to get your hands dirty. A lot of people think that I, I come off too calm, but I, I protect myself. You know, when it's time to to get down and dirty, I'm ready. Life has gotten me to a point where it's, it's no turning back, it's no tapping out, it's no giving up. Mm -hmm. You ready to do this? I am ready to do this. I'm just gonna hate what's gonna happen to my hair. No, I'm just... <laughs> I haven't been in many intake areas, but it was different from what I'm used to. Vanessa, what's your last name? Knight. Knight, can you spell that for me? If I find anything on you, I'm criminally charged. You just know that. That's fine. Your officer serves me real well, sir. All right, thank you. 
When the lady approached me, she was like, oh, I got to go strip search you or whatever. And I was like, OK, no problem. But then going into the holding cells, like, none of these people have been strip searched. Two of them told me that they had drugs on them. I smoke weed every day, all day, because I have chronic pain. And I knew then that the unit was going to be hell. You better do this thing. You can't do this to me, I'm telling you. <laughs> I walked into the unit with my stuff. I knew I was here for a reason. <laughs> so it didn't really overwhelm me because I've seen this set up before. So this is Cheryl. Cheryl, I'm gonna take care of you. <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like this is real. This, I, I couldn't believe how it really was, but this is, a, this is a real situation. It's, it's pretty bad. Hey, all right, how you feeling? I'm ready to go get it started. Come and accomplish this mission and get home. My name's Mark. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I am 44 years old. I am a retired uh, warrant sergeant out of Philadelphia. I was injured on a job years back. I suffered a neck injury that forced me to retire. But I feel right now today before I go in, that I am ready to go back into law enforcement. And I'm hoping when I come out, I still feel that way. If the sheriff's looking for special op participants, I'm definitely the guy. I am very confident that I can go in here and adapt to any situation and execute whatever mission he sets forward for me. Give me that. There you Anything go. else in your pockets? That's it. I have um, some cash, but I'm going to take that in with me. Do you remember your signals? Signals? My back is killing me. Now, that's a little tricky one for me. Um, so my back and neck always hurt. If there's anything, this will be. Honestly, the, the, the hands is the better signal. Yeah. Right now, I feel a little more nervous than I thought I would, but... Good luck. Thanks, guys. I think it'll all kind of go away. Adrenaline will take over. And then, you know, I'm hoping there'll be no issues, and I'll just go in and adapt like I would anywhere else. Good morning, Mark. How are morning. you? You doing good today? I'm good. I'm ready to get in. Energized and excited. As excited as I'll ever be. Mark, I want to be straight and I want to be honest with you, OK? Yes, sir. This is going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. But we have big expectations. If you want out of this, now's the time. It makes it a whole lot easier. No, I'm good. OK. Well, I'm always the underdog, and it's not a problem. I won't let you down. All right. I look forward to that. Thank you. Yes, I believe sir. that. Thank you, Mark. You would step right back here to our cuff sure. team, and they'll All take right. it from here. Anybody that doubts that I could be successful in this, I just tell them, don't judge the book by its cover. You obviously don't know me. But when I set out to do something, I'm going to do it at all costs. And when it's over, just hope everyone looks at me differently and says, you know what? I, I shouldn't have thought that. Step right around there, left and there. 
on now. I got my mat. I'm ready to go to my pod. Holy <laughs> Like, I'm really doing this? As soon as the door opened up to Unit 4, it's hectic. People are kind of just mauling around. All eyes are on me now. A million things are running through my mind. I'm going to get bum rushed with this story. Is it going to hold up? Are they going to believe me? Is this not going to work? I have to wait at the counter to find what cell I'll go to. Before I can even turn to look at the guard at the counter, I have people coming up to me. Are you holding? What did you get in? Are you holding? Okay. And I know he means narcotics. That's what they're hoping anyone from the outside can bring in. Seems like everybody is their focus is trying to get high. <laughs> as soon as I told him no, I didn't bring any, I didn't get anything in. It was it. I was forgotten. But this must mean there's drugs literally everywhere. I'm gonna find them and report them. At this point, Chad, he's definitely a do boy. He do everything but make my bed and wash my drawers. And I, I, can, I can handle them too. I've only been in the pod for a couple days, but it's uh, very clear to me that Chad is Tony's bitch. Anything Tony tells Chad to do, Chad does. Damn, Tony, you got him trained, don't you? You got him trained, right? <laughs> Tony's familiar with the jail system. Tony knows how the insides of the jail systems work. I think it was smart for him to take somebody like Chad and put him to work for him, uh, because that put Tony in a position of kind of like a power within the pod. But uh, just taking advantage of, the, of, a, of an individual like that, I wouldn't feel okay having somebody do that for me, because being a law enforcement officer, stand up for the underdog or stand up for the low man is what my job is to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see a uh, crossword puzzle book on the seal's desk. I'm like, I want that. I know I'm not going to get it. So I said, hey, Chad, uh, I need this uh, crossword puzzle book. Oh, you want that cuz? Yeah, I want that, man. Coming in here, playing an inmate, you know, one of my main things was I wanted to test the jail in every opportunity that was presented. And I'm like, OK, here's another opportunity. Chad is definitely an expert thief. He, he know how to, he, he can get what he want. He real smooth with what he do, too. Like, he official, official. He done that a time or two. <laughs> So get it, boom. Take it in the wrong, we good, good.
Looking at the cameras. I saw. That was a plane different. In the facility, there's several cameras mounted within every pod. And while Tony has Chad go back there getting the items, I believe the other CEOs from another area are watching the cameras. Was it really worth it? It was behind I'm like, Dad, man, I know he gone. He gone. Hey. If you get caught stealing something from the seal desk, there's no outside charges. You do a week to two weeks in the hole. Do you feel bad for Chad? Yeah, I do. I feel bad for Chad because, yeah, I don't think it was fair. Uh, uh, Chad was definitely being taken advantage of. Uh, he was definitely the pawn in that game, uh, and he got caught doing what Tony asked him to do. He in the hole, yeah, because of something that I asked him to do. But I mean, this is jail. He a grown man. He make his own decisions. I lost my damn man. Did I take it a step too far? No, no. I don't feel like there's no boundary. There, there, there's no. <gasps> that shouldn't be a. <gasps> and nothing I do. So X all that out. If you feel that way, I'm sorry for you. Turn the channel. My plan with Chad getting the crossword puzzle book, uh, it failed, but better him than me, because I'm in here for a reason. When the first time I was here, the first phase, like, I was concerned about mainly just myself, you know, what I can do, what I'm going to do. But this time, I got the added responsibility of being the team leader, um, and I, I don't take that lightly. So it's important for me to check on people, make sure they're good. And if I can be any help to anyone to succeed, you know, I want to do that and more. Donovan, for him to be an older white guy, he's playing it really good. Like, you see, you can't expect Donovan to come in like me. I'm younger and I'm black, so I can fit in and, and you know, I can move better. Him, he's more sit back, reserve, sit with the older folks. I mean, just with him, his straightforwardness, you know, how he handled himself around, you know, this chaotic situation in this environment. I like the way he, you know, he how he do, how he move. I like that. But Mark, let's talk about Mark. Uh, Mark seemed extremely nervous. It's like he's sitting, I see him when he come down. So he's just, like he like he's a recovering addict or something. Yeah, you nervous as crap. Yeah, it's literally all over your face. I pushed up on him like, are you straight? And he was like, oh yeah, 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 I'm good. I was like, you need anything? I, you know, I got, you know, I can move a little something, something, get some food, whatever. He was like, oh, no, nah, I'm good, this and that. I was like, all right, cool. And I just kept going. My first interaction with Tony, um, he came and sat next to me. His first impression towards me is he's an overconfident, cocky person. And that's a bully, usually. I mean, if that's something he does, then whoever chose him as a leader made a poor decision. But I'm going to push through. 
I know I'm gonna do a good job for the sheriff. I know I'm gonna find things. And Tony or nobody else is gonna stop me. You know, my first night, I'm in the cell by myself. So at first, I'm thinking, okay, this is good. This is a chance for me to calm down, fine tune my story if I need to, and just try to get a good night's sleep. But because of my injury, I had some back and neck pain. And there was no comfortable position. Everything started hurting. So I figured, okay, this is gonna be an adjustment period. My body will adjust overnight. The next day, it'll be fine. You know, it wasn't until about, I think about five in the morning, I got a new cellmate. What's your name, bro? Huh? Mark. Mark. Tony. What's up, Tony? How are you? Doing? My new cellmate, Tony, is um, a white guy. Probably he's been dealing with drugs and arrest his whole life. I don't know a bunch of people in here. I think I know in jail. You know, jailhouse tattoos. Kind of just doesn't care anymore. How long are you here for, you think? I'm probably just going to be here a weekend. Oh, OK. I got a little $350 bond. Get pulled over by a cop and you're here. That's par for the course for someone like him. I'm so glad you're back in the It took forever in the home area. And as soon as I met Tony, I realized this is the perfect cellmate to have. I got to have this mom with his grill. Get some money from somebody's book, say a little bit. $40 or $50 worth. It seems like everything's dry in here. Do what? Seems like a lot of stuff's dry in here. Uh-uh. You say that. I'll bond out today. <laughs> I mean, within hours, we were talking about finding something to get high. I got all the money from the house I did. Pass money, put on somebody's books, and we can get some soil in here. I'm fixing to have some fun, It It popped real quick. I said, this is perfect. I am going to use Tony to help my agenda. I'm going to have my old lady put 20 bucks on for it. I'm going to have him find the drugs. I'm going to have him buy them. I'll pay him to go around and try to find something illegal, some narcotics for us, and then find out, hey, how'd you do it? Yeah, man. Give me some money on my books so I can down something. Hold the tongue high. That make us look good here. At this point, I know we're connected. I know we're good. I'm feeling great about the mission. I feel that I am going to be able to be successful and, you know, Prove Tony wrong. Shut the f up. Let's go. Unit five, security check in here. Count is complete. All appears to be ten four. It was probably about 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, shift change. Who's GP? I don't want to let lockdowns. I want more. Like, oh. steak, you know what I mean? Give me your pepper. And the CO on shift that night was a little older. I'm so afraid to make mistakes. And I could tell she was overwhelmed by just the unit, because this is a rowdy bunch. I feel like they don't have much training here. One hundred and ten percent, the inmates run this place without a doubt. That's not a question. All right, top level, get ready to eat, ready to cook some food, and hurry the up. Even the quote-unquote good guards are still not in any way in control of the unit. Absolutely not. Eventually, we started coming out to eat dinner.
and I saw Vanessa immediately. I kind of didn't know what to do. I'm like, I'm not supposed to sit by her. At first, I was kind of like, is that, you know, it took me a minute to like recognize and I didn't want to say anything. So after she started talking, I was like, okay, that is Heather. And I didn't really show like excitement or, you know, do too much. It was just kind of like, okay, she's here. We're both here now. So we should be okay. And all of a sudden, I hear some shouting, um, but there's always shouting. So at first, I wasn't really alarmed because I'm like, my ears are already worn out from all the shouting that I'm hearing. But I kind of glance up, and at the top of the stairs is Booney, who I know is a lockdown inmate. So she's not supposed to be out with everybody else when we're eating. I, I think the CO made a mistake. This is gonna go bad, and this is gonna go bad fast. My cellmate, Tony, his mission is to get high at this point. And I told him that I wanted to help. But now he said that he knows a guy in there, you know, his buddy Billy, that can get this done today. Uh, yeah, I'm How long are we going to be locked down this time? Uh, not long, long enough. And then we get them fed, and then they'll come out. Dude, that kid that phone I thought it was going to take a few weeks, but this is it. I'm feeling great about the mission. I feel that I am going to be able to be successful. See what I can do, all right? Hey. But I have a serious problem. <sighs> Pretty much since I laid on that bed Friday, my back's killing me. My head's just like a constant migraine has been since, hasn't subsided. And I figured there'd be some adjustments, but my body's just not handling it. It really sucks. The CO sprayed Booney, and I was just like, That was some fuck ass shit. And you don't just spray somebody for being locked and blind. You spray her for no reason. She really wasn't doing anything at that point. Yeah, she wasn't supposed to be out, but she wasn't a threat to that point. As a jail commander and with my experience in corrections, the second the, the CO sprayed Booney, your first instinct is to get control of the area. So as that was going on, almost instinctually, I went to yell lockdown. What was frightening is nobody was doing that. Immediately, I knew this was bad purely because of the numbers and the lack of control that the CEOs have in there. I knew this was going to be bad.
Even as I'm still processing what's happening, the unit goes tilt. I didn't know if these inmates would turn on her and attack her. She's outnumbered 100 to 1 here. You know, riot mentality. And the exchange between the CEO and Booney is still happening. I see Mark coming out in the pod. And I, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's not good. I'm concerned about this dude. There you go. Oh, beat that oh, wow, wow. Yeah, this place is ran by the inmates. Like, you can't put it any other way. The inmates have no consequence for their action. So their first response for many of them is a violent and aggressive response. One of the trustees came up to me. She kind of looks almost like a sorority girl. Who do you live with? I was telling her my cover story. Everything was going fine. Betsy came to the cell door window. Are you 60 Betsy? Chad a do boy? Yeah, I would say he's a do boy. Uh, he pretty much do everything I ask him. So I said, hey, Chad, I need this crossword puzzle book. He get it on. Chad was definitely being taken advantage of. Hey, I saw. This jail, he a grown man. He make his own decisions. I don't feel like there's no boundary. That shouldn't be a, <gasps> and nothing I do. Why did he have a handcuff? We didn't know about it. We didn't ask him to do it. I gave him the handcuff key. Why? Well, with all the bad things y'all found the first time, I wanted to see if we fixed some of it. After sitting in there about an hour worrying, not being able to do anything, they take me on a long walk up to the pod. This is a rowdy bunch. Let's hurry the up! 110% the inmates run this place. Up the top stairs is Booney. This is going to go bad, and this is going to go bad fast. I'm feeling great about the mission. I feel that I am going to be able to be successful. <sighs> about pretty much since I laid on that bed Friday, my back's killing me. I have a serious problem. Mark coming out in the pod, and, and I, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's not good. I'm concerned about this dude. I hope he don't end up quitting.
already chaos is just now gone up about 15 levels. It take an awful long time for backup to get there and help that seal. Booney could have done severe damage to her if she got a hold of her. She didn't deserve to be sprayed. The CO probably could have called a supervisor and they caught they could have handled it without causing a commotion. And I could tell she was overwhelmed by just the unit because this is a rowdy bunch. And I think <laughs> the only training that a lot of these women have are just yelling to the top of their lungs. That's about it. You know, it's just very eye-opening to see how south the situation is going to go so quickly because of the lack of control. Come on! I'm not ready to turn up here. Bye, no. It's shocking how unsafe it is, how out of control it is. It's scary. Why are you spraying me? I'm glad Sheriff Horton's wanting to make the changes. The changes need to be done. A absolutely, there's no doubt the changes need to be done. Why are you spraying me? Yeah, you are lying. You got to lie in the day, huh? Yeah, no urgency. That was horrible. From start to finish. It was a major failure, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen again. He make a lot of changes. You know, he's on the right track, 100%. With that being said, I'm gonna keep collecting shanks. I'm gonna keep testing the COs every step of the way. So now, I'm trying to get my hands on some drugs. No. So O'Shea uh, came to my cell. Uh, the first phase, I brought a shank from him. So I'm like, okay, here's another opportunity. What's some good come through for some I was selling crack for a while. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. But you're not in Maybe. I mean, can I get for a suit? Get your boy now. Get your boy, you gotta show love now. As I give you a suit, it was like a suit for five pills. I sold five levels for that All right, man, a honey bun, dog. Hey, look. How many can I get for this? I give all five of them. All right, come on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's just too, it's too easy. I'm having fun, to be honest. 
I give him the honey bun, he give me the pills. Yes, sir, appreciate you. It's just crazy that I could just easily get some pills like that. And I want to show the sheriff on the second phase how easy it is to get cloned, too. Do you have a plan? What's your plan? Um, honestly, I don't need a plan. They'll bring me the clone. <laughs> I guess when I came in, I was prepared for everything. The, uh, dealing with the people, my story. One of the few things I thought I'd be okay with was my health. And pretty much since I laid on that bed Friday, my neck, my head's been spinning, my back's killing me. I literally feel like I was just in my car accident all over. I see friggin' like light dots when I'm looking sit in our cell for 18 hours a day, and my body's just not handling it. It really sucks. If you're having to sit in your cell 18 hours a day, that is, that is a lot. But that sounds psychological. How much of this is psychological versus physical? Today, right now, I think very, very little. I haven't felt this head pain like this. I've never felt this, even when I had the concussion. It sucked, but it wasn't as severe as it is now. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your pain level? My head's like a 15. You think you need to go to a hospital? Yeah, I didn't want to say that here. I mean, that's, that's severe. That's, that's how bad my head's hurting right now. My head and the spinning, I'm not used to this. Do you want to leave? Wow. Yes. I gotta 100%. go. 100%. How does it feel saying that? Awful. I feel like a piece of So if you didn't have the pain, you would stay? Yeah, if I, had not, if I didn't have this injury, yes, I would stay. Why? I knew I could do it. And I know I could. I just physically can't. I mean, it sounds like the excuse, I'm sure people think it is, but the, the last thing I thought would get in my way again in my life was my health. Should we be prepared to take you to the hospital? I'll let you know. Let's take a little bit. a trade with O'Shea for five pills, and now I want to show the sheriff again on the second phase how easy it is to get cloned now. Do you have a plan? What's your plan? Um, honestly, I don't need a plan. People come to me, they know I got the story, they know I got the money. I mean, I, I don't even need to put it out there and advertise like I'm looking for it, and they'll bring me the clone. There you go. Yo. <clears throat> yeah, what you got? How much? Yeah, yeah. Yo. Yo. How you know if it's real? Oh, you want to? <laughs> the drugs are rampant in there. So I figure, you know, I'll buy as much as I can. Ultimately, I know that if I buy all the drugs, by the time everybody else ran out of drugs, I know I'm going to have them all. Nice. Like, I had one guy say, hey, you don't need smoke drugs. I said, no, I don't smoke drugs, but I'm a hustler. Like, I, I, I that's what I do. I'm a, I'm a hustler. I make things happen. I can't even with it. Hey, I ain't for that. Give me five. Five. Let me see. 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 Let me see.
Prescription pills. I got clone, also known as K2. Was that surprise? <laughs> uh at this point, no, because people, you know, they 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 offer stuff like that to me. So it's like if I can report back to the sheriff and let them know it's way better than it was. However, it's still a lot of work that needs to be done in here. reason for women to just be out when you got men inside the unit. <laughs> the women should be locked down due to safety and security. Any sexual favors that could happen, Women could be raped, and it's just, nobody would even know what's going on because the COs are so occupied with roaming around the unit. loud up until about 2, 3 in the morning. I could tell there was probably going to be a fight. The inmates have no consequence for their action. So their first response for many of them is a violent and aggressive response. Uh, they don't hide it. It's not a shock. They're yelling, screaming constantly all day long who they're mad at and who they're going to fight. And if I'm hearing it, I, I know the COs are hearing it. was kind of like confused. Like you didn't really do anything for this situation. She was just so confused. Yeah. 
they gave every indication that they were going to fight, and that is what they did. It got pretty, pretty intense. This place is ran by the inmates. Like, you can't put it any other way. There's no control over the union. I dropped the ball on that fight. They could have prevented the fight. They could have prevented the whole situation. Watching this happen, I, you know, I immediately click into the CO role myself into a jail commander. Um, I'm ashamed. I'm embarrassed. Um, these are two females, full blown fighting for the better of five minutes, while correctional professionals stood by and could not take control of the situation at all. This is the second major fight that I've seen since I've been here. And both times, the first reaction was quick to the pepper spray. Uh, but neither time did it have any effect. Just sitting there and watching that happen was very difficult. But it motivated me even more, because it just showed how much help Sheriff Horton needs to get this place under control. Being a special ops participant with eight years' experience in corrections, I didn't think any facility could have as many problems as this place. Like, I've never, this is unreal. I did not like how they responded to the code. It was pretty slow. It's just so out of control in here. People could actually be dying behind these doors. There's so much going on in here that's just not safe. I'm gonna leave your home. This is crazy. Do you think that this place would get to you in the way it does? It's like, I'm just trying to make it. I didn't expect it would be this bad but it's way worse than I ever could imagine anything could be. that is gonna prejudge me. You don't know what I went through physically. I don't think Mark can handle the stress of being inside a jail facility. That same leader, I could have done a little better as far as coaching him and, you know, helping him along. But he ain't built for this. He ain't built for it. At the end of the night, God's the one that judges me. 
He's running. I mean, he's running across the street. For Mark to drop out is very disappointing. I think Mark was just scared, and he was using his back pain as an excuse to leave. <clears throat> How are you feeling? Actually worse. I wasn't when we had to cross the street. I wasn't running. It hurts. Oh, yeah, it hurts. Take me to the hospital. No, no, not yet. My body is done, and there's just that's it. There's nothing I can do about it. I was shocked that he left as early as he did. We didn't expect any of the special ops participants to drop out, so it's very scary because we do not want to have a repeat of phase one. I'm feeling kind of down because I feel like, okay, Mark, I lost Mark. I'm thinking like, yo, we just lost one. We ain't about to lose nobody else. So now I'm thinking I need to reach out to the girls. I need to reach out to them and see how they're holding up. And that's when I start actually seeing guys pass letters back and forth, back and forth through a little crack in the door. They might as well not be a door there because there's letters that get sent through that door constantly. We're next door to Unit 4, and there's a door that is the direct link between the two units. I have a girlfriend on the other side. Baby, I love you. The girls talk to the man, pass their love letters. They call me the mailman. I collect up letters from people that's got boyfriends, you know, over here, and I'll pass them to the door for them. It's just kind of a game, you know? You get it through, so score, and then you get a letter back, and it's even a bigger success. <laughs> I don't do it, because I could give two less about any man in this facility. None of them can offer me anything. You locked up just like me. What can you do for me? Absolutely nothing. So I see the guys running back and forth to the mail door all day. It's extremely dangerous. The females are right there. A lot of these guys know a lot of these females from the street. They're co-defense. They got locked up together. They're just writing notes saying, hey, we're going to tell the judge, I'm going to take the drug charge. You take the pistol charge. It shouldn't be like that. So I'm like, oh, snap. With this mail system, I can send a note to check on the women. And this is the perfect opportunity to test the note system. So I wrote a letter to Vanessa. During training, in my opinion, Vanessa was a little more reserved. She wasn't as talkative as Heather. I felt like Vanessa would have a harder time than Heather. I've lived in there, so I know this is not easy at all. jeopardize her cover was what was in the notes. I had to present it in, in such a way where they wouldn't, they would think we knew each other from the street.
when she said it's a Tony, and I was like, it kind of shocked me a little bit because I was like, is he supposed to do that? I mean, I didn't know how to really react to it, so I was just like, oh, okay, I just took it. I opened the note, and first he, he did write in there some stuff to make me realize it was him, a coded message about training describing our first meeting, what we all wore. And I was like, oh, okay, this really is him, because nobody else would know this. He was putting, like, little messages in there saying, hey, you got this, you know. Him encouraging me just to keep going. It meant a lot, because just getting a note from him just saying, like, hey, we're going to get through this. I was like, okay. So I was ready to go. <laughs> Mentally, I was done. Tony's note made me want to stay and say, okay, well, I can do this. I can figure out something to do. So I did decide to write him back just so he knew that I actually did get the note. And for me as a participant, it's a great opportunity to see that anything can be passed through that door if it can fit. The way that they house people is just stupid. The men should not be on the same level as the women. Hey, big boy, I love you. I miss you, I love you. I love you, baby. That you could actually talk to the men, like hear their voice. You could talk to them and tell them what you needed. Just having that much close contact with the men, it's a bad situation, like for the jail and for the sheriff. Hey, you don't wear that outfit. Oh, yeah. Is that all mail? No. There are hundreds of notes passed to the door every day. Anything that'll fit under that door, they can pass it. Yes, I love you. Obviously, they're passing drugs through there as well. So the morning after the big fight, one of the trustees came up to me. She kind of looks like a sorority girl. Who do you live with? I was telling her my cover story. Everything was going fine. In Utah. I wasn't sure, you know, if Betsy was going to believe me, but she wasn't questioning anything. She kind of went away pretty quickly. I was like, oh, that was kind of easy. That wasn't too bad. Hey. When a new person walks in, you immediately can tell if they're from here or how, if they've done time here before, how familiar they are with the way things work. Anytime something unexpected like that happens, I'm on edge. So I was really nervous. You know what I'm talking about, love? She told me about it. Me? Are you are you kidding me? No. <laughs>
you know, I look up to Tony. He's being a, a good team leader, and I got a lot of respect for him. Hey, what's up with the phone, man? I don't want to let Tony down, so I'm trying to come up with a way to test the jail system. So I thought it would be a little different to try to get some actual tobacco, chewing tobacco. Getting anything into a jail facility is testing the system. So I'm determined to get uh, some type of chew into the jail. I started that process, uh, talking to a lot of different guys and trying to get something going. I'm coming up with nothing. like harder than it would be to get dope in. Finally, I talked to this guy, Andre. People know me, and sometimes some people need help to get something. It's just like the streets. We talked a little bit, and he's like, I'll find it for you. And I'm like, how soon can this happen? He said, who knows? So I'm like, that's not really an answer. I see Donovan, and he look like he's having a hard time. I hope he get his bearings together and succeed at what he's doing. When Betsy came to the window and said, you're 60 days in, I'm on to you. Honestly, I was like, okay, I gotta step it up. Gotta be more aggressive. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, if she did think I was part of the program, that she wasn't spreading it. just so nervous about just having her believe me because I knew that this was kind of a make or break point that she believes me now or she's not going to. Betsy mentioned that the reason she was in Alabama was because of her girlfriend. Uh, so I knew at that time that she was gay. How old are y'all? How are you? I don't look I realized that I could use my sexuality to help get her on my side and to reduce suspicions that I'm part of the show. I am a lesbian, I am single, so if I could use Betsy to gain some information for the sheriff, then I have no problem with that. I was out for my free time. Then another inmate comes up to me, and he's like, you got mail, boom. <laughs> and I'm just like, what, it worked, yes, yes, yes. So when I realized the note was from Vanessa, I was excited about it. But this mail system is so serious, every time a note is passed, you know, that's, that, that's, that, that, that's a chance something bad can happen. Passing drugs, you can crush up pills, slide pills through there. I mean, it's all bad. 
<laughs> they gonna be so pissed with me when the sheriff blocked that little hole off. <laughs> they are gonna be livid. I'm developing a connection with Betsy. I just know having her on my side is a good thing. Heather's one of the rare ones. We have a lot in common, and she was very polite and very humble, just kind of low key. And I feel like I'm kind of like that too. I just, you know, I can relate to that. I can empathize with her and just, you know, just kind of try to make it a little better for her, whatever I can do to help. Betsy is sexually attracted to you. Uh, yeah. It's a warm, yeah, for real. It's warm in our room, so. And for some reason, you laid just in the back of my bunkies, but yeah, you put mine in there, right? Thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Do you feel like you have Betsy in the palm of your hand? You know, I, I do feel like she trusts me, so that in and of itself just kind of lets me have a, a little bit more control over what's going on. Do you want me to Because of how friendly she is and how great she is to me, there's the possibility that she's sexually attracted to me. That's it so nice. She just brought me stuff. It's not something that I reciprocate, and that concerns me. If it comes to the point of, you know, do or die, I don't want to blow my cover. I don't want to have her be suspicious of me again. Amazing. Are you worried if you can't reciprocate? Yes. Just telling Tasha, I'm like, I love Betsy, thank you. <laughs> if Betsy has feelings that I can't reciprocate, she could very well and probably will turn on me. I am playing the dangerous game. Champagne, he definitely thinks he's big stuff. I don't trust Champagne at all. Champagne is a ticking time bomb. If I gotta fight somebody, I hope it ain't this guy. I uh, started getting close with Betsy. Things will probably progress. They took me into a cell with two people, Angel and Angelina. I feel like stabbing somebody tonight, baby, because I just got a strike, and I will kill the excuse about it. If Angel suspects me, I'm in danger. I think Mark could handle the stress of being inside a jail facility. I do feel that's the same leader. I could have done a little better as far as coaching them and, you know, helping them along. But he ain't built for this. He ain't built for this. You know, it's just very eye opening to see how south situations can go so quickly because of the lack of control. It was a major failure, and I'm pretty sure it's going to happen again. Guys pass letters back and forth, back and forth, through the door. So I'm like, oh, snap. With this mail system, I can send a note to check on the women. Oh, I'm trying to find you. 
I am a lesbian, I am single. So if I could use Betsy to get information, I have no problem with that. But if Betsy has feelings that I can't reciprocate, she could very well and probably will turn on me. I'm playing the dangerous game. Within the first few days of me being here, I uh, started getting close with Betsy. Betsy has shared with me why she's in here. It stems from a parole violation due to some possession charges from Tennessee. And she has let me know that she is a recovering drug addict. She knows a lot of stuff. She knows about the inner workings, who's doing what, who's dealing what, where they're getting it from. So having her on my side and having a close connection with her, I know I'm going to be able to ascertain a lot more information than if I didn't. Learning from Betsy has been very, very beneficial. But I would say I think that Betsy might be, well, is developing feelings for me, yes. How does that feel? So it's, I mean, it's, it's very easy to be flattered and to to fall into the the flirting. I mean, because we do, we we absolutely flirt with one another. And yeah, I, I am human, and Betsy's a great person. But I do feel bad because of the fact that I am under here and her you know, false pretenses and, and the things I've told her are not accurate. You know, as time goes by and we're getting closer, I'm more and more worried that something's gonna happen where, you know, I am gonna have to do something that might hurt her. Getting Tony's note was a game changer simply because it made me want to stay to get to work. If I didn't get Tony's note, I would have, this would have been over with. Now it's like game on. I'm trying to spend time just out in the open so I can see everything so I can be a little more active and I can get more information on the drugs. They sat right there in church and rolled up some clone. But no CO is going up there to actually look and check. That's a problem. And 
something needs to be done here. Ain't nobody pushing up on me. Nobody. Would you? Don't do it. Hey, get, come here, man. Check this out. I'm going to show you how we live. What you want, man? You know I got to keep it tight. Last phase, it took me about a week to be a pod boss. This time, two or three days. Now, I'm the alpha male in here. It's gonna be rare that an individual is gonna fight me one-on-one. -on -one. But eventually I'm gonna run into someone who, you know, who's gonna challenge me, and that's, I mean, that's just what it is. first couple weeks here as an undercover officer, I've been meeting people that I've never met and talking to them and being uh, competent enough to let the inmates feel like that I fit in, I was, I was supposed to be here. So a guy comes up to me and he's, uh, he's a large black male, about 6'5". He's all tatted up. Uh, he knows the talk, he walks the walk. His name's Champagne. And I thought this guy's gonna be trouble. They call me Champagne James, because I'm fine, tall, drink of wine. See, the thing is, who's going to stop all of us right now? You know what I mean? Go beat his ass, hold him hostage, and get out of jail. This here jail is some daycare type. They don't take it seriously. Let's see, that's why I say goofy. Because if I say goofy, play around, and then they'll underestimate the real person. I'll knock your ass off. You really, really f with me heavy. I'm gonna do nothing but reconnaissance on you, and I'm gonna track you down, and I'm gonna f hurt you. Champagne is, is a large guy, and he's 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 built. Uh, he would be trouble to anybody in our pod uh, who wanted to go up against him physically, for sure. Champagne, I size him up, he sized me up. He the big dog in the pile, right? Until he met me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you got? I'm coming, I'm coming. What you got? Everything. So uh, just like in phase one, I sell my store to other inmates because it means money and power. I got everything you need, I got it. And I said, uh, look, bro, look, I give you whatever now, don't play with me. Uh, a, bag of, a bag of brains and a, uh, oh, where are you at? What's up? Right next to right, uh, 49. See, in my pod, I'm running stuff. And if Champagne owe me something, I can use that to my advantage. Uh, chill, man. Uh, a patient, I guess a bun. All right, all right. What's the line right now? I ain't with the so uh, I gave him like four or five items. I said, here, boom. All right, you owe me, so and now I got you. You're in my pocket. Commissary come only on Tuesday. So by Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm the only one holding store. I'm in control. So pretty much I charge extra for everything. Four suits. Oh, six. I can't do that. I got, I got the tags. You know, I'm here to buy drugs, shanks, all types of contraband that I gave the sheriff my word that I was going to do. So I'm just like, I'm trying to make money real quick. Real, I'm not gonna sit and you know, say like, do like the locals do. That's why they still broke. I, mean, I gotta tax them and run it up.
Appreciate hey, look, say, Sean, I say, so I, done, I gave you what? Two cookies? Yeah. A, a bun? Uh -huh. And something else. I owe you for it. Yeah, how many hours did I give you? Two. Nah, I was I got it roll down. Nah, I, I gave you a honey bun, some cookies, and oh, you just pushed back up with my scale, your honey bun. I gave Champagne like four items, and if he don't pay me back, you know, I could appear weak. I can't I can't have a reputation like that in jail. I just gave you ice water like two days, like yesterday or two days ago. Hold on, who let ice water? You got that from you. me? Yeah, I'm gonna say three. And I wanna say I gave you, I wanna say I gave you two, uh, two, bro, like, uh, I'm good. And uh, he was like, oh, nah, bro, I ain't gonna play with you. I ain't gonna play with you. I ain't gonna play with you. I said, all right. I said, as long as you know. I said, when it comes time to pay up, you need to pay up, bro, because for real, for real. All of a sudden, they waved me to come over, and I'm not sure what was going on. And that's when they said, hey, y'all are moving this cell that's going to be closed. I was confused, but I just went with it. I mean, there's no arguing about moving the cell, so OK. Open 540, it happened to be Angel Angelie. One of the girls I saw smoking clone or whatever in the day room. This is doing hard time. I done been to prison before. This ain't. Everybody knows that when it comes to dealing with Angel, I pick your ass up and slam the at your ass. She just did a year, and she got out for 30 days. Then they picked her up again because somebody snitched on her. <laughs> Angel is a very important person in the whole jail, and I love Angel. You can never break me. You get shanked and everything else, and nobody never know until God doing a check and find you on the ground. Believe me, I love it. Like I tell everybody, I ain't gonna be locked up forever. Your time is coming, whether it's in the prison or when we get back to the street. You can't hide. Being a cellmate with Angel and Angelique, I could get more information on the drugs. Did you get my cigarette? They know each other. They're related. They don't know me. So how many more days you got? This is my last four weeks. This your last week? And they got to come get you before this week up? No, I'm talking about, like, I'm just saying it's my last four week. Next week, probably about a week or something. Tuesday weeks. But if I ain't mistaken, they have to say they coming in order for them to hold you 30 days. So far, they, they are accepting me. I think I'm playing it out pretty well. Listen to us. <laughs> I swear to God, that's what I said when they put in that money back in They carry the mattress for and stuff. When they start doing that. No, 
know I gave that bitch. I know I gave that bitch a bun. If I give someone some commissary and they don't pay me back, you know, I could appear weak. Yeah, I did. Nah, you got up. I thought you gave some bun. Yeah, I gave him a bun before I gave him a soup and a bun. So I have to, you know, enforce some type of discipline. I gotta do something to you, put on this show for everybody else who's looking. Hey, if y'all got stuff, get ready, get ready. So store day come, right? So that means it's time to pay up. I see Champagne got his little bag. He got his items in there. Right? People looking, so I gotta act some type of way to make sure my name stay silent. So I'm saying, what we do right here, the game. So I'm saying, I'm saying, bro, this is real, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm over here handling some business, so you can get it. You call me, 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 Champagne, he definitely think he's big stuff. That's fine. But if it was a fight between me and Champagne, I would definitely put Champagne on ice. Me and Champagne went in the cell. And I just back up, like, how we gonna play it, bro? I need me. Yo, bro, it ain't that, bro. Me some food, bro. He was trying to pay me with other people's debt. But you don't borrow nothing from me and think you're gonna pay me back off of what people owe you. So a uh, owe you and he ain't trying to pay you back. Right? You know what I'm saying? When he came and asked me for it, I gave it straight to him. I ain't tell him I need to run around and run hoops and call different people. No, you man, if you hungry, I'm gonna feed you. So you ain't about to pay me out of somebody's pocket. I ain't with the finesse and the games. You gonna pay Tony first. How did this end with this deal? I got paid. <laughs> the man paid me, he paid his desk. Man, you owe another I'm owe another I'm getting me first. Me checking him, put him in his place in front of everybody, they like, oh man, Tony, yo, he checked champagne, I know what he'll do to me. It's like that, that image. You know, if he'll step up to the biggest man in the, in the pod, I know he gonna step to me. I ain't, ain't, no, ain't, no, ain't no disrespect in tinker, I put it like that. Man, that's, you said some reason, but I, I can't get my, I gotta get my I'm a man about mine. I said, if you feel I disrespect you, bro, listen here. Next time, just don't play with me, bro. He made a wise decision not to challenge me. But that's just this time. Moving forward, we'll see what happens. My job in here is to, is to help the sheriff administration figure out how stuff gets in the jail system. The biggest test of the system, in my opinion, is getting what you want in jail. Obviously, I don't want to get illegal drugs, narcotics into the jail, but I thought uh, since I chew, I was going to try to test the guards to get some tobacco in. So I'm striking out. Hey, Waters 
comes to him, he says, somebody had came through intake with some tobacco, about a half can of chew. No matter what it took to make that deal, I was gonna come up with it. A few e-stick trades and uh, some chips and we get a, a, about a half can of chew. When I seen Donovan with the chew, I was completely impressed. And he actually gave me some chew. Be the best, it's better than nothing. Like 100%, I was like, okay, yeah, so he, he with it, he with it. He's definitely making progress. So I've been spending a lot of time with Betsy. Hey, let's go watch. I'm so happy for you. I love this. We talk about tons of stuff, lots of stuff. Um, really stuff that you talk about when you're developing a relationship with somebody. I will, will say I, I care about Betsy immensely. I mean, you can just tell she's a good person. You'll, you'll talk to people, whether it's here in jail or just in life, that you just don't get a good feeling about them. And you get a great feeling when you talk to Betsy. You know, take away the, the Etowah County Jail and the inmate and jail commander and, you know, uh, a relationship at that level where you're sharing those types of things, things will probably progress. I did not think things would get to this point. I wasn't ready for it. Uh, you know, I pushed her away, and immediately I could tell I hurt her feelings. I was all sorts of distraught. Coming into this, I was completely, you know, resigned to the fact that I was going to use my sexuality to maybe get close to people and, you know, to maintain my cover, to be believable, to get intel. 
but I will not cross any physical lines. That's going too far. Um, however, I, you know, I, I just hurt somebody that I don't want to hurt. And then there was also, I was like, oh, what if her suspicions would come back, that maybe I am 60 days in, and she would start telling people again, and all the work I had done to get people to believe my cover story would be for naught. Blind in bed. I hear some commotion going on outside. All her name, screaming, banging. Man, like a little bitch. I feel like the pod's very disorganized. Like the jail is not in control of the jail. It's pretty much uh, the inmates calling out the shots. I'm not, you ain't came out of this since you've been here, boy. I ain't seen you out here, bitch. This guy named Cantrell started accusing Houston of touching his wife on the street before they even got locked up. I've been running this for all the night, bitch. I ain't seen you. Me and my girlfriend at the time, we were staying in an abandoned house right down the road from the jail here. And uh, he was touching on her and stuff while she was asleep. For a fact, I know, I caught him. Open the door, what you mean? They touched your wife. Got me The COs, they're oblivious. They just gonna do the bare minimum and, you know, keep moving. Uh, Houston came out, got his ponytail up and stuff. At that point, uh, the control back off. But then he go to uh, Champagne sale and talking to him. You want me back talk? No. Yeah? No. I don't want to jump back to What you want? Cantrell asked Champagne to do his dirty work for him and to beat up Houston. What's the money you want? What's the money you want? Do this. The white dude. I'm going out right now. I'll make that money. I'm going out right now. Get easy. I want you to hit that whole box turn. You get done, get it, eat too, bitch, with the dough. Pour it all right there. Cash money. Pour it all right there. Pour it right there, cash money. So he's like $40. Yeah, I'm, I'm game. If you need a crash dummy to do your dirty work, you can just give him $40 and he'll do your dirty work. Smashes this guy a couple times in the face. I mean, draws back, full fist, bulwark, you know, punch him. And the guy got, you know, a heck of a knot on his face, a black eye. I consider Champagne to be a bully, a major bully, if you ask me. He pick on, like, people who he know he can beat. If there was a fight between you and Champagne, who would win?
If we fight five times, I'll win four, guarantee. He might win in one. Champagne assaulted an inmate and nothing happened to him. He wasn't taken out of the pod, wasn't locked down, uh, no disciplinary action was taken. Lally was talked about in front of the CO and uh, nothing was done. Champagne is trouble. Suicide watch. And he needs to be dealt with immediately. Put names in it no more. They put confidential informant numbers. Uh, this 1966. Yeah, yeah, that's her number. Supposedly, that's the paper number. And, and she had been selling to an undercover police officer that she didn't know was police. Um, Being in that cell, they talk about a lot. I mean, of course, a lot of people here talk about their personal lives, but they're talking about actual business that they're doing on the streets, which is criminal business. I said, this is what you learn when you hit the game. This is the that you have to risk. I'm a real live drug dealer, and I will kill you, excuse me, if I find out who you are. They obviously feel comfortable enough to talk about whatever they talk about in front of me, but now I'm to the point where if they find out that I'm working on the cover, I'm in danger. Shower's? Yeah. All right, she gone. I don't mind muscles. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I wanted to get out of here before 9 o'clock. It you? is 7.44 and I still have lockdowns to shower. Wow. Every time she here, keep, huh? I'm trying to, like, what they mean? You know, I'm trying to remember if your accent is thick enough to be from somewhere else, though. She shouldn't sound like she found out. So she's leaving that thing. Just in case I got a thing. Yeah, I can die here. I don't think that's why when she was talking, I said, I don't give a I don't care. I'm a convict. This lady lied to me. She's 60 days in. I don't want to smoke on the They talking about jumping on her and everything, shaking her, cutting her throat, all kind of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm Champagne assaulted an inmate, and nothing happened to him. They think it's a game. They think it's a game in here. Champagne was just, you know, acting crazy. And there's no consequence for him. It's hard to just sit and watch. They all playing with y'all bitches? They all playing? So there was a boat, which is the, the bed that you lay in on the floor. Uh, it was over actually in front of my door. It's cold outside, bro. We got 
and he's just out of my view, but I hear him holler something. I'm still trying to look out the corner of my cell door. Champagne is like acting a fool. And the CO, you know, randomly enforce some type of discipline. You're not going to warm, start so you can be locked down before. I'll let you know the cell here in a few minutes. He's working. Other people fight, have drugs, and everything else. I made the unit laugh a little bit. And then nothing happened, nobody got hurt. And had you have got hurt. Well, Champagne punches the guy in the face a few times. Zero happens to him. He, 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 he's trying to be a comic and rides a boat down the steps and gets two days locked down. So, it sense? no, it don't make sense. Guess what? Camera come here, bro. What's up? It's me, Mr. Scott. Yo, ah, all that, bro. Hold on the game, bro. When you're dealing with inmates, you have to be consistent. You can't come in today and be a pushover and let everybody put, run over you. Then the next day, you come in with an iron fist. You can't be that way. We'll get the rest of your stuff and bring it to you. That sends a bad message to, to me as an inmate and to my, the other inmates. Now, the inmates are aware of the officer's negligence, and that's a chance something bad can happen. This is where it gets real. I'm gonna need your whole name so I can find you on Facebook when I get out of here. I don't do Facebook. What are you doing? How's somebody gonna find you? What you said, us when you leave us? Well, no, I don't do Facebook because he'll trip, so. <laughs> he, I mean, he just be watching me, so. Oh! Yeah. You got crazy. You don't stop. So I just, just to say, you know, just to keep my own food, I just let him know. I'm trying to just keep my personal business outside of what they're talking about. But my man accused him if you want to be. No, what? what? No. <laughs> I don't want people to die. Oh, yeah, well, we got plenty of people. I mean, like, we, got, we got people that are. Well, no, no. I don't want nobody to die. We got people that are handling it. No. <laughs> no. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> they would never see me. We did joke, we did talk, but it was just like the joking and talking was me deflecting a lot. So we just ain't even gonna never see you no more. <laughs> I ain't coming back to Alabama. But that don't mean we don't, we, we travel. travel. You want to come to Arkansas, but. Why did you go to Alabama? We, we coming specifically to see you. <laughs> the hell you talking about? We coming specifically to oh, see you. Alabama. When they said they was going to come to Arkansas and find me, in my mind, I was just thinking, like, Hopefully after I'm gone and you know they forget me, like just completely forget me. I do not want them to come to Arkansas. I do not want them to find me. If Angel suspects me, I'm in danger, and I already know it's a shank in there. This is very serious. So when Vanessa came to my cell, I immediately got very nervous. I knew she had just moved into Angel's cell. Really hadn't talked to her since that move had happened. I didn't know what was going on, uh, but I just knew that I wanted to make sure she was okay. 
They're talking about the business that they're doing on the streets. I don't want to know about that stuff because later on, I don't want to be at home and somebody's knocking on my door about this stuff. You feel your life's at risk? Yeah. One of our protective custody inmates in there, Ashley Caswell, she was yelling and screaming at Ms. Richardson. Horrific things can happen if the person in charge of the safety and security of the unit is part of the problem. Things were going to get a lot worse. It's my last week. I want to keep pushing the COs. I got Jamaica in my crosshairs right now. I think Tony pushed Jamaica to his breaking point. me, I'm in danger. This is very serious. Champagne is just, you know, acting crazy. And there's no consequences for him. The COs here, they can definitely use the improvement. I got to turn it up a notch. I did not think things would get to this point. What if her suspicions would come back, that maybe I am 60 days in, and she would start telling people again, and all the work I had done to get people to believe my cover story would be for naught. kissing incident happened with Betsy. It's been kind of weird, you know, not knowing where Betsy's head was at or, or what she'd be thinking about me. I was concerned what might transpire. I wasn't sure, you know, if Betsy was going to be mad, if she you know, after thinking about things, she was gonna think I'm part of the show again and she was gonna go around telling people. She has a very good pulse in the whole unit. The whole unit loves her. She, she could turn the whole unit against me in a heartbeat if she wanted to. How does that make you feel? That's, that's, that's nerve wracking. So Betsy was called out uh, to get released. Good for her, but sad. <laughs> Nonetheless. Let's you all stay in jail, you better come out. When I realized that Betsy was being called to go roll up, you know, a, a few different emotions went through me. I was excited for her, uh, first and foremost, because I know this is what she wanted, and this will better her life. But at the same time, getting close with Betsy was my greatest opportunity to get the type of information that I, I was wanting in the jail. So with Betsy leaving, I'm going to be losing a major player in my investigation. I felt like I was gonna to have to start at ground zero and I knew I had to step it up. 
because I don't have a lot of time left. It's my last week. Uh, I want to keep pushing the COs. To really, like, weed out bad officers, corrupt officers. So what I do, just little little stuff that pisses off COs. I know it pisses me off. At my facility, you purposely wait until he say lockdown, then go jump in the shower, or, or you go hurry up and go jump on the toilet like you're using the uh, restroom. Who else is in here with you? go hide anywhere you can hide it. <laughs> I mean, I'll hide behind his desk if I could. Yeah, I wanted to challenge them. If they say go left, I'm going right, purposely to see how they're going to react. I didn't think I'd be playing hide and seek in jail. <laughs> <laughs> I need to use the bathroom real quick. I need to get you for a steak. <laughs> nah, this is hard. You know, every chance I get to put them in an uncomfortable position that training can't train you for, I'm going to do that. This one particular guy, CO Jamichael, as an inmate, like he's he's my freaking worst enemy. I come to jail every day. You know, I'm not scared of nobody, but at the end of the day, I do want to go home the same way I came, but that's, that's everybody's objective. So you got to respect that. Always looking at the one to see what's going on. And um, multiple times, Jermichael sleep. I mean, he, he snores, he snores, he snores, and he snores and everything. Jermichael, I'm coming for you, bruh. <laughs> Since being in here, I realized that uh, the jail is full of, of, of gangs and gang members, gang members from the Bloods from the Crips, uh, from the Hispanic gangs, the MS-13, and from the uh, uh, Aryan Brotherhood. And I'm a police officer. One of the worst places for a police officer to be is in jail. A whole bunch of snitches and bitch-ass people in the unit right now. I don't give a you the police. You come and beat your ass up. I'm gang-affiliated, I have a mama blood. I got like a lot of like gang tattoos on my face and like it's on my body and stuff like that too. The gangs really run this jail, and I'm still suspicious. The gang's suspicious, and if you are the suspect, you're going to get beat up. If someone finds out somebody's police, like, I'm going to go tell all the bros, I'm going to go tell the crib, they're going to go in on him. You get stabbed up. I mean, it's, I've seen it all. So there's this guy in the pod, uh, Zach Miller. Uh, he came up to me initially. Um, we talked a little bit. Uh, he's a tall, thin, white male. Reading his tattoos and looking at him, and then him talking, uh, you can tell he, he he's into the, the Aryan Brotherhood. The Southern Brotherhood were an organization. We got our own clothes website. We got a motorcycle gang. It's all a white organization. No blacks, no mix, or nothing can't be in the ABs or SBs. Donovan from Kentucky, he just come in here recently. We just started. We just got linked up with him. We count on him if something pops off. They accepted me almost immediately just by my appearance alone uh, and being a white male. 
The Aryan Brotherhood are responsible for a lot of the methamphetamine that moves within our pod. Getting in with the with Aryan Brotherhood is, would be a huge opportunity for me to see how the drugs are actually brung into facility from the time it comes in through intake till it goes to the last person that's using it. I want to see where it goes. This this is like way more than I want to get involved in. Just listening to that stuff. What do you mean? <laughs> I feel like I'm learning more than I need to know. Can you explain that a little further for me? It, Angel and Angela are talking about crimes committed on the streets. Me listening to that feel it it puts me in more danger if I stay in that room. They are talking about actual businesses. Like the, the, the business that they're doing on the streets, which is criminal business. I don't want to know about that stuff because later on, I don't want to be at home and somebody's knocking on my door about this stuff. You feel, you feel your life's at risk? Yeah. After I leave here, it won't be hard to find me. I don't want anybody coming after me. Like, I'm just trying to make it. But I mean, I feel like I'm in too deep being in that cell. So it sounds like you're saying you want out. I'm ready to go home. With your situation, what you've shared with me, I guess my question for you is what do you want to do? It's just. In my mind, this is something I never thought I would do anyway. So to even do it and be here and be this far in, I can't give up. I can't go back. I can't leave right now. That's not who I am. At this point, I mean, I just feel like it is what it is. It, I can. I feel like I can finish. If in the next day or so I feel like I can't, I give the signal and I just need to go. Okay. Hang in there, okay? You're right. I know I got, you know, a task to complete. Oh yeah. You good? Yeah. If the information that we give them at the end of this is gonna help, then I do feel good about helping because something needs to be done here. program is almost over. So I got Jamaica in my crosshairs right now. Hey, Jamaica! Hey, fat boy! I pushed him and, you know, fooled with him and messed with him. Fat boy! Because I want to see if he's going to remain professional. Like, when I call him out of his name, when I act a certain way, I want to see how he's going to act. Hey, fat boy!
No. I have no clue what she's saying. No clue, not one word. So I already knew today was going to be a bad day, waking up and seeing that Miss Richardson was the SEAL that was on duty. Her nickname in the unit is Screaming Demon, and it started right from the beginning of her shift. Miss Richardson, she's really young. I don't think too many people like her. Everybody that's over there is going to love that man and not no faith. Richardson, we never get along, and uh, she harasses me. She has a, kind of like a bad, you know, bad girl attitude and screams a lot. If you don't stop beating on that door! Her mannerisms are very arrogant, um, condescending even, you know, flipping her hair kind of rolling her eyes at you. They gave her a badge, and it went straight to her head. You know, I'm surprised nobody has whipped her ass. Hey, make sure everybody's <laughs> locked down before you let her out. Make sure everybody's behind a locked door before you let her out. One of our lockdown inmates in there, Ashley Caswell. She was yelling and screaming out of her cell at Miss Richardson. And this is a pretty normal occurrence with Miss Richardson and Caswell. They don't like one another. Miss Richardson takes away Caswell three times, and she leaves her in her cell all day long. That alone is going to amp you up. Miss Richardson should be the one calming it down and de escalating it. She does not. Uh, so Ms. Richardson pops Ashley's cell door to come down and get her meds, and at that point, I'm like, wait, uh, this is this is gonna go bad, watch. You never pop a cell door on an agitated inmate at any level of agitation, but if they're verbally threatening you, you never, you never remove that barrier, ever. I don't wanna talk to you. I don't wanna talk to you, go in the cell. I heard it's not Caswell's first rodeo between her and Miss Richardson. I don't gotta give you no F nothing. Don't get that. The two of them like to argue back and forth a lot. Call it. Call it. I didn't do nothing for you to walk the game. I didn't do nothing. throwing garbage, trays, juice, just kind of going crazy, uh, as she said she was going to. incident completely was provoked and instigated by Ms. Richardson. It, it could have been 100% prevented. Horrific things can happen if the person in charge of the safety and security of the unit is part of the problem. Pretty much from day one, uh, I was accepted by the Aaron Brotherhood just by my parents alone, and I'm a police officer. 
so I've got to be super careful. Well, a guy comes up to me, his name's Billy Ray. Uh, he's a short Hispanic male. He's tatted up. He's definitely identifiable as a gang member. The gang tattoos he had were for the uh, for the Bloods. Uh, I'm familiar with, with, with their, their, their logo. He said, my family's from Louisville, Kentucky. Your face, man, I know your face. I never forget a face. So now my, my, my stomach's scrunching, <laughs> heart's racing a little bit because this guy's obviously trying me. It was an unnerving experience at the least, realizing that there's multiple gang members in here. A lot of those gangs, a badge of honor for them is to hurt, kill, or maim a police officer. He leaves me, so I watch him as he walks away. I'm like, okay, who's he gonna talk to next? You know, are they gonna come back to me with, with you know, other him and other guys? My plan was to see exactly how far I could push things, what information I could get to bring back to the sheriff. Uh, and then I had to realize that this is guys that's done real time in prison. They know how to hurt people, they know how to kill people, and they won't hesitate. So, you know, and how far do I want to go in, in talking to a lot of the gang members? I had to weigh out uh, safety versus uh, how far I want to push the envelope. I was definitely thinking, you know, did I get in over my head? So the next day comes, and you know we see Miss Richardson's on duty, and we're just hoping it's over with. Again, pill pass happens, and I knew this is really going to be bad, and I couldn't do anything about it. A side member was sitting right there in front of the deputy's desk. As a side member, they should have taken a nurse there to Caswell's door, given her her meds, and been done with it. Almost carbon copy of the day before. But Ashley is even more amped up. She goes even more crazy throwing anything she can get her hands on. It's out of control right now. If somebody like Caswell has been sprayed like several times, eventually that spray is not gonna do anything. The side member did absolutely nothing to help. You needed to react, and he didn't react.
Assad comes in. It's deja vu to the day before, and it was predictable. You knew it was going to happen. Not even like 10 minutes after that, Ms. Richardson has to serve dinner to her, okay. having to open her door again. I knew that it wasn't over. I can tell you right now, she was plotting revenge. Ashley's very upset herself. So she's yelling, she's screaming. Now, even though it's dinner time, when an inmate's that upset, you still should not open the door. As the jail commander, I'm like, no, no. There's no way a CO would do that. That's wrong. I couldn't believe she would really pop the door. What's going to happen is they're going to gang up on her ass, and she's going to have three or four of them on her, and they're really going to her up. Don't wait now. The cell doors pop and it's on. The trustees went in and they had the jug of juice and they had some cleaner. And uh, they went in Caswell's cell and they actually dumped the juice on her bed, soaking all of her stuff in juice and then threw bleach at her. Just looking at some of the inmates who were out, who were looking over at the incident, their faces were shocked. You could tell they were shocked. This is just, this is bad. This is so bad. She is bad. As bad as yesterday was, today's 10 times worse, and I didn't think it could get worse. She was just kind of put back in her cell with all the juice-soaked mattress and, and sheets and her clothes, and she was just left there to sit. The whole situation was horrible. Ms. Richardson shouldn't have been left alone with her just after dealing with her one time. So I could have prevented that whole situation. They could have stayed and served the tray to her. The most disturbing thing was uh, just thinking about Caswell. How fearful she must be to know that she can't she can't even sleep in her bunk at night. Someone might pop the door and let people come in and kick your ass. How scary is that? No one deserves that. It was heartbreaking, and I couldn't do a thing. Michael, I feel like he's a horrible CO. He say we got 20 minutes to eat. We end up getting like 10, 15. And I know I ain't tripping because he the only CO who be acting like that. When I'm on the phone and all of a sudden they just click the button and now they hang up on my phone call, that's really pissing me off. Shut the door. He'll just keep doing them little things. I'm like, all right, bro, you need to chill now. He ain't gonna handle me now. Oh, now, ho, ho. 
It was just a buildup. And I finally had enough. For about a week, Tony's been testing Jamichael. Uh, just little bits of time, little bits of time. The white forest treat is better than you treat. I know you're testing him. Everybody out there, he's a sellout. He's a sellout. You better get a good f***ing 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 f***
it's unless I, I keep using the adjective shocking, and that doesn't even encompass encompass it. Uh, it's the first time in my entire career, I'm embarrassed to say I'm a correctional officer, watching what some of these people do here. It's Miss Richardson. She, what I saw her do over the weekend, I, I was literally swallowing vomit. I was sick to my stomach. And I never thought that I would be embarrassed of my profession as as much as I am in here. I never thought. That, that's pretty surprising for you to say. Um, I've always been very, very proud. <clears throat> I take such pride in what I do in helping people in representing all of law enforcement. That's the thing is one bad person makes all of us look bad. And there's so many good, so much good, but you see this type of bad? No wonder people hate us. No wonder. I hate them, and I'm one of them. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, none of these gals in here have any respect for, their, for law enforcement because that's what they see, and it's wrong. It's wrong. The worst CEO I've ever been around in my entire career just walked back into the unit today when she should have not just been fired, she should have been arrested for what she did the other day. Arrested. on what happened and how she harasses me. All right. When I returned to the pod, Caswell was still on lockdown. I wasn't sure exactly what was going on, but I knew I wanted to check on her and see how she was. My cellmate, Ashley, and I, our hearts are going out to Caswell. Let's go, ladies. I need you to lock down. Let's go. I'm surprised that she's still even here. Yeah, that's uh, seriously, seriously. I heard Miss Richardson was let go. Everyone in the unit was ecstatic. It is a good thing for Etowah County that she is no longer employed here. They fired me because they said I did a proper use of force, but I was doing what my sergeant asked me to tell me to do. I mean, I had no choice. I was doing what my chain of command told me to do. The whole situation is messed up. Yeah.
But this guy told my, my cell at the one who was like, hey, they coming to your cell. I had a shank, so I grabbed the shank, flushed that real quick. I'm like, boom, I can't get caught with that. It's real. Next thing you know, the door's been opened by side, and I'm, of course, I got that deer head like looks like, what, what's, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I'll explain to you a Turn around. Just walking out the cell, people looking. So the first thing I'm thinking is, what's really going on? Like, where are you taking me? He got escorted out by the sod guys. They come in and took him off in handcuffs. And I'm thinking, damn, Tony's he's gonna be locked down for several days uh, and I'm gonna be alone. I'm thinking like, all right, it's time to tap out. I don't get afraid of a lot of things, but going to SEG was the first time I ever been nervous. Everybody got a breaking point. Tony has a lot of stuff in his in the cell, so those guys were trying to get items. Shakedown's gonna happen tonight. That did give her time to hide just like stuff that she didn't want them to find. They mean business. It's the real deal. And why they raised the unit like that? I don't know. Why do you think they did it? Because they was on that. Oh, man. I got the key to this door right now. Just watch. Did you just open your door? We've gotten word from our control room. The inmates think that the production and the participants are police. All four got to come out right now. Guy comes up to me, his name's Billy Ray. He's definitely identifiable as a gang member. There's multiple gang members in here. A badge of honor for them is the hurt, kill, or mango police officer. And they won't hesitate. If somebody like Caswell has been sprayed like several times, eventually that spray is not gonna do anything. When an inmate's that upset, you still should not open the door. <laughs> the cell door's popped and it's on. No one deserves that. It was heartbreaking, and I couldn't do a thing. If the information that we give them at the end of this is going to help, then I do feel good about helping, because something needs to be done here. My goal with this phase is to test the COs 100%. I got Jamaica in my crosshairs right now. I think Tony pushed Jamaica to his breaking point. Open the door, you're gonna be chill for the room. Never talk to you. I, I, I never disrespect like that. Right. Uh, right. Just have a seat for me, okay? So, honestly, it's like, it's like, me and he police, he can just wave a wand, and now I'm gone. And I ain't trying to be locked down. I'm trying to be up there. Just give you a little time. 
Yeah. Calm down, give him some time to calm down, and yeah. maybe things can get worked out. But for the time being, I can't take you back up there. They can make a decision with the supervisor, and we can go from there. All right, well. I feel like I overreached. I have no idea what's going to happen. A lot of inmates went to the hole and didn't come back. While I'm sitting and say, my new cellmate just sitting in my cell. But he could easily find my drugs or my shanks. You know, roll one under the door to somebody, or somebody can come to the door. Hey, I'm going to do this to you when you come out. If you don't give me all oh, his commissary. This is by yourself. This is torture. This is torture. This is torture. I don't get afraid of a lot of things. But going to say was the first time I ever been nervous scared or anything the first time. Everybody got a breaking point. I'm thinking like, all right, it's time to hang it up. Side guys come in and take Tony out in cuffs. I thought, damn, Tony's he's gonna be locked down for several days, uh, and I'm gonna be on my own. <laughs> then I actually got worried and concerned because now I'm thinking to myself, what's gonna happen to all this stuff now? Tony has a lot of stuff in his in the cell. So I kept my eyes on Tony's cell door to see who was coming, who was going. Uh, there was a lot of action at his door. Uh, he took them. He had them in his belt. Tony has a new cellmate now who I'm not real familiar with. So those guys were trying Tony's cellmate to try to get items like, hey, he heals me this, uh, I need that. Champagne had every intention on going there and cleaning that cell out of every item he had, any money, any cigarettes, any food. I knew if Tony come back and stuff was gone, if the fight was on, I knew it was gonna be a free-for-all in there. I'm so close to being done. I've been getting fed up with everything I've been seeing. I've been getting so frustrated, angry, um, sad, uh, devastated. You know, all the issues that Sheriff Horton has in this facility, they're so massive, so deep, so rooted. It's a scary place. I'm ready to let Sheriff Horton know truly, truly how horrific it is in here. Yeah, I mean, once they get done with their free time. The people that are working here, they're just here because they need a job. It's like they have rules here, but they don't really follow them. A lot of them are too close to the inmates. So you gonna do a count? Yeah, I got the count at 1030. They know that they don't care, and I understand. I feel like they probably don't get paid enough to deal with this type of stuff. Huh. I 
check down the line. sitting around, we're talking with the trustees, and they tell us uh, that a shakedown's gonna happen tonight or soon. They said they had talked to the CO. She told them that a shakedown was coming, so uh, I would expect everyone to get rid of their stuff. Tony told us he was going to come in, test the officers. So he did that. He went a little bit too far. So we brought him down in our intake area and put him in a cell for a cool off period. And then he was ready to go back in. Champagne was trying to get the CO to pop Tony's door while he was away, and then uh, Tony comes back in. I was relieved when Tony came back. I kind of had that little sigh of relief, like, okay, we're back to a team now. Uh, I got help here. I got somebody that has my back. same time, I thought, well, that's kind of weird, you know? Uh, he got escorted out by the sod guys, but he's, he's back in a few hours later. Even myself thought that was suspicious that Tony came back up pretty quick, because I had seen some other interactions with the sod and COs where they took guys and they didn't come back. I think that put another target on him, like, hey, why is he getting out so quick? I was in SIG rough probably four hours, maybe. And I already respect Jamichael Moore. Not solely because he sent me to the hole, but more so because how he handled that situation. He didn't go for what I was selling him. So that was perfect. That was amazing. Bruh, that sucks, man. Bruh. As soon as you play here, buddy. Let me get this. However, me not uh, spending a week in the hole or, or a couple days in the hole, it definitely uh, opened the door for, for more suspicion. It's like, dude, is he really 60 days in? So um, I definitely feel like they're, they're, they're on to me. They're on to me. Good morning. Glad everybody come out this morning. Really appreciate it. Uh, 10 months ago, we did the first shakedown. We filled up four tables of contraband, but our jails had a lot of improvements. Uh, a lot of our security's been enhanced. So, I believe that this time things will be better. Thank you, sir. When I first came into office, we did a full shakedown and found over 5,000 pounds of contraband. And now, after two phases of the program, we want to do a final shakedown to see how far we've came. There's already suspicion on the women 
And with the situation between Tony and Jamichael, there seems to be suspicion on Tony as well. So I want to do this shakedown now because the participants may not have much time left. Something's up. You know, they're raiding the whole pod now. Just come around, stand right here on this wall, OK? They take me outside, against the wall, hands up. They're patting you down, looking for any contraband you may soar on yourself. What's that? It's the east Since I've been in, we've had a couple of shakedowns. They come in, they glance around, and then they go to the next step. When they came in, it was a big difference. It was one of the radios had a straw inside of it. They usually smoke marijuana stuff out of it. And then the other one's got something wrapped up inside of it. I heard a dog barking. And for me, a dog means they mean business. And obviously, if the sheriff is part of anything that goes on in that jail, it's the real deal. This, one of these has come off that they broke off from the door. Hi, guys. Come on. Come on. Let's close on real quick. We done told you three times to get up. You woke up. Well, come on. When I first woke up, there was already about five or six people in my cell. I got drugs. I got shanks in my cell. I'm just kind of freaking out. Get up. Shakedown happened, they woke us up, they pulled me out of the cell. The night before, the trustees had told us, hey, you know, the, the CO told us the shakedown's coming. So if we did have any contraband, we could have flushed it if we wanted to. Now, if you're doing a surprise shakedown, it needs to be a surprise. One of the COs proceeded to pat search me. It was a very basic search. Wouldn't have uh, found any contraband if they were trying. I had several layers of clothing on because I was so cold, so I could have hidden whatever I wanted to between those layers of clothing. <laughs> when you're doing a proper pat search, the whole intent is to find contraband. So first of all, you should be stripped down to just one layer of clothing. She should be able to feel if I have anything hidden in my groin area, in my bra area. You know, I should have my ears checked, my mouth checked. None of that was done. Just go have a seat If that's how they're doing pat searches, they're missing everything. I woke up because I heard Angel moving around. You know, they check it down with the chemical. At that point, they knew, OK, they doing, they're doing a shakedown. So they was already prepared for it. That did give her time to hide just like stuff that she didn't want them to find. I know it's contraband, but I'm not sure exactly what it was. told us to get dressed and come on out, so we stepped out. I immediately noticed that the pat-downs were terrible. I mean, they was just like kind of touching here and there, but not really searching enough to find anything.
when the officers finished, it was like, okay, you're good. I was like, what? Made me think. I'm like, it's so many people in here right now with so much stuff on them. It's ridiculous. Earlier, they said they were having this shakedown, so I walked up my bunk. Wouldn't it defeat the purpose to come and announce the shakedown? It was the new officer that just started last night. <laughs> so we was so, like, OK. All of us early. They told us that the shakedown was coming. I'm going to let the sheriff and the chief know that the shakedown was ineffective. I feel they missed a lot. If it was for the intent of removing contraband, it failed miserably. Mm -hmm. Y'all looking for the drugs. Where they at though? Oh no. Let's go. That's why I come over here and open your curtain. You ain't supposed to have it anyway. I love the fact that they hit us like that in the morning while everyone was asleep. You know, LML surprise is key. But with this particular incident, that wasn't a good thing because I got drugs, I got shanks in my cell. If I get caught with any of this, you know, this could compromise the whole program and put everybody at risk. This ain't going according to my plan because they caught me out blindside. I know they're going to find it. I'm just like, damn, how am I going to pull this off? Because I don't want to get caught with drugs in, in a jailhouse facility. You know, that's that's automatically outside charges. They're going to definitely send me to sick, and I'm going to stay this time. I'm, I'm just kind of freaking out. No, I'm going to go ahead and hold out. I got drugs, I got shanks in my cell. I know they're going to find him. Honestly, couldn't believe how disappointing the search was because they didn't find anything. They didn't. They did not find anything. Every bitter that was in my cell when they did that shakedown, and they did not find anything. This is definitely a win for Tony. However, it is a loss for the jail. Jail-made weapons, possibly a chisel and uh, shank. I was in this cell here. Yes, sir. So we now we'll debrief after doing unit five and six. You know, we found a couple shanks. You hate to find anything, but then again, you're glad you found them because it could have been somebody's life. That table speaks volumes compared to you know, what we had on display 10 months ago. This whole part of the room was taken, four or 5,000 pounds of contraband. So overall, I'm ecstatically pleased with the findings that we have here today. Hey, why they raised the unit like that? I don't know. Why do you think they did? Because oh, they was on that bullet the weekend oh, out ponies.
not safe. If I wanted to get you, I could have. I'm pretty aware of it. We're gonna go. Any door. Any door. <laughs> Down, there's even more, and we've been hearing some pretty credible threats against them. And are we hearing it on both sides, male and female, or just pretty specific threats on Tony, Vanessa specifically? If it's an unsafe environment, we're getting a lot of uh, credible threats. All Ford's got the power. I mean, their safety's number one. Doesn't matter how we pull it out, let's get them out. I've learned from Chief Peak that there are credible threats against the participants. So I'm shutting down the program and pulling all the participants out now. Miss Knight! Back up! I thought it was very strange that both myself and Vanessa were called for release at the exact same time. I absolutely immediately thought there was something that we didn't know about. Uh, we were at risk for some reason. I wanted to get out of there immediately. Once we were called to roll up, I knew the more people who saw us both leaving at the same time, the more suspicion would, would be cast upon us. So once that happened, I wanted to get out of there immediately. It's been real, see? We already made up our mind. We're going to Arkansas, so we coming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we gonna, we pull up on you. Don't make us act like we just acted. Oh, we will. We're going to act real Alabama on your ass. I don't want them to come find me. My biggest concern is being found in the safety of myself and my family. See y'all later. Okay, don't yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be seeing you. <laughs> we coming to Arkansas. She don't believe us, but we coming. Are you okay? I'm so happy I got to meet you, okay? Remember Utah, okay? Fuck you. I was very relieved to actually go and dress out, put my own clothes back on, and, and just to be, be out of this place. took a toll on me mentally and physically right. and emotionally, and I think more emotionally. 
Yeah, I mean, I was like, oh my God. I'm glad it's all over. I appreciate you checking on me though. Absolutely. I was ready to leave. Yeah. I think I told you that. Yeah. I was like, I said, I think I'm done. I don't think I can do this anymore. I said, I've had enough. I think I've learned enough. But then I started thinking, I was like, I don't want to leave Heather in there. Mm -hmm. I said, pretty much started together, we could finish together. But I still can't believe I actually did this. We absolutely, well, I, I don't want to speak for you, but have a ton of information. Right. I don't know if it's necessarily new information. Um, definitely suggestions for improvement, things that can be done, absolutely. That place has, has a lot of work to do. So I'm lying in bed, um, I hear the key ring jingle, the door opens, and they call my name. Told me to roll it up. Uh, roll it up means you're out. When they called my name, you know, I'm like, I'm, a, I'm extremely excited. Once I got my bearings and could figure out what was going on, I was like, oh crap. The CO just sitting at the door. I got my drugs hid by the uh, camera. But I realized I have to come up with a plan in like seconds to grab the drugs and grab the shank. I stalled him long enough for him to go somewhere else. As soon as he left my cell, I ran, jumped up there, grabbed him, jumped back down, put it in my socks. Intake. Now I'm thinking, like, I got the drugs on my person. I'm really freaking out. If I get caught with drugs even on my way out, that's automatically outside charges. There are serious consequences if you get caught. When we came in, they searched me well. In my book, it was 100% correct. If they conduct a search like that on the way out, then they're going to find it. But they didn't, thank God. to the jail, that was like amazing. We out of here. We did it. We out. It's over with. Damn. Some uh, pills Ooh. and some more cash, six dollars in cash. I was definitely surprised that he would take that risk to uh, not only to receive that stuff in jail to get his hands on it, but to store it and keep it and then get released with it. 
here I have roughly five pills. This is all cash that I receive from inmates uh, buying product from me. I thought, all right, uh, you know, he could've given me a heads up, hey, you could try to get this out, I'm gonna try to get this out. So yeah, I was kinda like bummed. I'm like, man, he tried to one-up me there, and I thought, you know, there you go. <laughs> You know, I mean, you should give it to the sheriff. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Man, man, man. We made it, man. <laughs> we, made it. we made it. We made it. We made it. In and out. Hey, hey man, you know, you know, it ain't built, everybody ain't built for this. No. After phase one, we implemented some major changes. We've invested a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of funds. We know that it will never be perfect, but we certainly have high expectations of it being tremendously better. I'm ready now to let them tell us where we stand and what else we might need to do. Heather, how are you? Good, Sheriff. How are you? Good. Good dude. to see you again. Good. <laughs> How's it going, Tony? You doing all right? Looking, Looking good, good, man. Yes, sir. Good. You guys hiding out up here or what? Oh, yes, sir. How's it going, Chief, dog? how you doing? Doing all right. Uh, you're doing a lot better now, Sheriff. Good to see you. Walk down those things. Hey, how are you, Vanessa? How you doing? You doing all right? You feel like a bird out of the cage, too, don't you? All right, guys, so we got a lot to talk about. And, you know, to begin with, after uh, the last group of participants we learned in the exit interviews, we had a lot of inconsistencies in our intake. Uh, you know, what did you experience in the intake area or, or some of what you took away from that? So uh, when I went into intake, I, I really felt like I was kind of just hung out to dry. I, certain times I actually asked, where do you want me to go? And I was, I could have wandered wherever I wanted. The first interaction I have knowing that Etowah County is in charge of me should be intake, and that wasn't the case. I know that is still just a humongous trafficking area, getting contraband into the facility, huge. It seemed like it was kind of chaos in there. It was not organized. The pat down process, uh, he didn't do a thorough job, the seal that, you know, did the pat down. That is your first line of defense for anything that gets in that jail. I mean, that it's, it's paramount that that's where stuff stops. So me personally, if I had to give the sheriff a grade right now, I, for the intake process, I'd be at a C, C plus. Uh, honestly, me, the intake, <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna say like a B, because I mean, it, it's a lot of stuff that you know that we're gonna get there, but comparing the first phase to the second phase, I'd definitely say a B. Well, I'm gonna have to disagree with both of them. I'm gonna go with an F. Yeah, I'm, um, yeah, I'm an F. When I first walked through the door, I was immediately taken into a private cell where I did get a strip search. She took my headband and my belly ring. That's all that I really had on me. But when I went into my holding cell with the other ladies, immediately I saw bobby pins. One lady had about seven of the same things she just took from me and put in my property on her arm. It was like seven other women in there. They got comfortable with me pretty quick and we started talking in the holding cell. And not even an hour, I saw my first drug. <laughs> because none of the women in that cell with me got searched, not one. And I do know that those same drugs made it all the way to the unit. But I'm going to say that's an F. Um, I guess as far as uh, the topic of, of, of officers uh, in, in general, Heather, I'll start from your perspective. I, I feel like I would be doing a disservice to y'all if I was not absolutely honest with you. There are things that I just need you to hear about your staff. I got a taste of it my, my first night there, a couple hours in. We had a what I would classify as a major incident. Um, and what it was was a... Uh, use of force with, with spray, but also a, a staff assault. The entire incident was preventable because it, it stemmed from the, the officer accidentally letting out a lockdown and then not handling it properly in any way, shape, or form and it escalating from there. And what was probably the most disheartening is the inmate dictated when that incident was over. Not a single staff member. The women who are, work in your facility are, are petrified. There were absolutely no boundaries. Um, Looking at how they deal with the COs, like at that desk, those inmates go behind that desk, they do anything that they want around that desk, they lean on the desk, the COs are on the internet, they're on Facebook. The inmates know the code they, to pop the doors. They know, yeah. They know it's them. like they, they damn near was working that unit. Like, mm -hmm. and it was just, I mean, that's just my major thing. It was absolutely no boundaries. No it, it, it's frustrating. I'm sitting here right now pissed off, I'll be honest with you. 
You just can't make progress, it seems, fast enough. It's like, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. I know we've made some positive change, but, but I still know we've got a long way to go. I mean, I know this, uh, and I'll be honest too, I don't know all the answers, but you know, this is helpful. And in our first group of participants that we talked to, you know, along the way, we terminated four officers. One of the issues, and, and, I, and I just think that it's, it's an elephant in a room kind of thing, mm -hmm. it's hard to find the right job applicants. In the condition we're in now, who the hell wants to go to work there? So we have to make our facility not only better to be safer for everyone, but to attract the right applicants. Right. To give them something to want to be a part of. Part of my reason uh, coming back to was uh, I wanted to push every CEO and every every opportunity that was given to me. I wanted to explore that. I want to take full opportunity of it. I see. A, I seen a difference. Let's talk about Jamaica. So him and I had words. I pushed him and pushed him and pushed him. But the way he handled the situation, you know, he backed off. He was like, "All right, listen, reels, you need to relax and you know go on about your business." With Jamaica, um. He actually did like a 360 in my eyes. Like he ended up, he, he, did, a, he did a good job in my opinion. I mean, I'm impressed by that. So we've went over a lot of information. And so the next topic here is drugs, weapons, and contraband. Donovan, what was your experience in the mail unit? Had a uh, chance or an opportunity to have a cocaine, meth, or uh, the clone, they call it spice, the synthetic marijuana, which seemed to be more popular than anything right now, the spice. But uh, the good news is the, the jail, uh, the inmates are kind of mad at you, Sheriff, because uh, the fact uh, they said six to eight months ago, there was no stop and get anything in that jail. But it was so rampant then, a lot of guys came to jail because they knew for a fact that they'd come to jail and uh, get drugs in jail. Uh, so fast forward now to our time in, and uh, it's probably dropped 60%. Vanessa? Well, me and Tony passed a lot of notes through the visitation door between units. Um, that door is a major security breach. Yes, definitely get that welded shit. That it's like a maybe, to. what, like a three inch? Big gap. Yeah, Big like gap. a gap, you just slide whatever through. I could have got some clone, I could have got anything, you just slid it over there and did whatever, whatever needed to be done. You know, we had a shakedown this past Friday. The aggression and the hostility and the results of that shakedown had put some pressure on the program. And we felt safety first, and that's why we pulled you out as early in the way that we did. So did you hear any talk? Did they know a shakedown was coming? Or was there any sense of that? Yes, sir. Or they was did. it a, Not did, they didn't? The whole no, time, I, they the shakedown was coming. Oh, really? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we were all told the shakedown was coming. Yeah, yeah to prep for it. To prep for it. <laughs> You know, there's only a few people that knew about it. So that tells us an officer's leaking that. But it comes back to training officers, you know, getting them ready for what to expect coming in the facility. It's a big thing. We had no information on it. No, it was total surprise. I mean, obviously from the reactions of the inmates, beating doors, banging doors, they're a little upset about it too. Yeah, I was completely uh, blindsided. Uh... In the cell, I had clone, I had pills, I had shanks. In yours? In my cell, I'm like, Yo, they were about to find all this stuff, and they didn't find it. I ended up getting uh, some clone. So is that what you got there? Is yes. Clone or... I got like five, six pills and some clone. All right, get that right. Yes, sir. And this was all just just over the time. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not it. Uh, so uh, it's pretty much the side of a uh, eyeglass, eyeglasses and they just uh, sharpened the edge on the steel door and pretty much made a shank. Um, in the right person's hands, this could be like extremely dangerous, you know? Damn. Like I told you first, I said, hey, look, don't tell me to do something because I'm going to make sure I do it. And, and, and the fact that you brought me back and you telling me the same thing, you know, you, you can look at the bigger picture. I mean, you sitting here listening to us rah, 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 tear at you, and you're, and, you're, and you're thinking about how you can grow from it. You know, I feel like Etowah County is that much more safe because you're in office, to be honest. Thank you, Tony. Obviously, we wouldn't know, you know, what we know without you. And uh, I know this is something that's going to be challenging. It's something that's gonna take some time, but at the same time, at the very end, it's gonna be extremely enriching and rewarding. And you guys have given me uh, the energy and the initiative to, to want to follow through with that. And for that, I can never tell you I appreciate it enough. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The program phase one and two 
I feel 100% that he made our jail and my success 10 years ahead of the curve of where we would have been without it. It had some bad, it had some good, everything does. But the total takeaway is that our facility is safer today because of 60 days in. Bringing in cameras, letting the outside world get an unadulterated look of the inside uh, is tough. But in the end, letting the people see just as I seen this when I took this position, this is what it is. You know, it could be disappointing. It was for me, but I think it's the right thing to do. And I know that after all of that, that the jail's heading in the right direction and on the right path. I was afraid of somebody in there. That's not why I left. Did you tap out? I tapped out. OK, I was right. Next question, please. I'm tired of people saying that I was like in a dangerous situation or anything, because nothing happened to me. I didn't get right, in that's any why I was or anything. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know how bad it is. I now have to tell you how bad it is so you fix it. I always say knowledge isn't power. Knowledge is liability. I wanted to beat the brakes off of you because she's full of but don't talk about me behind my back because I don't do fake bitches, I don't. To think that you would even approach me to fight is hilarious to me. Hmm. You have issues you need to get straight before you come and try to do this. Wow. You basically said at one point you would beat up Chief Peak. At that moment, yeah. This is not just a TV show, this is real life. Okay, I'm excited, let's talk. saying that I was like in a dangerous situation or anything because nothing happened to the me. Moment. I didn't get right, in that's any hold on, 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 You smoked some clone, but you didn't try to go buy it because you probably would have got your ass whipped. That's just the truth. Tell us about the moment you were left naked in your cell. I'm about to be 30 years old, single-handedly most humiliating moment of my life. I wanted to beat the brakes off of you because she's full of don't talk about me behind my back because I don't do fake bitches, I don't. To think that you would even approach me to fight is hilarious to me. I'm actually quite surprised that she would even feel like she would win. It is not a feeling, it's a no. I didn't even know you tapped out. I was shocked. I've never failed at anything in my life until this. This season is way more wilder than any other season. It's a rough place, man. It's a really <laughs> jail. No offense, but that's what it is. What all of you did not know is that after you left, Sheriff Horton decided to put a new group of participants into the jail for a second phase of the program. This is what reunions are for. Welcome to 60 Days In, the aftermath. I'm Dan Abrams. We just wrapped up season six of 60 Days In, where another round of undercover participants fought to survive in what may have been the toughest jail we've seen in six seasons. Tonight, we'll talk to all the participants who went undercover to investigate the Etowah County Detention Center and hear why this facility was so difficult and led to more tap outs than any other season. But before we get to that, let's meet our panel. I'd like to welcome Sheriff Jonathan Horton and Chief Keith Peak from the Etowah County Detention Center. Gentlemen, good to have you here. Good to be here. And good to have all of our participants. Alex, Shanice, Tony, Ashley, Dennis, and Jennifer. The women and the men have not met each other before, but something that's maybe even a little more striking, Dennis and Alex, are you surprised to see Tony here? I'm not surprised at all. You're not? Nah. <laughs> you knew? I knew from the jump. <laughs> that, that Tony had been put yeah. in there as a plant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I figured that out from the jump. Did you know? I only knew because Dennis was like, yo, on the low. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> I can't tell you who, but they got another dude in nope, here. And really? I was like, all right. <laughs> you know, I had, to, I, had to make, I, had, I had to make Alex aware, you know, of yeah. his surroundings. And uh, for the women, how is it all <laughs> to be back together? It's bringing back memories. It's yeah. bringing back a lot of memories and um, 
you know, just excited to be here and relive what happened. <laughs> There's no surprise lady gonna walk out. No, no. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> so this reunion is being taped before the premiere of season six. And so none of you have seen any of the episodes no. No. so far. No. Are you nervous? Well, I'm, I'm I'm not at all. I'm just ready to see what's going on. I want to see how, how everything plays out. Yeah. I'm excited about it. I don't want to watch it, but I'm going to. So <laughs> I don't want to watch it either. Denise, do you want to watch it? Watch no, this I don't want to relive this at all. But yeah, I'm going to. I, I probably okay. want to. I, I, I don't want to see it. Well, no matter what, I love you too, okay? Yeah. I, for real, we went through a really tough place together. So. Well, here are some highlights from your time in the Etowah County Detention Center. I'll see you on the other side. I'm giving up all control. Checking was very slack. I totally could have stuck something up my butt if I wanted to. Gotta go in and have this look like, don't with me. It's been pure from the moment I walked in through the door. Etowah County Jail is a party. I have I got Anything that's out in the street is in the jail. Chrome, heroin, ice. The whole night is just free for all. There's weapons. It is not safe. If I don't get your knife, you kill me, I kill you, bro. I never really seen a guy get like stabbed that close to me. Beat that wife ass when he cracked your ass. People can die in a matter of seconds. If Alex was in any type of danger, I would look out for him. I'd rather get beat up than have Dennis be my savior. That was awkward. Last night in my dream, that demon had sex with me. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my God and put it upon your chest. I underestimated the reality of it. Bye-bye. That guy. That was so exciting. It was. <laughs> Brought back some good memories? No. <laughs> no, no. Is it tougher than it looks on TV? For I me, mean, yes. this season is way more wilder than any other season. Chaos. Every other season out the water, for sure. Yeah. yeah, 100%. How is it different than what you had expected based on watching it on TV? I think for me, I anticipated that I was going to have issues with the inmates, not the correctional officers. There were times that the inmates gathered together and fed me because I can't eat certain things. And so I wasn't expecting the inmates to really have my back and for me to miss them when I left. I told my father, I was like, yeah, I miss them. He's like, you don't miss no inmates. They're, they're criminals. And I'm like, no, they're real people. They just made mistakes. Mm -hmm. Was this harder than you expected? Yes. Like everybody said, it was not the inmates that bothered me. I love the inmates. I pray for them all the time. It was heartbreaking to see what these inmates had to deal with. And I felt completely helpless because there was nothing that I could do. All right, so Dennis, let's talk about your story. Uh, tell us, why'd you want to do this? A few reasons. Um, I think I had a perception about people in jail, and I ha only had that perception from the outside looking in. So I wanted to see what it'd be like, see if it changed my perception from being on the inside. So was this former college quarterback too confident for his own good? Let's take a look at Dennis's journey. You're a little cocky. You're kind of pretty. You're gonna go in a place with a bunch of rednecks. That attitude right there, they're gonna eat you alive. Chief Pete, that's not a tough person. That's a weak person. That's a soft person. That's the person I'd beat up. You know, if, if I'm allowed to, if I can fight him. I woke up, ate breakfast, and I'm getting into it. I don't wanna be a not on the log just sitting there looking around. So I just got right to it. My workout routine is basically like a 1,000 reps. I call it a stack a day. Maybe 100, 150 pull-ups, two to 300 push-ups, abs. I'm a six foot three, tall, handsome black guy, look good. Everybody's eyes are on me. Like, who is this dude? I played quarterback my whole life, and I just feel like I'm 
quarterback in here too as well. So people do look up to me. They consider me a top boss. Dennis claims that he has reached pod boss status. Do you see that? No, nah, not at all, no. <laughs> what a <Thanks>. hater. <laughs> what a hater, look at that. Dennis is definitely not a pod boss, no. Why? Did you work out? <laughs> I'm curious to know what he do for a living. I guarantee he probably sit behind somebody's desk somewhere, work from home or something, sell insurance or something. <laughs> He's an interesting character. We talk a lot, but odd boss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Tony, hey, man. Tony mad because I ain't give him a soup and stow that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. You know what's going on with the stove. <laughs> 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 Dennis, what was it like watching it? It was actually pretty cool watching it. Uh, pretty accurate. You think you were too cocky? No, that's just me, you know? And I won't change myself for nobody, so. Tony, we heard uh, what you thought about Dennis. You stand by what you said there? Yeah. He was not a pod boss. No. Dennis, what? I mean, I consider myself a pod boss, not in the sense where I'm threatening somebody or beating somebody up. That's, that's not the case. Uh, but more so, I can walk anywhere in the jail and feel cool. Like a respect thing. Respect thing, yeah. Right, right. You want to tell Tony what you actually do for a living? Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> Sell insurance. <laughs> I did get into that a little bit, but... <laughs> I'm Dan Abrams here with Sheriff Horton and Chief Peak from the Etowah County Detention Center, along with the season six participants. So there was one moment in Dennis's time in jail that nearly got him kicked out of the program. Let's watch. Why do you want to go to six? He's got 12 people to a pilot. My roommate was telling me about Unit 6, which is SAP, it's a drug program. There's more drugs there. A lot of people want to get there because it's freedom down there. So I'm like, oh, I just see Dennis leaving the pod. I have absolutely no idea what was going on. Why did you move to a different pod? Yeah, you know, I'm such a, uh, a good guy. Let's make something real clear. We're expecting you to help us out. Understood, understood. So, so talk to me like a man, and everything's good. I've been doing what I can to do to throw everybody off. This ain't some schoolyard, some college, or some football field. This is real life. So quit doing all this stupid that you're doing. I don't need that. Don't raise your voice up. <laughs> You're in my building. Don't turn around anything on me, because I promise you, I will walk you out the door right now, and this will be over with and done. Go in there, do what you're supposed to do, and do your job. Simple as that. <laughs> Hang in there. Now, you don't have to grip your hand hard, trust me. Good mind. <laughs> no, sir. Look. We can cut the camera off, and we can have a real talk. But at the end of the day, I do this for a living. Don't try me. Chief Pete, from the jump, he don't like me. He's threatened by me, intimidated by me, because he thought when I was going to come in, he thought I was gonna, they were going to look at me and, you know, pounce on me. But that ain't the case. This whole situation right here, like, I can't, I can't deal with that. You're not going to talk to me like that. No, you ain't going to talk to me like that. We got a problem. We got a real problem. So, like to watch that? Nah, that was that was pretty intense. I didn't I didn't appreciate that part. To be honest with you, you know, from the jump, I think Peak just had an issue with me. Chief Peak, did you have it out for him in the beginning? Well, you know, when he was in there, he was all about him in the beginning. He was. He was all about him as a one man show. After that talk right there, Dennis did a 180 degree turnaround, and he started doing what he was chose to go in there to do. Do you now, looking at that, understand a little better why Chief Peak was irritated? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I do understand, because there's no cameras there, so they can't get to me <laughs> if anything was to happen. But I didn't know that. So Chief Peak had the right to be upset? No, he had the right to be upset. But he didn't have the right to talk to me how you talk to me. Screaming and stuff like that, no. Do you think he was screaming at you? Yeah, at one point, he raised his, his tone at me. I think I got my point across. You, you basically said at one point that, you know, you would beat up Chief Peak if you could. Th at that moment, yeah. At, at you that still moment. feel that way? No, 
not anymore. You know, after meeting with him, like debriefing and everything, he changed a lot, like in terms of just his personality towards me. But I don't feel that way now. Based on what all of you have just seen of Dennis, what do you make of this dispute? I thought it was a stupid decision for him to go to <laughs> go to Pod Six. Like I, I, I don't, I don't know why he did that. Like there were people talking about you for doing that, so I was more worried that like your cover was going to be blown because they were like, why would he go and be back six hours later in the same pod? So why did you leave the unit? It happened fast, man. Um, I it left. It does the- look like you were asking to leave. No, no, I knew it was a lot, a lot of drugs. I, when I hear about like six, um, literally it was. That's where all the drugs are at in six. So, Dennis, in the end, do you now maybe better understand where Chief Peak was coming from? Yes, but this is a new environment for me. I've never been in a place like that before, yep. right? So that was my way in to work out and go around and talk to people. And by me doing that, I was able to do the things that I was able to do towards the end. So I do understand that. Mm-hmm. I think that, you know, he wanted me to do it day one, right? Yep. Um, but it got done. All right, Ashley, you were a 60 Days In super fan. Yes. Why did you want to be a participant on the show? Shanice, you don't know this. I'm a police officer. So this was my um, opportunity to become a better detective, to find out how I can use my position as an officer to kind of, you know, make my community a safer and better place. Now, for someone who at the outset vowed not to shed a tear, Man. You cried a lot. Well played, Annie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well played. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it seems like this impacted you more than you expected. I was so disappointed in the behavior of these corrections officers, and it broke my heart to pieces. And I was so angry. And for me, when I'm angry and I can't like hit something, I'm just gonna cry. So going in, Ashley was most concerned about keeping her identity as a police officer a secret. But did she make mistakes that contributed to her cover being blown? Let's take a look. Oh, no. I don't want to. Oh, with me. I'm with you. Wow. What is she doing? Miss Williams decided that she would not allow us to sleep. Serious? She literally did that. She's banging yeah. and banging on the walls. Yeah. Mate. Just taunting us as a group. I was hoping for clean clothes, but apparently we are supposed to set our laundry bags out at night. So I stripped down to put my clothes outside. I had no underwear. And I'm there and I'm naked. And I'm like, are you going to bring me extra clothes? I said she was going to. I really have, I really have nothing. I'll be thinking all night. I'll be back. You'll be OK. But I was still, like, very much exposed. Miss Williams, please, you said you would come back. <laughs> I have never seen a cop or a corrections officer violate somebody like we were violated. But I've been a police officer for six years. And I have never witnessed official oppression. And now I don't know how I'm going to be able to move forward and do my job. Do you feel like they know that you're a cop? I feel like it's been, it has been discussed, and I've been called the police multiple times. So the way I look at that, we're in an unsafe place. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull you out today. Ashley, how does it feel to to relive that? <sighs> Ashley, how does it feel to to relive that? I knew it was going to be tough watching all that again. Um, because I really I cared so much. Well, let's take a step back. Tell us about the moment you were left naked in your cell. Um, so that is, I'm about to be 30 years old. Single-handedly most humiliating moment of my life. It wasn't until next morning when Miss got there. And I was like, Miss she's like, what are you wearing? And I'm like, can I please have some clothes? Please. Can I please have some clothes? Sheriff and Chief, uh, 
How do you feel when you hear that Very, story? very disheartened, and I just hate it because, you know, this patch I have on my arm, it represents all 179 people that work for me, whether they do good or they do bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I take it personal, I take it to heart, and it's, it's very disheartening. I don't know any words I could say, but I, I hate that you had to experience that. Thank I you. Did. And I hate you had to experience too. I'm glad you brought it to our attention so it could get fixed. Thank to you. To stop that from happening to somebody else. Now, have you returned to the police force? Yes. And uh, how has this experience changed you as an officer? Um, my experience at Etowah County, I got to meet and talk to and become friends with people during their sobriety. Mm -hmm. And then while in jail, see them get access to drugs and see them descend back into the throes of addiction. Mm -hmm. So getting to know that there are beautiful people underneath the weight of their addiction makes me a lot more empathetic when I'm dealing with somebody instead of just being, oh, here he is, he's high again. I, I care a little bit more. That's great. Alex, let's move on to your story. You went from living with your parents to living in jail. <laughs> right. Big change. A little bit, yeah. Um, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. What did your parents say when you said to them, hey, I'm going to go to jail? They were like, well, I, I, think, that's a, I think that's the wrong decision. <laughs> I don't understand why you would even want to do that. What did you want to prove to your parents by doing this? Just that I didn't have to call them to bail me out of everything, because I'm, I'm the first to admit that I grew up pretty privileged and uh, never had to ask for anything and relied on my parents for too much. So this was um, a good opportunity for me to do something independent. So did Alex prove his independence from his parents? <laughs> Let's take a look. Oh, boy. I'm sorry. You're killing me. I'm sorry. You're killing me. I sat down to play Uno with Dennis, a group of people. You said you were Dennis, right? I'm Alex. I put my hand out, and he just looked at me and wouldn't shake my hand. When someone like disrespects me like that, it just makes me not like them. <laughs> Cutting a line pisses me off. It's such a blatant sign of disrespect. That's why you're in jail, because you didn't learn basic respect <laughs> like that on the streets. <laughs> Bless your heart. Oh, honey. They're ruining me. <laughs> your parents was right. I've been four or five spots back up in line. I've seen Dennis come right in front of everybody. Well, yeah. Including me. He's definitely disrespecting me when he when he does that. 49, 49. Once an a-hole, always an a-hole. <laughs> a-hole. <laughs> <laughs> this place is really like, it's getting to me super hard. You got the police after it. <laughs> <laughs> the 